I already know what it is. I'm going to be clear. But what was he talking about? So, okay. Just watch her new, her, her dune shit. <laughs> fucking badass. Dune. Get some fucking, fucking. Shut up! Oh my god! Hey, wait, wait, shh, shh, shh. Shut up! Who, you have some man rules, for God's sake. I'm talking to the lady. I don't care. Shut up! You had weapons? Badass. So fucking cool. Please shut up. Men's voices. Rock hard abs and a big pack. Giant cock. Don't ruin my fantasy. I know everything. <laughs> shut up! I'd marry her on a goddamn barbecue. Oh, God. Fuck. Oh, wait. Oh, my God. Wait. Oh, she's not you. She's not you. I have born. Oh. I've been through fucking hell. Oh, my God. I, I, I know. You invaded your piracy. Shut I, up. I don't care. I just want to see what kind of jeans you're wearing. Uh, what is this thing called sex? And I gotta try it. Sure, you were molested. You were probably. Oh, gosh, man. Her doing shit. I feel like you're a little creeped out by me. Shut, shut, shut up! They're gingers. They're weak. There's this fucking thing. I can't get to the gun. I just wanna fuck. Suck a dick. You're a whoopee golfer. There's this. Because I haven't had sex in years. Watch her nude, her... It'll be soon, but not tonight, Eric July. I'm not quite ready. Though my nights are sleepless, I still dream, Eric July. I dream of that ass. I won and lost many things in my career. Championships, blood. I lost many things in my career. Championships, blood. I never, ever... <laughs> ever main evented at San Diego Comic-Con. This is my chance. My last chance, Eric July. In my way, there is a man. And that man has my goal. My ticket to the Eisner Awards. He may be the game. You may be the champion. You may be the best in the independent comics industry today, Eric July. I should know, but you are no Alan Moore, you are no Jack Kirby, and you never will be. Fifty years I've been chasing this dream, Eric July. Dozens of fractures, hundreds of stitches, countless nights I bled, Eric July. You may say, this is no dream, this is a nightmare. Maybe, Eric July, but it's your nightmare, and I'm gonna decide when you wake up.
Come around the river, gamble the river, back riders, tell them the golf score, got them down, tell them the golf score, got them down. Hello, everyone. Long time no see. It's me, Ethan Van Skyver, 30-year veteran of the comic book industry, world's most charming, disarming, elegant, eloquent, and yet humble man. Great big Sopranos fan and a trusted member of the media. Boy, it's a pleasure to be back. I've uh, been very, very busy, and I'm busy now. Like, I know I'm... Let me look in the camera just a little bit. I don't know why the camera's over here, and it, it looks like I'm looking off... Uh, very busy now. I got to be signing a bunch of copies of books uh, while Brighton and Mikey come uh, take them away. Hey, Brighton and Mikey, what are you guys doing? You've abandoned me down here. I've got a stack of signed comics. <laughs> we got a lot going on. I'm trying to get out a bunch of packages today. Uh, we got a new shipment of goods of uh, boxes and bubble wrap coming in from Uline. That should be at the big warehouse in uh, pretty soon. So I got the phone here waiting for that uh, alert so that I can send someone over there to go uh, meet the truck. In the meantime, bags and boards, bagging and boarding cyber frogs, getting stuff out of here, Salam Android desk thing. How are you guys? Keith and Comics says, this is a new camera, right? I can tell. Yeah, it is. It's a new camera. How do you like it? Is it better or worse? Uh, what time do you close out UK time, says Michael Strelitz. I think like 8 a.m. your time. It's 3 a.m. here. And by the way, no extra 30-day period. We talked about it. I, I, I got to say, like, um, examining how Cyberfrog um, um, Dark Harvest did, how that campaign did in just one month, I don't think there's any reason to uh, do another 30-day uh, extension. We just let it go in demand. So we're going to do that. Uh, Jack show tonight should be hilarious as wood should be. Uh oh. Yeah. Okay. Now hold on. So we got so much to talk about because I've been busy. I missed a lot of the uh, goings on. Hey, Mikey and Brighton. What are you doing? Either one of you. <laughs> uh, yes, we're going to be talking about the, uh, Donnie Cates article. 
Uh, Ethan's new camera shows how pale and sickly he is. Oh, great. Fantastic. Probably this light doesn't help either. All right, now hold on. You guys have to take these away and then put some new ones here. Okay. That's, that's what we need to do. If we're going to get these signed promptly, uh, this is the plan. Okay. Take these ones away. Give me new ones. Okay. We'll get some signings done here today. Here, can I give you some more of these? Uh, yes, hold on. Let me let me sign these. See, this is a little tricky. I, I should have thought that I was going to have to sign before I went live. Uh, and as it is, you know, uh, we still have to get these books done. we got to get them out. Yeah. So we got to do a signing for a little bit. And then we will uh, get these boxes out. I can't believe that truck isn't here yet, Mikey. I'm sorry about that. I no, sent you over fine. there to wait. There was no sign on the door that said, we were here, where were you a-holes? Uh, was there? Nothing like that? No, because I came in through the front. That's usually where they leave stuff. Yeah. Um, but that it's it's not going to be like a UPS or FedEx truck. It's going to be one of those big Pitt, Ohio trucks with uh, maybe a couple pallets on it. Yeah. yeah so, uh, you know, that's the uh, that's the business of, uh, of the day. Uh, let me see here. Catching up with the chat. Hello. Yeah, from what I understand, uh, John Malin went live last night on Rumble. Now, this is just rumor that I heard. Uh, John Malin went live last night on Rumble and trashed Kelsey Shannon. Uh, and uh, I was, uh, apparently Kelsey got on there and started yelling at John. Now, this is good EFAP material. I don't know why John Malin seems to have taken down the video from Rumble. So today we can't sit there and laugh at the uh, whatever happened last night or early this morning. These guys, they're up all night long. John called uh, Kelsey a slacker. <laughs> what did he call him? What was it the, uh, that, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, uh, he called him a slacker, a carpetbagger, one of these uh, great words. I think this is it, Mikey. Okay. Yeah, go ahead and snag all these. Uh, and then uh, there's Mikey. Hi Say hi, everybody. Uh, Nick James says, can't wait to get my second chance rec planted folder. Cool. On the way. Uh, Malin doesn't know what he's doing anymore, says Thomas Fitzpatrick. Uh, oh, sorry about that. Uh, Sci-Fi is uh, life says, can we sit and laugh at Dane making a fake promo? D what is going on? Guys, send me all of this. Like, if there's stuff, if there's stuff going on, send it to me. S DM it to me so I can look at it. And people who, uh, when you see news like this happen, like John Malin yelling about Kelsey, download the video, maybe? Uh, let me see here. Oh, yeah, thank you. I don't know if I can handle all these. It's a lot of books. So that I can discuss it with you guys. I'm busy. I mean, unlike some of these guys, I'm sitting here working on comics, getting stuff done. Uh, they're busy calling each other names. They're busy going to sex dungeons, uh, taking LSD. Uh, I don't get to do any of that, Mikey. This is my sex dungeon, Mikey. You could, though. I know, I could. <laughs> I, well, I wouldn't, though. I wouldn't do that. Yeah. Uh, a guy in his room says, uh, uh, EVS beats Mikey if he messes up. Oh, if that were true, Mikey would be black and blue right now. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, Mikey. Uh, all right, hold on a second. Uh, we need a new CG archiver so we can EFAP it all. Yeah, where are you guys? Why aren't you uh, taking care of uh, all of this stuff? We got a bunch of news today. We got uh, Donny Cates got in a car accident. Didn't tell anyone. This guy's having a really bad 2023. I thought Anne Frank had it rough. This guy, uh, he gets divorced. His wife leaves him on New Year's. Uh, and uh, which was... Uh, uh, listen, I mean, this is the whole thing. Guys, uh, we watched... Uh, and send me the Dane fake promo, please. Uh, we watched uh, a little bit of their interactions together. And this is one thing that I will tell my son. This is one thing I will tell all boys who listen to this show. When they look to me for masculine guidance, they say, how do I be a man? We were listening to Andrew Tate before, but now we're listening to EVS. Women say things like, I want guys to be sensitive. I want guys to be to listen and be good listeners. How'd that work out for you? Now, I'm not, I feel bad about the car accident, but I will say this. 
being a sniveling pussy and saying, um, honey, do you mind if I just spiral at you for a little bit, please? I'm having a lot of feelings and a lot of issues, and I just need you to listen, uh, is going to end in a divorce. You understand? All right, don't, don't be like that. Never be like that. Women say that they want that, but it's a lie. Uh, you got to let one uh, feminine presence exist in the house. Uh, and you, uh, you know, don't share your feelings. Don't have any feelings. Uh, or else, uh, eventually, she's going to find some big Italian dude named Matteo uh, and dance with him at your own wedding. That's, that's the story? That's the story, yeah. That's not good, dude. It's just not a good thing. All right, let's see. Take all these out of here. He's over to Brighton, to bag and board. There we go. Excellent. Uh, let me see. Evil One says, look me in the eye when you talk to me, Ethan. You listen to me, Evil Eye. All right, hold on. More books. We want to get as many of these out today as we can. Yeah, here. Let me just give me these. I'm going to run these up. I'll come okay. Back. All right, let me sign these and then just give me a break for like an hour. Yeah, that's fine. i got a lot to do, a lot to talk about today. Uncle E, I'm designing some t-shirt designs. Uh, I know it will be funded. I just have to uh, get it done and present it to you. What do you think, says Juan Franco? I don't know what to think, Juan. I, I don't know what the t-shirts are. Uh, I'm sure they're good. You seem enthusiastic about them, and you want my opinion, which means uh, you're a man of taste and distinction. Uh, you realize that I'm going to give you um, a good and honest evaluation of your designs. Uh, this is a good thing. No problem at all. Uh, let me see. Uh, Wazir says, I bought the Heather cover. Now, don't take five years to make it. <laughs> I'm working as hard as I can, I really am. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but seriously, I have not been online that much. I've been working, I've been drawing. I intend to get books out this year. Myself, I mean, I, you know, listen, there, uh, I've got a, you know, I'm going to be drawing uh, most of them. Uh, but again, I've got, uh, I've got other stuff that I want to do too. Let me see. Uh, t -t -t check this out. Uh, this is um, Lynx, as drawn by the incredible E.J. Morgis. He's doing a bunch of sketches based on my design, uh, and it looks good. I love the hood. He kind of took the uh, he took her big fur like kind of a jacket thing, and he made it into a hood, which I really like. I think she looks good. We want to watch the eye makeup so that it doesn't look like Black Cat's mask. It's not meant to look like that. It's meant to look like smeared paint, like smeared makeup that is sort of accidentally in the shape of a Lynx's uh, eye markings. He had a great idea uh, that Lynx's um, claws, which are a piece of Amex Sin, uh, so they're, uh, they're interactive, they're, they're kind of like, uh, they're cybernetic, uh, could extend down her legs, whoops, and into her uh, feet. So she would have like uh, cat clawed feet. Uh, and uh, I love that idea. I don't know if there is a character like that yet, like a female character that has clawed feet. But uh, <clears throat> this is a really, really good addition to the character. This is why you let a guy like EJ, who is inspired, uh, take it to the, uh, the next level. Just give him the ball, let him run with it. And uh, see what he comes up with. Yeah, I like the hood a lot. My one thing is I said to him, I think she's still a little bit statuesque. Like, I, I want her to be small. I want her to be petite. I want her to be like five foot two. Uh, so that she's a, a really small girl. She's meant to sort of resemble a bobcat or a lynx. <clears throat> More so than like a tiger or a tigress. You know, like right now she's very tall and statuesque. The way that he drew her a nice big fat booty. This is good. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we want her to be, to have that booty. We want her to have the big boobies, but we want her to be small and compact like a, like a cat. Uh, so he is, uh, 
doing a great job. I'm, I'm working on her origin. I'm working on information about her to make her a, a unique hero who's separate and distinct from Cyberfrog, but lives in Cyberfrog's world. So the rules of Cyberfrog's universe apply to her. You know, she fights Vespas. <clears throat> She's attached uh, to um, Pradanian technology, just like Cyberfrog is. Uh, Nordman says, uh, Ethan, <clears throat> what about a black polo? Uh, using dry fit material with an all caps logo. I could wear it to work. Business professional. We did look at those. Oh, I had I had those mocked up. I showed them to you guys, and there were people who wanted them. They cost thirty five dollars a piece to make. <laughs> and I don't even remember what the minimum order quantity was. But as much as I wanted to wear them. The rule of the rule of retail uh, is that you charge four times cost, just cost, you know, because there are a lot of other factors that go into making a product. But you know, if uh, if this marker is fifty cents to just produce, you know, by itself, you charge two dollars for it, and that's kind of how it works. Um, I. What, what am I going to charge uh, $140 for a polo? I, you know, it would be too hard. I, I mean, I would charge $60 for it and I would feel bad and I would, we would lose money on it. So <coughs> <coughs> I didn't, I didn't do it. I didn't end up making it. <clears throat> Here's Cecil. He says Cecil will have a claw dong in cash grab three. Nice. Let um, me see. We've got a couple of super chats in here that I missed. Uh, Nick James, okay, I read this one. Can't wait to get my second chance Rec Planet folder. I wonder if those boys want to make one of those. Sci-Fi is Life says, can we sit and laugh at Dane making a fake promo? Yeah, please send that over. Nick Wilson says, Comics Gate is Comics Great. Uncle E, the Frog Father. Hell yeah. Uh, evil One, uh, trying to look important, signing books live eight? No, uh, not at all. Um, never ever spiral at your woman ever, says Peppermint Oil Capsule. Uh, and Nordman, okay, so they read this one, uh, not for $50, but make it limited. Well, I mean, the thing is, like, I'd probably have to make 300 or 400 of them. I think that would be, like, the minimum, maybe even more than that for a polo. I mean, I make, when I make hats, the minimum order quantity is 144. So, um, and I can sell 100, I can sell 300 of these, of each of these designs easily. The baseball caps sell, no problem making money on these. Um, but um, shirts go a little bit slower, a little bit more slow, and especially something like a, a polo. But it's a good, I, I mean, I think about it, I do, I have considered it. Comic Books and Cahoots says, take it easy, VS, you're starting to sweat from the mild exercise of signing, I'm not sweating at all, uh, signing comic covers, don't strain yourself too much. Oh, I appreciate your concern. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm getting over a little bit of a cold and flu. Uh, but uh, I, I've definitely turned the corner on that. I've still got a little bit of a cough. I'm, I'm hoping I can talk. Andrew's like, are you going to be able to talk today? I'm like, I, I don't know. I think so. I'm going to try. If I can't, then I'll just stop. Uh, I need a tank top EVS as Sonny Crockett. Me too. I would. I would wear those. Uh, are you going to put the links book on Fund My Comics, says Louis Feliz? Yes, <clears throat> that is the plan. So I'm still working out her story. Um, I I've been talking to EJ about it. Uh, <clears throat> and I'm going to write it for him, and then he's going to start drawing it. Once he gets about 10 pages done, I'll go ahead and fund it. Um, I'll start funding it on uh, Fund My Comic. Um, but I, I like the story so far. I like the ideas that I have for her. I like what EJ's done with her visually. I think she's a really cool character. And I like the idea of broadening out the uh, Cyberfrog universe a little bit. So we've got links. We're also going to have Mean Streak, uh, who is our speedster character. Uh, mean Streak is going to be introduced uh, in Cyberfrog 3. And, and then we'll see. I, I was thinking uh, David Williams kind of reached out and said, hey, do you have any work? Do you have anything for me to do? And I just went, I didn't tell him this yet, but I was thinking about Mean Streak um, because, uh, yeah, he'd be good on Mean Streak. Like, it would just be fun to see. But, I mean, that's like a year away. I have no, I'm, I don't want to launch Mean Streak until next year. 
Uh, let me see here. E, we told you not to take the fake vax. Do you think that's what this is? I used to get uh, this cold and flu twice a year, and I haven't had it for three years. Like, ever since the uh, COVID, ever since the pandemic, like, I don't interact with people, so I don't get sick. It's been great. And then all of a sudden, it hits me, and I'm just like, oh, this sucks so bad. I slept all, like, uh, two days ago. I slept for two days in a row. Just slept uh, the afternoon away. Got up, drew, fell back asleep. Uh, Lord Henson, comic skater, says, hated not having a Kings on Monday. I couldn't have done it. I just couldn't have. It was my daughter's birthday. She loves the electric blue Cyberfrog and Cyberfrog shirt. Can I get a late happy birthday, Abigail? Well, happy birthday, Abigail. Happy to hear that you're enjoying your Cyberfrog stuff. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, mean Streak. Yeah. Uh, let me see. Scuzzy people going to a con all gross and sick, says uh, Sheila Aliens. Uh, mean Streak better be brown, says Awazaru. Boy, I didn't even think of that, but he is. He's a little black kid. Shit. Are people going to make jokes about that? Maybe I better just scrap this whole idea. That mean streak is Smiller. Uh, it's Cecil's fault that you're getting uh, sick. Well, I'll blame him. That's fine. Oh, so the whole reason why we're here. Uh, sir, uh, thank you, um, <clears throat> Cyrano, Cyrano, the Bergerac. Guys, come down and get these books off my desk. Uh, back the box yesterday, plus a few extras. Uh, thank you. That's the whole reason why we're here. We're live streaming right now. This is the final day. Final day for Cyberfrog 3 Red Extermination. Uh, and uh, I'm pretty excited about uh, pretty excited about this campaign. Uh, it has uh, performed very, very well. 30 days. Why am I, am I alone in here? I don't want all these books on my desk. I know you guys are working hard, but uh, yeah, please, please remove these. Thank you. Thank you, Mikey. Where's Brighton? Why isn't he helping you? He's making boxes. He's helping. Make sure to yell at Brighton. You're his supervisor. Do you want to take the rest of these? There's a couple left. In no, there. no, no, no. I'll give me a break with those. When you're done bagging and boarding those, you can come down and hit me up to sign the rest of those. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Hold on a second. Cyberfrog 3, Red Extermination. Uh, this is the campaign. It's amazing. Uh, thank you, uh, everybody, for backing it. I appreciate it. This is the final day. Final day for Cyberfrog 3 Red Extermination. Closes tonight at 3 a.m. Oh, look at this. We got Kyle Ritter to uh, color Heather Swain here. Uh, the uh, Heather Swain cover. I'm so happy with it. I didn't even really get a chance to look at it because I just got it. I just got it. So uh, this is amazing. Uh, please show that gray Heather Swain statue behind you. Okay, well, give me a minute. Yeah, sure I will. Uh, Seedfan85 says, why create a new character to get cybernetic upgrades? Why not just use Heather? Um, because Heather, sh Heather, I don't want to make Heather into a cyber hero. She's Heather Swain. She's a mommy. Uh, she's a hero of her, uh, she's a hero because she's a hero. I don't know if she needs to be a cyber hero. I think that'd be, you never, I mean, never say never, but... <coughs> I think she's, uh, I, I don't know if that would be right for her. Uh, got Cyberfrog 2 on Sunday, says Jason Scott. Reread everything from the beginning. Great job on Cyberfrog 2. Very much looking forward to Cyberfrog 3. Yeah. Thank you very much, Jason Scott. I'm very glad. Here's publishing Pete Samedi says, uh, hope you're feeling better, buddy. Can't join today, but good luck with the closeout. Thank you. Thanks, Pete. I appreciate that. I'm feeling a little better. He's been abandoned. I know. It feels like it sometimes. Uh, Frankie Ramon says, Snowman update at printer yet? He's finished, right? <clears throat> it's not at the printer yet. Uh, we're going to close out Snowman. Here's the situation with Snowman. <coughs> Matt has uh, Matt wants to close out the campaign. He did two new covers, 24-hour variants that he wants to run on the last uh, day of the campaign. He's been asking me to close it out. I said, now is not the time to close it out. Let's wait until Cyberfrog 3 closes out. And then we'll do the snowman close out. The book is done, but there are two absolutely beautiful covers that he would like to do first. Uh, so then we will do that. Sonny Van Crockett says, uh, Ethan Van Dictator. 100%. <coughs> <coughs> mm, sorry, guys. 
I hope I'll be able to do this. Here's Chad Townsend to allow me a little uh, <laughs> leeway here. How you doing, Chad? Good. You feeling all right? I'm feeling better, but I'm not 100% yet. But what choice do I have? Today's the last day of the campaign. I got I to gotta talk about the campaign. We got to let people know this is traditional. This is what we do here at Comics Gate. Congratulations. Thank you very much. All right, let me put the uh, link in the chat as well. That's something that I'm supposed to do. <coughs> what do you think of this uh, uh, cover that Kyle did? It's beautiful. I think it's he great. did a good job, right? I, I was, like, surprised. Like, you know what I like? I like the dark, like the purple. First of all, her eyes are bloodshot. That struck me at first when I first saw it. Right. I was like, damn, dude. I'm going to blow it up and we'll take a, a closer look at it. But there's a lot to like about what Kyle did here. Yeah, a, it's it's the Vespus babies. Yes, larva. Yeah. You know, I was I was really surprised to see like uh, your progress on this, and then all of a sudden, boom! You had like this background like in it. Really amazing. Oh, because uh, it was finished. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it only took you... took a couple days to do. Yeah. Hey, guess what? You know what? I'm actually working, and I, I don't have any other distractions, and it's just uh, nothing but work. I get stuff done. Yeah. Well, you you fill space very well. Like, you don't just leave it blank. Oh, I appreciate that. Yeah, I, I try to try to have a design, an idea. Uh, the idea here is uh, bondage and discipline, with a lot of phallic shaped objects uh, aiming for uh, the heroines. Uh, crotch <coughs> seems to be kind of the the theme this weekend because of Tampa. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let me see here. So I got this open. Is that going to work? Am I allowed to just? All right. Open. Save as. All right, let me see if I can actually show this. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I can. I don't know if it's going to work. Maybe what I, I got to do is I got to put it on Twitter first, and that'll do it. Hmm. Share it on Twitter. Heather Swain cover colors. Um, right there. God bless this Kyle Ritter. Oh, yeah. I hope he's not coloring uh, godlike. <laughs> John has made me feel as though he was. Right. And I like I don't want to share the good things that I have with my friends. I mean, you know, you might think that's small and petty of me. No, you. I understand. You want the best. Yeah, and I don't want other people to have what I have. <laughs> not even so, John. You posted it just now on Twitter. Yeah, let me uh, let me go take a look. That way, we'll be able to open it up and, and kind of share. It. Like, I don't want John to have the cool stuff that I get. He can find his own stuff. Okay. <clears throat> why would uh? Why does John get to work with Kyle? And then yeah, Kyle's got to hide it, you know. <laughs> open image and a new. Yeah, her eyes look. All right, there we go. Look at that. Her eyes are like, I don't know what it, what it is, but it's like, it, it looks like she's been like kept awake or something like really interesting work. Yeah. <clears throat> Ordinarily when I'm drawing like Heather, I, I scratch her up. I cover her in blood. I decided not to do that this time and keep her just kind of her clothes are beat up. But like, she looks like she's had a shower. <clears throat> Yeah, this looks hot, dude. It does. This is this is not the spit on your hive. This is like 2.0 almost, right? Yeah, like it's a little bit, yeah. A little bit more cheesecake than uh, I spit on your hive. I spit yeah. on your hive is just vicious. Yep. Good job on the jeans. Good job like with the white part of the jeans here. You see how like um Yeah, it's like the frayed parts are white. Looks great. Wow. I don't know, Chad. I, it's pretty amazing. This yeah. is only twenty-four hour variant. 
Well, 36 hours. Uh, 36. It's going to be closed down tonight. So, like, at 3 a.m., you're not going to be able to back it anymore. It'll be gone. You know. Huh. Well, don't miss out, people. It's like, if you got haven't joined yet or got on the campaign, it's a good opportunity. Yeah, beautiful. <clears throat> All right. So I don't know if I can keep doing this, dude, am I too stuff? sick? Am I too sick to like uh, to have a conversation right now? I feel like maybe I might be. Maybe uh, we're gonna hit four hundred and twenty thousand. Four twenty would be nice. Is this the first time you show the larva? No, they're in blood honey. Are they? Uh, yeah. Huh. The larvae are actually in blood honey. They um. Uh, there's a sequence where a girl. Uh, her insides turn to honey and come out her nose and then she passes out and the larva come out oh really <coughs> yeah go back and read it Shit. again yet again i read it twice now this sucks i don't know if i can keep doing this i don't know if i can uh live stream right now because i'm going to be coughing i can feel that happening hey andrea let me call andrea yep maybe she'll make me some tea you you make me want to cough <laughs> i know it's this isn't good <laughs> Yeah, people said uh, Ethan's just kidding. Like, why wouldn't he? Uh, he's just faking being sick. No, I was really sick. It's so when sad. did you when did you first pick yeah. it up? Oh. Uh, babe, can you can you make me tea or anything? I'm already on it. I'm already on it. I have oh. some dressing here, and I'm making you tea right now. I heard you coughing. You are so great. I love you. I love you. Bye. Bye. Wow, you got Hello. a mind reader of a wife. Like she's like, I'm on it. Don't you worry about it. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, my wife's a mind reader. They, I think they have this power they're born with, you know. Sometimes uh, women are mind readers and not in a good way. No. <laughs> uh, Mad Sox says, uh, spike it with weight loss drugs. That's not nice. Yeah. All right. So anyway, a uh, bunch of stuff that I wanted to talk about uh, today, if I'm able to talk. First of all. Are you following this thing with, uh, uh, first of all, oh, Eric July put out ice on number two. People are getting ice on number two. Right. Uh, and everybody's very happy about it, <clears throat> except for the usual suspects uh, who are, of course, miserable about it uh, and causing trouble. <coughs> One of these people is Vicky Verse. You know who Vicky Verse is? Have you seen her? Oh, please tell me about her. <laughs> I mean, here she is. This is a uh, Vicky verse, <clears throat> Victoria, the Vicky verse, Vicky verse, uh, as far as I know, and I've seen a picture of her. If you saw what Vicky verse looked like, you would not like, she doesn't look like this. She wishes she looked like this. She looks like my grandma. Yeah. Huh? She's like an old lady. Uh, with veiny purple hands. Like, she's got big, Oof. thick purple veins in her hands. She's a witch. Yeah, I've only seen, like, a couple pictures of her. But I saw one, like, full-body picture of her, like, sitting in a chair. Like, she definitely doesn't look like she should be the type of piece of shit that would be causing trouble for Eric July or spending her right. time bothering people on the internet. She's bald and she's gross, you know, but uh, yeah. like all in all, like if you saw her, you would not think that this is what she would be doing. Like you would think that she would be collecting Hummel figurines, yeah. <coughs> um, working Give in me. some kind of charity, Give which candy, she is. Candy you know. to her grandkids or something. Yeah, but I don't, she doesn't have grandkids. Be a nice grandma. You really think about like, you know, what it must be like to sort of skip the part of your life where you have I'm not I'm not I don't want to like you know I don't I don't want to criticize people right and if, if you made this choice in your life I don't want you to feel bad or anything like that but mm -hmm. sometime in your 20s maybe your early 30s a lot of people they kind of go uh I'm going to get married I'm going to have kids you know it's a good thing to do yeah, and when you get married and have kids, what you're doing is you are, in many ways, investing in your own future. Not financially, certainly, mm -hmm. <coughs> but in the sense that one day you're going to be 80 years old and you're <coughs> going to be alone. 
Mm -hmm. uh, or you're going to be, you know, 80, 90, you might be dying and you want to be surrounded by family and people who love you. Here's Crystal McGee speaking to people hey, that we love. How's it going? Oh, uh, you're too nice. <laughs> Uh, no, you know, I, I do mean that, Crystal. I, I, you know, at some point, people should probably reproduce. Now, <clears throat> you don't have to, but I'm just saying it's possible <laughs> that if you don't reproduce, you don't get in any kind of family situation, you could find yourself in your 50s or 60s <clears throat> with nothing to do. Right. And still living like a child in a lot of ways. Oh, no. <laughs> what is it about having kids? Like, Crystal, when you have kids, you, <clears throat> you have to care about something other than yourself. You're forced to. Yes. Well, yeah. <laughs> That's what good parents do, you know. It's an, yeah. it's an interesting thing. You know, you always say, ah, oh, you, you don't want to take care of other people's kids and they're rotten. And you're just like, oh. But once you have your own, that all changes that dynamic. You're like, you're accepting easily of your kids. Yeah, like, well, you know what it is? Like, first of all, most people think about themselves first and foremost. Right. Oh, <clears> gee. <throat> not Andrea. Andrea thinks of me before she thinks of anyone else. What do you got for me this here? This is the only lozenges we have. Oh, and a like Phillies hat? Oh. oh, nice. Okay, can Thank I you. get this without hurting myself? Oh, beautiful. Only black tea. It's black tea? What is that? Yeah, it's just a different type of tea than you're used to. It's a little stronger. It's stronger? That's good. That's all we have. What other cough meds? Uh, can you get those, um, you know, the medicine that I tried to give you and you said no? And I said, you trust me, you need this, and now you're healthy and I'm still sick? <clears throat> She's getting you mean, me more meds. You mean it didn't come in an Astros cap? No, no. Around here, we're the we're <laughs> Philadelphia, buddy. This this is one of those ice cream sundaes that they serve yep. at the ballpark. Oh, that's adorable. Yeah, and I, I had to bring it home. Whenever I go to the ballpark, I bring every all my souvenirs home. Very happy about going to see the Phillies. Yeah. Black tea here. They also come. <clears throat> they put nachos in the big helmets, though. You know. Really? Yeah. I haven't seen those. All right, so Crystal, mm -hmm. at some point, people need to reproduce, if only to occupy their brains with something other than their <laughs> own egos. Occupy their brains. Yeah, you know. Cheers. Cheers. But I see that we have a uh, Vicky, good old Vicky on the screen. Yeah. Right. Now, Vicky didn't do that. Vicky chose to skip that part of her life. <clears throat> she had problems with her family. Her family has, uh, from what we know, uh, her sister came out and kind of said, look, this is a severely ill person. Uh, you know, her family has sort of uh, pushed her away. Uh, she's dangerous. She's a psychopath. You know, all the things that were said about her by her own family. And it's like, oh, thanks for, like, <clears throat> thanks for leaving your trash with us. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I mean, here's the thing. <laughs> like, you, you know, like, thank you so much. Could you put her in a mental institution? You made her. Be careful. This well, throat. Unfortunately, I know. <laughs> uh, if you're an adult, it's hard to get admitted unless there's good reason. And you that'll shut up, take TJ. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, TJ says, this is personal love. Shut the fuck up, TJ, or I'm going in on you next. Mm. Now, listen. The, her family is responsible for her. Think about this. You create... This is the other a aspect of this. You have kids, you're responsible for them. Her family's responsible for her. Don't just drop her off with us. <laughs> maybe, like, in their defense, though, maybe they've tried and she's just doing her own thing. You know, like at some point, you just got to let somebody figure it out. Huh. Right. So let, maybe somebody else can handle her better than we can. Yeah. Well, we can't. She's staying amused, though, I guess. You know, hmm. she's got something to, to do. Yeah. Negative, but. <laughs> I mean, do we need to call her some social workers or something, you know? 
Yeah, I think so. So, because this individual doesn't have kids, has mm -hmm. nothing to do, she chases Art July on the internet all day, and me, and Yellow Flash. <laughs> wow. And Chad, and Crystal. Yep. It's, I haven't seen it yet, but she's chasing me too? Probably. <laughs> wow. <laughs> all right, so here's what's going on. She says, and this is a this is an adult woman who was Caucasian, by the way, Crystal. I would say that a woman of color might say fragile bitch. She's Caucasian and she's 60. Is that weird? Is she actually 60? Yeah, I think so. Wow. wow. I mean, this is how there she's a... using her time on the internet. Okay. Yeah. She's Eric almost... July is such a fragile bitch. He DMCA's fair use commentary. So here's what's going on. Now, I haven't decided where I stand on this yet. My immediate impulse is to defend my friend Eric July. Mm -hmm. That's what I do. Just yeah, stick together. Yeah, I'm not sure if he's right about this. I don't know. <laughs> but I'm, I'm on his side. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Elizabeth Lyons says, just bought the box. You, my dear Uncle Ethan, are signing it all. Heart, heart, frog, frog, U.S. Thank you, Elizabeth. Appreciate that. So, uh, she got a DMCA. This is called, uh, this is what people would call a DMCA strike, copyright strike. Right. Because Eric July owns the imagery associated with ISOM. And if he feels uh, that it is being used without his express permission, he can uh, issue a false, not false, I should take that back. <laughs> he can issue a DMCA strike, a copyright strike, which will take it down. Is it false? I don't know. That's a matter of opinion. <laughs> Oops. They used, to, they used to call that false flagging. Uh, yes. But I don't know if that's what this is or not. I haven't decided yet. I'm just on Eric's side automatically. Right. Because I like Garrick. And I don't like Vicky. Uh, all right. <clears throat> what happened? Your account has been locked because Twitter received the Compliant Digital Millennium Copyright Act. That's I didn't know that's what DMCA stood for. Hmm. Yeah, I thought it was like RCA or something. It's fun to stay at the... YMCA. No, you know what? We have a song about that. <laughs> We do have a song about that. Here it is. <clears throat> I've seen a back and forth turn pretty nasty, I'm going to say. You look like you've been crying. You keep spinning things. You're the ones that are sitting around and trying to get a reaction out of me. And then when I stopped giving you reactions, you fabricated falsified stories, falsified emails, acted on my behalf, pretended to be me okay. because they... Well, the problem is, the the problem is it's more than about you and me, and Liam, because you do, you're striking yeah. a lossy. You struck Nasser. Yes. And struck I will Smiller. strike anyone who continues there. to steal my content. And All you do is sit around and play. Nintendo because they don't understand the difference between my property and fucking Golden Sun. They're that retarded. Oh, you didn't know I knew about that, John. What? Oh, look at that new face. Oh, whoa, Liam might know more than I. Oh, I'm here. Liam, mind. I've oh, never reported your campaign to John, anybody. You're fucked, mate. You are fucked. I am going to bury you.
I'm going to burn you to all of these parasites that have been trying to destroy my Whoa. life for years and have been actively preying on the customer and creating outrage and manipulating. Man, this people. is psycho stuff. You stopping. are a parasite. It's Fight me, John. Fight you. Set up in the ring. No gloves. And I'll take down the strike. There you go. And I will clear my name there. And that'll be the end of it. your name of what? You're the only one making accusations. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, right. But you guys need to go the fuck away and let me work. And John, you've got to fight me. Or I'm, I'm not, not going to fight you, down. dude. I, I know you're not crazy. Sure you're and you're a coward. Channel. I want the blood on my fucking hands of this fat loser. Oh, okay. Thanks for your time. <laughs> oh man, that was something good. Oh, I like that. All right, thank I, you, Liam. By the way, again, this is the single yeah. best thing that uh, Mr. Yanafui ever did. It's so good. All right, so that's what a DMCA is now. Ah. Oh, hold on. We got another guest here. Sheila Aliens, hello. Ooh. Hello, Comic hey. Hi. Hey, everybody. Sheila, um, did you know that Victoria Condurnt, whatever her name is, <laughs> it is, that's her name. Her name is literally Condurnt. <laughs> Condurnt. Yeah. Yes, it is. She, she and her friends are sharing around a bootlegged, pirated copy of Ice on Number One. Mm. Pirated. Okay. How yeah. do you feel about that? Shame, shame. Know your name. Well, I think if it was, um, I think he did it in good faith. He issued the, it was only on her Twitter, by the way. That it wasn't on her YouTube. Mm -hmm. So, if he did that in good faith, um, then it'll. What stay. do you mean he did that in good faith? If he issued the copyright strike because he felt that his copyright was violated in a way that he doesn't want to happen, then he's in the right to do that. But I also wonder if it was somebody who was praising him and they used the same pirate thing, would he issue that? But also, I don't care. It's his business. It doesn't change the fact that Vicky is a cunder at the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't right. change that. And, and the copyright stuff's his business. It doesn't change my opinion on him at all. So, Well, uh, all right. So uh, I don't know what got taken down, but something got taken down. It's just her Twitter, just her Twitter. Oh, her twi her whole Twitter? Oh, her account was locked? That's temporarily. temporarily. Tem yeah, and all she had to do was push some buttons to get it un unlocked. It's not like her YouTube got taken down or anything. So but she was re revealing material from this book that hasn't been like, revealed I wonder yet. if it was a PDF. Like, she just posted a straight page. That would definitely I would, be a I don't shady. think so. I, I, don't, I think that they're sharing the PDF in private amongst themselves because mm -hmm. like suddenly all these haters have read the book well have uh, you talked to eric could you have eric on to maybe explain what happened because none of us seem to sure know. i could send eric the link and he could uh explain uh what, what goes on here but it, of course uh he's probably in the warehouse uh shipping right now but i will send him the link and invite him in here if you'd like to come in yeah because none of us saw exactly <clears throat> we don't know what she posted to begin with not that mm -hmm. i know of. all i know is that i blame her uh and that eric is innocent <laughs> That's what I know. And uh, honestly, it's his business. But you know what? Like, I think I would side with Eric uh, about anything uh, against uh, Vicky. Mm -hmm. well, we're discussing the DMCA right now. Join us if you can. Here's the link. Wait a second here. Everything is a problem. All right, there we go. So if Eric wants to come in here, he can. Well, he did not <clears throat> He did not sell a digital version of the book. <clears throat> yeah, I know. Weird. See, that's the thing. Like, people are saying, well, if you're afraid of piracy, try not selling digital. It's like, he's not. And neither am I, and neither is just about anybody uh, who's in this space for this very reason. Like, uh, no. Like, 
you know, our, our IP, our, our, the work that we're doing, um, we know it's going to get stolen uh, by haters and passed around. People can pay for it. If you want to hate on CyberFrog, you can pay for it. That'll be $25, please. That's so, how much your hatred, you have to pay me $25 to hate on me. Yeah, how What's bad that? do you want it? <laughs> if she had proven that she bought it, then would it be okay? What are the, I don't know how that works. That is a good question. I really don't know. It's a I think situation. if you it, like, if you prove that you buy it, you know what can you do? Like, I guess, like, uh, yeah, because it would be one thing rights. if she had like a physical book in her hand and she took a picture of it and it's physically there. I think that's fine. But oh, if shit. it's just digital, then that's kind of shady. Hey, Here he comes. What's, hey. up? What's up? I only got like five minutes. I just saw it. Well, like ten, I guess. Yeah, just appreciate like it, you. man. What's up? Live from the warehouse. All right, yeah, so we're discussing this. This is like, uh, I'm, I'm telling you, this is like, I appreciate your time. I know right now it's uh, you're very busy. So uh, what we have here is we have a lot of criticism going on over the DMCA's issued, uh, not by you, I guess, by somebody named Alex J. Miller <clears throat> uh, on behalf of uh, Ripiverse over the use of uh, what is being called pirated copies of ISOM number one. Do you want to explain like what's going on for people who don't know? Well, uh, it's pretty simple. She was uploading multiple <laughs> pirated pages of the, of the of the comic, which isn't available digitally, and obviously doing it in bad faith. I mean that this whole campaign came from a couple of people, um, and she was one of them that got got struck. They kept just sharing a bunch of a bunch of uh, pages from from ISOM. Some sending links, you know what I mean, to for people to pirate and. And uh, encouraging oh. people to do all that good stuff. So she Ooh. was part of that. It was only like I think it was three people. One actually doxed the company, um, uh, but it was like three people. Uh, she was one of them. So, yeah. Wow. So there's like there there's a link. Somebody has. So first of all, ISOM is not available digitally. There's Correct. no digital copy that you can download and share because Correct. I saw some disingenuous piece of shit say, uh, "Listen, if somebody borrows my copy of Spider Man, that's not piracy." It's the same thing with digital. Well, that's the reason why, you know, these comics are not available digitally. Feel free to lend somebody your copy of ISOM. They can read it. But to actually scan it and then give it to people, the entire scanned book on the Internet where they can share it multiple times, that's piracy. Yep. Yep. So, so you sure. want to discourage that. Um, but how do you discourage it? I mean, I guess like, uh, the thing is you can't really, is there a way to stop the piracy? Maybe not. But when that person, um, who, you know, uh, is sharing content from the book that was pirated, post something from it on the internet, then you can issue a DMCA, I guess. Get that taken down. Is that basically what you're saying? I mean, you give or take. Yeah, I mean, it obviously has to be within within the boundaries uh, of of whatever rules the platform itself uh, set. So Twitter specifically has a, a policy against against that. You know what I mean? Definitely, if you're talking about uh, in, in the sense that you're like knocking, like you can, you know, knocking the value of a particular work set of works. You know what I mean? So um, yeah, you can't you, you can't do that really on any platform. Twitter has a pl uh, and it's like, but my thing about this is, like I said, it was only like three people. I think one again doxed the company. The other, uh, specifically, was um, encouraging. What do you mean dox the company? Can you explain uh, that? No, like he's like sharing a location of 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 our, of our stuff. Shit. Yeah, like it, 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 he was part of the group. Like he's part of the same clique of idiots that did it. Um, so they, it's not like. Let's be honest here. It's not like this is just some random Joe Blow just trying to like. No, it was a few guys who knew exactly what it was that they were doing, and they and they paid the price um, um, for it because they went against Twitter's policy. And you know, reviews people have covered this stuff. Uh, pages, panels shared it online. Like that's not a problem. Like that stuff has been done for a year. Um, uh, it, it has never been an issue. But that's not what we're dealing with here. <clears throat> Um, so what we're dealing with is people purposefully sharing pirated, uh, the entire material. book, entire, to them, the entire book, it would be and, the, whole and book. the entire yeah. book, they're either sharing it directly with via link or they grabbing it from that link and uploading it to, to Twitter. Like, um, and, and, and that's just, you know, that's, that's all around corny. And like I said, if someone wanted to share their reviews, they could say it's the worst book in the world. Don't care about that. That that's, they're completely free to do that. 
Um, and they're free to even share certain panels and stuff. It is that they liked with it from their own pictures like that. Nobody's knocking that. That's not what it is that was happening here. So I think that um, unfortunately, of, co of course, people like her are going to try to conflate the issues because of the uh, you know vendetta it is that they have. Yeah, I mean, again, I, I think that the, the rules should be established. First of all, pay for the book. You Some know what I mean? It, just pay for the book. You could say whatever you want to say about it. But the other understanding is people who uh, review CyberFrog, they'll come to me and say, can I show? Yeah, I would say there's like a limit and that limit should be kind of understood. You want to show five pages of CyberFrog, whatever. Uh, that's cool. That's fair. But when you're showing the entire thing to people, you're stealing or you're you're allowing other people to steal from the people who worked hard to make that book uh, and to tell that story. And uh, there's got to be some way to kind of prevent that if possible. So uh, we got this going on right now. This is a DMCA uh, issued to Victoria. Has anybody else received the DMCA other than Vicky? Like I said, it was like two of them. One, uh, I think... Uh it was it was three of them total that, that got hit with it. It was her. Dean. Um, yeah, Dean. He's the guy that Dean flat did. out admitted that he did it in bad faith. He said he he specifically oh, stated that he said, <laughs> "Yeah, what I did was egregious and it was bad faith." Because even with him, he was um, he he like was posting. He tried to like edit like a promo or some photo that we did and try to present it as if we were the ones that were saying using our Dude. logo and everything as if we were the ones saying go pirate it and he showed it the link. You know, like I said, this mm. is the type of guys that I have. I wow. do, if you want to see that, you can go watch my recent video. It's the same camp of, of, of cats that that did it and the other guy that got his stuff taken down. He was the first guy again. He, he also doxed the company uh as well so that that was it like i said this book has been out for since what october of uh, september october of last year and people have shared panels right people have shared their views uh on it people have posted it that's never been the issue that's just not what's happening right here and she knows that obviously and, and, and other two people that otherwise know it like share it out review it do all that stuff um, I only asked that you buy it you know what i mean but even there's been people that have shared like stuff that they saw from other people and that's cool too, like whatever, but sharing the entire book, you know, multiple pages, uh, like you said, there, there's a line there and and they know that. They for sure know that. Cool. Yeah, if you don't want to even buy the book and you want to comment on the book, like there are four pages of art that are available on the campaign. Feel free yeah. to share and discuss those. <clears throat> you know, all these different things. But I mean, like it's hard to disagree that like, you know, making the book available for free in its entirety is stealing. It's piracy. Yeah. And, you know, it, it needs to be prevented or else we can't make a living doing comics. And that's what we're trying to do here. So, uh, Eric, speaking yeah. of that, I won't hold you up, man. I know you're trying to make a living doing comics. Appreciate y'all, right man. Now. Appreciate y'all. I'm going to get back to packing this, packing right. these orders. Sheila, Crystal, Chad, what's up, man? Nice appreciate to see you. Yeah. Man. Ethan Have a good ease, rest man. of your day. Absolutely, man. Take, take care, it Eric. Thanks. He's out. Yeah, uh, ISOM number two shipping out like crazy right now. All right, so let's take a look at this conversation. We got the word from the man himself about what's going on. And we'll see. I mean, you'll see how this argument kind of uh, devolves here. Uh, Vicky's like, uh, uh, he says, you got hit for posting images. Uh, you know you can't grow up, you mid-50s clown. I think she's older than mid-50s, Sheila. Really? Well, we don't have much images to go off of. We have to ask her sister. Her sister probably said all of this. She's been on streams with wiggle wiggle oh yeah yeah that's where i've seen her sister too talk about like uh you know vicky's uh serious uh serious problems like mm -hmm. and i mean in my opinion i've encountered vicky and i've, I've seen that she's uh, in my opinion she's got serious like personality disorder oh she's issues she's now using the child thing in her she's calling people child. oh no <laughs> she is stalker child vicky s tomlinson yeah, that's wonderful. That's amazing. Uh, have you seen the picture that I've seen, Sheila, of her sitting on the couch with her hands kind of crossed over, and they're like, she's is got this like new. Uh, it is old. Um, it, it like I'll tell you. I'll actually I've only tell you. Seen from here up. My no, no. Oh, there's a whole full figure of her. And when oh, Vicky no. and I were were friendly for a minute during the. Uh, the beginning of the Poulter lawsuit, we were talking, and I said, "Is that you?" And she said, "Yeah, that's me." It's like a Bigfoot sighting. Wow! It's an right? extraordinary picture. It'll change your whole world. Like when you see her, you'll be like, "This is Vicky. That's that's Vicky. Like what the hell? Like that doesn't make any sense." 
Really? She doesn't look like how you would expect her to look? No, she doesn't. I mean, I go to Umbrella Guy, because Umbrella Guy's the guy who found that picture, and he sent it over. I'll have to ask him about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, mean, I was and, just and like, shit. And it's okay to be in your 50s, but not. You're, she's just a golem of a human being. She's just like a bad bad egg. Like She could be 50s and be cool, but she's just an old hag. She's a miserable why are you so? Person. Why are people so angry about this? Why are people so angry I about Eric July? It's just a comic book. Game? Success, she's just successful and she can't stand it. That's all that's ever been with her. That's all it's ever going to be. Yeah. You know. Like, what is it about success, Chad? See, Chad's way more successful than I am. But <laughs> by the way, he doesn't exactly wear it on his sleeve. Like, nobody knows. Chad's like, but Chad, you don't. The reason Chad is here is because he doesn't have to be anywhere. Okay. He yeah. can do whatever the fuck he wants. Yep. Uh, what is it about success, you think? that makes people so angry and so uh, they feel so threatened by it that they want to destroy it. And they're, I don't know. Usually like <clears throat> I've had people try to take me down in jobs because they thought their job was uh, threatened. So I don't even understand how she would feel threatened in this case. Like, yeah, she doesn't like comic books. What does she do? <clears throat> yeah. Is she being paid? Like, this is the other thing. I found, Sheila, I found this, like, website. Uh, and it's like a it's like a secret website. But there is a, a company, a left-wing company, that you can sign up for. You can belong to this organization. Mm -hmm. And they'll pay you by the, like, if you go after famous conservatives and you're an influencer who can say <clears throat> shitty things about Ben Shapiro or whoever it is, whoever their targets are. And then get a lot of like, uh, what you call it, uh, likes, retweets, traction and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, they'll pay you by the hundred likes. You'll, but is Vicky can... of an influencer? Like, is she getting any traction? I mean, she got some likes or some views on that. Well, I mean, look, I don't know. I'm, is she trying to be? I mean, you guys I mean, give her way too much more attention than she deserves. I'm in the boat of people who believe she should just be blocked and ignored. This is ridiculous. She's crying about her Twitter being temporarily. Uh, locked when all she has to do is click a couple buttons it's exactly. unlocked and she it's can so get stupid. it back maybe that's her livelihood then you know yeah but uh john says what website ethan i i could probably show it but it's uh, uh i don't names. know if I, you should yeah, know i don't want to i don't want to name the names as it were in this case um, but, uh, <clears throat> it is, uh, it, it does happen. I've seen that this does exist. Like there's a, when I first found out about SJWs, like working in private to undermine the comic book industry, I thought it was insane. And I thought nobody would believe me when I first found out about that, that there were whisper networks and everything. I was like, D I got to tell Dan to deal about this. He's not going to believe it. And Dan was like fully aware of it. And it was just so obvious to everybody except for me. I guess the entire industry understood that it, it was run by this like Ghostbusters 2 underground slime current of uh, fucking disgusting degenerates. But it's like, wouldn't there be somebody on our side who's at least smart enough to pretend to be one of them and infiltrate that shit and expose it? You would think like, I don't understand. Well, like, How, are they paying them that much money? Really? Nobody... I just don't understand. That's why I would like to see these websites and investigate them a little bit further. Yep. Here's Yellow Flash again. He says, I wish Vicky would move to Canada and get treatment for her mental illness. They have the cure. I oh, moved Yellow right. Flash. I moved within like an hour, Vicky, if my estimations are correct. <laughs> I, had, so. I had a famous uh, SJW that lives about a mile from her. Her name was Ren. And Ren from us. When she paid. Yeah, she was famous. What wasn't she supposedly paid? Like yes, and... she's the see. She's the first one who let it slip. She f first of all, like she was working as a right wing agitator for she's a long a Nazi. time. Her father is somebody in politics, I think, uh, or in oil or so. I don't, I don't. I can't remember what it is, but her father is somebody who allows her to sit on her ass. Mm. So he also has some pull and influence in politics. So Renfamous for a long, I think he's a Republican. Renfamous is somebody who was, was being paid to be a Republican agitator. In other words, she'd, she'd say some shit on the internet to basically get <clears throat> Marco Rubio to say something embarrassing. Like that was her job, was to be an agitator. And she said that she got paid to do it. And suddenly she flipped and she became kind of... Uh, 
started working and focusing on Comicsgate, which was super creepy. Boy, mm -hmm. I'd love to know the truth of all this, but I, I don't know how you would go about finding out or investigating who is actually so, behind this, who's the money behind these. Exactly, because, oh. dude, they do this in the film industry all the time. And they pay people. And if you're actually trying to look and find some of these guys at the top, there's all sorts of things in place. So you don't find out or you have to really like work to find out. It's like astroturfing, isn't it? Like these bot, not bot farms, but they have all these fake accounts and like yep. whatever. But like Vicky, I can't imagine how much you can make. How much of a salary can you honestly make doing this? It's just. Like, it's honestly, true. like, a lot of the companies that I know, the pay is kind of low. Unless, like, in the case of Renfamous, like, mm -hmm. if she could get somebody <laughs> to say something embarrassing online, the other people with a bigger following could kind of push and expand on that, then you would get a oh, Renfamous, sort of bonus could, I, of source, yeah. I could see it being true for Renfamous, but Vicky, well, I think she just well, doesn't have to pay rent. Yeah. Vicky doesn't have a rent, rent to pay or any like yeah, living expenses. I think right. Vicky's just bored. Well, <laughs> yeah, then, she's just, yeah. What's beneficial though about posting bootleg material, pirated material though? What makes you think she case? wants to be beneficial to anybody? Yeah. Oh, for Vicky. Oh, just to let people. First of all, so they're they're after Eric July. They don't want to yeah. spend the money, give him the money to to uh, read his book. By the way, people in the chat are saying, didn't you go watch the bootleg uh, Barbie film? And the answer to that is yes, I did. I watched it uh, pirated, a pirated version of that. And then I bought Shame. tickets to the movie. I don't do that. I don't pirate anything. It was just extremely convenient at that moment. And it's hard for me and Andrew to get out to the movies. Well, if you, put a, the movies. if you put a pirated movie on, but I paid on for YouTube... It. If you do put like a full pirated movie on YouTube, you're going to get copyright stricken. Just like if you put the whole yeah. comic book, if you flip it page for page, same thing's going to happen. So you can deal with the repercussions. I don't do piracy. I, I don't do it. I, I've had the opportunity to pirate. People talk like, oh, well, you don't have to support Disney. You could say, uh, sail the, uh, the seas the or seas whatever they call it. <laughs> sure. I don't do that either. I just, I don't, I just happen to have it and I did watch it. So I'm not going to act like I don't sail there, the but, seas, you know. I don't. It's it's just not it's not a cool thing to do. It's not uh, but I will pay for it anyway. And by the way, yes, everybody else paid for it too, because <laughs> I wouldn't shut up about it. I really liked it. Sorry, <laughs> Jay Ryan. And by the way, uh, everyone is uh, everyone is agreeing with me now. Why me? Why? Hold on a second, Sheila. Why? Like I have to tell people stuff, and every, I I take the brunt and slings and arrows as I tell people the truth in my own community, and eventually. And everybody yells at me and they say, shut the fuck up, Ethan. And then a week later, everybody has come around to what I said a week ago. I don't think Every any of us. single time. None of us have still seen Barbie, probably. I don't know, most of us. But the people who are agreeing with you are Doug Tenable and Mark, Mike S. Miller. <laughs> what? I'm just saying, that's the, the, that's the, those are the people. <laughs> what? Hold on yeah. a second. Who I haven't is seen this it. guy? Walter Hello? White. Hello? Hey. <laughs> What's up, hey. Eric? What did you do to your hair? What did you're you do? Hair, That's like Eric. a full buzz cut, dude. What the fuck did you do to your hair? You don't have to look like me. You had you're choosing it. Like beautiful See, red hair. Maybe you should watch my stream every once in a while, Ethan. What happened? You tell me. Just, oh, did you sell your hair? No. no. Uh, I've had my hair like nice. chopped, chopped for like a year. You look I've like you the I've shaved it. I grew it out. I did the whole like, it looks cool. you know, he looks uh, fine. You can leave him. Brad be. Pitt it does look, look from uh, from Fury, and then I shaved it again, and I grew it out again. I I change my hair like every. You're a handsome month. guy, Eric. It's just that you know you're gonna look good no matter what. It's just that some of us mm -hmm. couldn't have hair like you had hair like Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, some <laughs> of us couldn't do that, and we like if if I could do it, I would. Hair. I have a wig. That looks the way your hair actually looked, and I wish yeah, it was I, real. Yeah. Well, I'll, throw it out again. I'll donate you my hair, and that way you can have a wig that looks oh, exactly that, like my that's hair. That's real. Locks of love. This came from yeah, lots of love. <laughs> lots, lots of love. Lots of love. Lots of love. All right, hold on a second here. We got uh, a lot of super chats. Let me read some of these. Uh, and uh, by the way, we'll get to the Donny Cates thing, which is very sad. Uh, all right, I'm going to take this down. It I don't is. care about Vicky. It is sad. 
I think Eric came in and kind of summed up that story. I was going to go through that story and try to decide how I felt about it. Again, I'm objective about things. Uh, my immediate reaction is to side with my friends, but my friends can be wrong. They were wrong about Barbie. <clears throat> Uh, and then I have to take a stand. He solidified it, though, with his answer, though. Yeah, so. totally. I agree. Yeah, yeah I think he's right. Yep. Uh, Nordman says, uh, not for $50. Oh, that was the uh, polo. Uh, uh, right. <coughs> uh, all right. Hold on. I read this one. Uh, please show us the gray Heather statue behind you. Well, that's a blow up of the uh, Heather Swain PVC toy, which I will. I will release eventually. I don't know if I want to do it right now. Like, Eric, did you see the Cyberfrog car that I, I showed? I did. Uh, the one car that would not mind getting uh, flies in its grill. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, what a great... <laughs> that's a great, uh, wow, great little tag. bit of promo there. Very good. Yeah, yeah yesterday I, I showed the... Uh, I said, look, this is the 500... We're going to get to 500,000, uh, you know, uh, with this campaign. Pretty sure that's going to happen now. Uh, and, uh, when we do, uh, everybody who backs the campaign at any level, uh, is going to receive this little cyber frog. I don't, I want to call it a hot wheel, but what do you call it? Like what, 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 die micro wheels? I, don't know. Like, I call it a micro car. I wanted to call the whole brand like CG master racers. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay. yeah. Like, so everybody who wants to get involved, like, cause we could do a whole run of these. And hold on, so diecast is a question in the chat. I don't know yet. Okay, I'm gonna we'll talk about that in a second. But uh, CJ, like if uh, if Shane Davis wants to make a car, we can make them all sort of have the same packaging, kind of, so they oh, match. Like CG Masters, that's us. Like right. we're Comics Keep Master, and then these are our racers. So CG Master Racers. Oh, could be the branding. I see nothing wrong with that name at all. I think it's great. Perfect. Yeah, nobody will take that the wrong way. The marketing writes itself. Racers. We should have uh, 88 different vehicles. Oh, I like that. Yeah, 14 <laughs> different uh, companies, 88 different vehicles. And nobody will uh, think anything of that. It's just coincidence. Uh, yeah, so this is the car. Um, I'm trying to determine. I had it sculpted. had a really, really good sculptor make this, obviously. I don't think it could look better. And the thing about it is, is that... I was, I was like charmed by this. I was talking to Andrew. I was like, when we lived in Florida, uh, you know, there were little tree frogs, green tree frogs that would sit on your door, like at night, they would just show up little green tree frogs and they would kind of curl up into a perch position like this and just sort of plant themselves somewhere. Mm -hmm. And that's what cyber frog looks like here. He's in the same pose as those little frogs that would like oh, you'd nice. find them on your window and stuff. So I like that. See now, now what you need is the to scale salamandroid uh, uh, diesel that has the the thing the, the trailer on the back so all the other cars can fit on it. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh yeah, like you just collect your cars and put them in there. Yeah. That's neat. Yeah, like something I was gonna do a monster truck of salamandroid that would match this with like you know, uh, it would be really really cool. Like shock shocks on the tires, on the axles, so that it would be you know like a monster truck, but. Mm -hmm. A, that's very expensive, and I always do this. I always, like, I go overboard, and I'm like, I'm going to spend way too much money on this. Already, this car is going to, my initial idea was, I'm just going to make a, a race car. I'm going to have Cyberfrog branding on it, but I immediately became too extravagant with it. Now, and, but I'm happy I'm doing this. Diecast versus plastic. This is the question here, because I showed it uh, to my um, my production team. And they said it might be a little bit too ornate to do a, to make it diecast metal. Really? Yeah. So what it would have to be is like a metal frame under the car with the pin, the wheels, and then a plastic kind of thing over it. There it is. Uh, the Cyberfrog would be plastic. Right. PVC maybe. I don't know, but I got to I got to produce it. I got to make well, it good. <clears throat> well, then what other thing? cool things could you do to it like light up his eyes you know if there's like a, a flat like yellow <laughs> plastic yeah yellow clear plastic in there yeah i mean i'll work on it you know this is uh we've need... just begun and we're not at five hundred thousand dollars yet i'm already like i think we're gonna get there because i think we just hit 420 so it feels like you know if we don't get there tonight we'll get there in a week or two you know 
Uh, but uh, this is uh, this is phenomenal. <clears throat> so uh, I'm very excited about making cars. I'm also going to make a Vespa's car. When we get to 500,000, this will be added to everybody's order who backs at the uh, 25, uh, $25, I guess. Uh, I'll share this tab right here. Okay. Uh, $25 level. So if you back the comic, you're going to be getting this. And I'm going to, I will make it available over oh, 421. I will make it available also for sale so you can buy extra ones. And then also there will be a Vespa's car. And I'd, I'd really like to make the Vespa's car exclusive to the executive red Xbox. But <clears throat> the problem with that is, is I'll bet you I'm going to have to make 20,000 of these minimum order. And so how could I like, there are only 2,500 executive red Xboxes. So I would be stuck with 17,000, <laughs> color five hundred, yeah, like maybe a variant or something. Yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't know how to do it yet, but I'll think of well, something. Hot Wheels cool. does that all the time. They'll do color variants on different ones. Yeah. Yeah. Do something I was trying to go uh, find my, my son's stash of Hot Wheels cars to see about the, the die cast uh, plastic comparison, yeah. but I couldn't find it. He rearranged I don't know what's going on. When they have like those. those cars that are like that are like funny cars like monsters and I mean they, they made these awful Star Wars cars that I was collecting back during Solo. And I can't remember if they were plastic or if they were die cast. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but you know, this obviously is gonna be very detailed. It's gonna be painted really nice. I would love to use some of that like chrome paint this time that they use on like C three PO toys. Chrome well, that'd be paint. Neat. <clears throat> This yeah. this Hot Wheel this Batmobile is solid metal top and bottom. Yeah, it's, yeah, but it's not like um, it does. It's, it's not detailed. You know yeah. what I mean? It's just a car. Like that's the whole thing. Uh, I'm again. We're looking into it, and I'll have more info about it. And we're not there yet, but I'm gonna be ready. I will be ready, ready, ready by the time we do get to five hundred thousand. So uh, back this campaign, everyone. Look. We have uh, sold nearly 900 of the uh, red Xboxes. This is your best bet. You're going to get everything here. This is our 36-hour closeout cover. This will no longer be available tonight at 3 a.m. This is your one chance you, to get the uh, Heather Swain cover. Were you thinking of Cecil when you drew that picture of her? Was he like uh, an inspiration? Uh, um, <laughs> I was thinking, I was thinking, oh my gosh, here's what I was thinking. I was telling Andrea, I was like, okay, so if it's a 24 hour variant, uh, there needs to be something special about it that makes people go, I have to have that. And right. so the first thing that I did was a tribute to Comicsgate uh, and Jawbreakers, John Malin. I thought that 24 hour cover was really good. The next thing is just, well, it's got to be a Heather Swain cover because she's always got a solo cover in all these campaigns. It's got to be sex. We've just got to fucking sex Heather Swain up and right. just uh, do something so kind of perverted. Of Cecil. Okay. Maybe a little bit. I don't know if I think about. I don't think about Cecil and sex together. That's you, Sheila. I don't no, think about no, that. I've That's changed my your... ways. No, oh, no, have no, you really? No. You moved yeah. on from Cecil. That's good. Well, no. Uh, but uh, no, I, I, you know, I just thought uh, we'd make her look kind of sexy, uh, and uh, I like the idea of one of the things that I really like. From the 1950s chad do you remember those magazines that were like men's adventure magazines yes and it would be like yep. tough guys punching out nazis who were ripping the clothes off of innocent women yeah slapping women or like grindhouse um, films yeah <laughs> kind of like that they weren't like necessarily grindhouse it'd be like weasels rip my flesh and it would be like right a, a, <laughs> guys being attacked by whatever kind of animal like wild animals would be attacking yep. the man and then there'd be a woman in danger and her clothes would be all ripped up. And uh, the man would be like, I got to save the woman from being molested yeah, those... by this Nazi or something. Yeah, those old pulp covers are great. I love yeah. that stuff. It's like uh, McGinnis was, the, was one of the artists, uh, not Ed, a different one. I can't remember his first name because Ed is always the name that comes up in my head. But I know if Sean were here, he would be listing off all of the artists that painted that. Robert yeah, where is Sean, dude? I haven't seen I Sean and Jenny in a while. He's here in spirit. Actually, got a package it's, from him today, and he did make it out to the great Eric Weathers. Wow. So, er, that Eric, I appreciate. you mean you mean Robert McGinnis? Robert, yes, yeah, yeah, yes. He was uh, great in that style. Uh, so, we yeah, got, Sean we... sent me a uh, his art book because 
I'm working with him on seeing if my printer will be a good fit for Nosfero. So hmm. I'm going to be taking this over there and saying, hey, let's make it look exactly like this. So he sent me nice. this, and they're sending stuff to him. So it's going to be great. Tell, tell him to come and uh, hang out with me. I'll text him right now. Yeah, How's that? Well, I haven't seen him in a while. It'd be nice for him to stop them. Um, so we got a lot of drama here. Yellow Flash versus TJ. TJ, yes. It's going TJ's down. very upset. Hold on. Let me see if I can catch up here. Um, we, They could both come on and hash it out. That'd be really interesting. Ooh. Manoho's mad because Heather Swain's armpit is visible here. Mm. I disagree, man. I like it. I like her Cecil shoulder. Yeah, there. where does she get her razors from in the future? Get in there. Walmart. <laughs> she goes to Walmart. She did. Yeah, she got the the IPL laser, and now she doesn't. Oh, have right, that. right. Boom. Yeah. Uh, son of Jorel, this is TJ. He's saying Yellow Flash censoring me while I'm calling out the hypocrisy of Eric crying censorship at Naughty Dog striking channels is hilarious. You can't make this shit up. I don't know what he's talking about. Some guy 209 says this variant is included in the red Xbox, right? And the answer is yes. So this variant is, I'm, I'm automatically printing 2,500 of these, one for every one of the red Xboxes. So if you back the red Xbox before, you're getting this already. If you back chromium? it in the future, you're getting it already. But if you want to back it alone, I have a five pack of this. I have a 10 pack of this. It is a chromium cover. Ooh, nice. uh, you have to back it now. Otherwise, you're paying, it's part of the $200 perk. The gold Why is everybody standard? mad at Yellow Flash? Why is TJ in here complaining? Why would you come in here? Why would you come in here if everything that goes on in here makes you mad? That's what I want to know. I mean, you could ask that to Vicky. Is she Vicky even lurks. in here? She I don't lurks. mean in here, just in our in our sphere. Yeah. yeah. Well, she thinks she's, she has all the answers. But um, if Yellow Flash is censoring TJ, then it's probably just for the fun of it. Yellow Flash keeps censoring TJ like... Here's the thing. TJ is trying to tell the truth about Naughty Dog and uh, Eric July, and we can't have the truth out there. So uh, please censor him at every turn. Uh, Let him finish. Let him finish. Let him finish. TJ's a, a freedom fighter, and we must stop him from uh, fighting for freedom. That's very important. He says, I just got principles, big dog. You spelled principle <laughs> wrong, idiot. Uh, that's, a, that's a high school authoritarian is what you've just uh, spelled there. Mm-hmm. Principles is spelled with a P-L-E. If you have multiple principles, you must be uh, running several high schools. Uh, all right, now hold on. Let me... Uh, yeah, <laughs> I got Prince of Pals. I got Prince of Pals. Do you? Uh, all right, hold on. Let me see uh, where, what's going on. We got lots of super chats here. A lot of people being very nice to me when they don't need to be. Even one says the Cyberfrog car needs to be made out of the bones of our enemies. I will accept no less from you, Ethan. Hail Donnie, his foreskin will be missed. No. Uh, poor Donnie. <laughs> I didn't hear about the, that. Such a poor guy. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess so. Uh, like, I feel, I do feel a little bit bad because I've said, like, you know, um, my enemies will all pay many times. And then I'm like, I'm like, God, just settle down. Like, it's like God wants to beat the shit out of uh, the enemies of Comicsgate. And I'm like, Lord... Take it easy. Uh, just relax. You didn't have to go that far. Uh, we did have a little bit of uh, sad news, I guess you might say, uh, from... Uh, hold on a second. Stop sharing here. Uh, from Bounding Into Comics. Actually, Bounding Into Comics uh, reporting on something from Bleeding Cool, but I'll read the Bounding Into Comics article. Marvel Comics writer Donnie Cates reveals he's recovering from a horrific car crash that resulted in brain damage. Now, when I first saw this, I went, how long ago did it happen? Like 10 years ago? No, it didn't. It happened just recently. Uh, so this does not explain his behavior uh, in terms of how he's reacted to Comicsgate uh, or anything like that. This happened fairly recently. Uh, here's Shantan Jetty. Hello, sir. I just got a uh, a message saying I needed to pop in and say hello. Uh, and I, I got to pick up my daughter from dance in 25 minutes, but I just wanted to come in and say, I love you, and I love Comicsgate. Got to dance. What, what kind of dancing is your daughter doing? Uh, she's doing ballet. So she's at a, a summer intensive doing uh, ballet right now. And, uh, yeah, we're really proud of her. And, um, 
yeah, thank you for everything you guys do in Comicsgate to help make this stuff affordable for us. Mm. <laughs> so thank you. All right, let me see here. Let's. Uh, we absolutely uh, happy to see you. Happy to see Mike Last Barron who just popped in. Hi, <clears throat> Mike Barron. Hey, Mike. Hello. Hey, guys. So Hello. Hey, are you recovered? Uh, I mean, you know. Listen, I'm not, I, I'm not going to complain because we're talking about Donny Cates getting into a car accident and getting brain damage. So, you know, I, I just had a cold. Is there a March meetup happening for Comics Gate still in Florida? Does anybody have that? I mean, perhaps, you know, I think. <laughs> uh, I would go to that one. Yeah. Anyway, anyway. A lot of people are talking about different meetups now. And a lot of people are talking about hopping onto other conventions and stuff like. Right. Hmm. Uh, there's well, Planet Comic Con, and yeah, the one where the cool people will be at. That's where I want to go. There's talk about Vegas, amazing Comic Con. Yeah, uh, Biggins was talking about uh, like Biggins is suddenly like involved in uh, a lot of like meetups. Like he wants to do meetups. Mm -hmm. I could see that. Yeah, he said like that's that. that's what he should be doing, dude. Hell yeah! Well, meetups are fun. Biggins. Yeah, they have good organizational skills and like people networking skills and shit. Yep. Yeah, he he said uh, you guys have to meet up and look at your uh, look at your biggest backers eye to eye, you know, and like yep. sort of hang out with them and stuff and party with them. Easy for him to say. I hear he's like an Adonis and he's like one of the biggest. <laughs> <laughs> That's just what I heard from Cecil. He, Cecil said he's an. He's, he said Mr. Biggins is an Adonis. He's he a big is. guy. He He's looks like, down on you. That's how big he is. It's like, uh -huh. So he just wants you guys to look deep into his eyes and, and yes. see his beauty. Okay. I told him. He, he said that to me. I said, dude, all my biggest backers are Saudis. I get like uh, like big. First of all, I don't even know if Biggins has ever backed Cyberfrog. <clears throat> if he has, you can correct me. I don't, I don't know if he ever has. But um, yeah, like whenever I get like a huge order from somebody, it's somebody with a name like, uh, Fasul Abadubadabo, you know, I'm like, oh, holy shit, you know, awesome. Uh, and I'm like, I'm not going to Dubai, you know what I mean? I don't know what they're doing over there, but I'm not, you know, I appreciate them. I definitely do. I'm not going to Dubai or anything like that. Uh, you know, they want to come here and hang out with me. That's fine. <laughs> Uh, all right, so uh, <clears throat> Biggins has says Ghost House. All right, we'll see about that. Uh, <laughs> what is what is this? All right, never mind. I'm not reading that. Uh, Faux Peasy says I shan't to show you his McFarlane esque art. It's crazy. I like how you spelled McFarlane esque. Oh, yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. All right, what do you got, Chant? Oh, all right. Hang on a second here. Uh, give me one second, Vamp, uh, and I'll. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know what to do with my hands. I know. <laughs> so. Biggins look bigger than Kelsey, and Kelsey look like the biggest there, says Lieutenant yep. Hughes. Wow. I will agree. Wow. Yeah. Uh, let me see. Uh, why not? I had a job offer in Dubai oil rigging, but at the time it was really unpopular, if you know what I mean. <laughs> 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 I'd go. I'm just kidding. I'd go anywhere. I don't care. I got to get out of the house. I'm like... Uh, you know, I would love to travel. All right, what do we got here? You're doing some McFarlane-y stuff? You come to Tampa. Well, this was, yeah, from 20 <laughs> years ago. So this is uh, 2002, I think it is, way back then. So this is the style uh, I did for the Flash Gordon 75th anniversary with the, the Len Wein short story I illustrated. And so I'm going back because I showed this to John Malin, and he's like, you should go back and revisit this and clean this up and... You yeah, know, why wouldn't you release like, that? That looks beautiful. Yeah, very, very good. It's, but what are you uh, doing? You, yeah. you, you can't, you can't put that on on eight oh, and a half by eleven. Cool. Come on now. Who's this oh, dude? That's a nice her. page. Wow. Oh, thank you guys. That's that was uh, those were younger days. But yeah, so I did two issues of this, and I can do about probably fourteen more pages and wrap up the story. So it's probably be about, I want to say, um, I don't do math, but you know, whatever fourteen plus forty four is. Uh, I have no idea. So, yeah. Yeah, that's a that's a tough one. Yeah, I'm at a loss. Hey, that's like a that's a hit looking book. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's uh, it came out two issues, and, and so I think I'm going to do this because I did the uh, uh, I did the fun uh, logo for uh, Luke over on Fun My Comic, so I'll probably launch this on Fun My Comic. 
Uh, Will you and, choose a page uh, and blow it up so that we can see it a little better? Because it's still, oh, I want to see sorry. more detail. Okay, let me, let me on, go back right to back. the double page spread and I'll zoom in on it. If, uh, wow. Sorry about that, guys. Hope nobody's motion sick. Do you do uh, the layouts? Do you pick like where each little box is going to be and stuff? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. That's so cool. Oh, yeah. oh thank you. I appreciate it's, that. Thank no, you, I mean, I'm not a connoisseur or anything, but it looks really good. <laughs> oh my gosh well yeah i was uh, you know this Look was that. before comic skate so this is you had wow. to go to diamond you know you had to go and, and it was so hard to get this stuff out there comic skate makes it possible to go straight to the fans you know um and that's that's something i didn't have back then so to go in and rework this stuff is kind of fun you know and uh wow this but, you know, is awesome. it was with a nib oh thank you guys that is really cool it's fun to yeah. see like that mcfarland style there yeah, oh, I love Todd, man. That guy changed my life, man. Meeting him when I was 14 <laughs> at a convention. It's yeah. it's my favorite Todd story. If people That's could right. spread this, it's important. I met him at a convention when I was uh, a kid. And, you know, stuff was tough. And, you know, you're trying to, you know, prove your identity as an American. You get into comics because, uh, you know, it's it's uh, you love it. And it's an American art form. I meet the guy, bring my Hulk versus Wolverine poster, which is my my treasured possession. And he he goes. He says, "What's your you know?" He's like, uh, what, "What's your name? What's your name?" And I'm Bud. <laughs> I'm like, uh, hmm, "My name bud? is is Shanf. And I go to spell it, and he just starts writing on the poster. My heart just sank. I was like, "Right." And hmm. uh, he just writes, you know, to you know, scribble something. And I and he turns it around and he spelled my name right. From hearing it, I have wow. no idea how to this day. Crazy the magic of the Todd Father. That is so cool. Yep. Yeah, that's and really neat. Like, and he gave me an original piece of artwork, too. Oh, no. I what to say. Wow. Yeah. I was, can you imagine? I was 14 years old, and um, I was going to meet my hero. That's why I don't like the, the phrase, never meet your heroes. I mean, I'm what now? I'm like 47, I think, uh, September 2nd, uh, which is Atlas Shrug Day. And of my life, I've met so many heroes, so many amazing people who have lived up. You know, I mean, it just depends on what you're putting on them. But Todd was great for me in that moment. He was a terrific yeah. guy. Didn't know him from Adam. So it's just about, you know, putting together this book, you know, and kind of, uh, you know, getting that, that you know, this wrapped up and it's going to be great. Dedicate it I, to him, man. I'm going to be disappointed if you don't put this out. Like, I, I'll <laughs> back it. Oh yeah, it, it looks like a hit. It's already done. I mean, I, I, yeah, I don't know yeah. why you wouldn't. Uh... Wouldn't you just yeah just release that? It's, yeah, my my uh, every time I tell my wife I go you know John said I should release this she looks at me and she's like going well well I said it too but I guess you need <laughs> John Malin to say it you know and and it's just you know it's uh, but I I mean yeah I mean I, that was the crazy thing about it people said to me because it doesn't dawn on you until you're in Comics Gate you know people say do you own it and I'm like. Well, yeah, I guess I do own it. You know, nobody wanted it, so I certainly own it uh, back in the day. And Comics, um, and then Comicsgate uh, wants yeah. it. Comicsgate yeah. wants it. Give you it know? to the people. And he Sean. goes, oh, "You guys are great, man. I don't even know what to say. It's overwhelming in this space, but I love it. So you know." Yeah. Wow. You know, Shanta, what a waste of uh, your time that you didn't release this. Uh, yeah. Let yeah. Me be negative with you. Sean, uh, how dumb are you uh, that you okay. haven't released this, that you've sat on this great artwork, uh, this awesome-looking comic book for so long? Look at yeah. that. Well, you, know, you know, this is the thing, Ethan. You, you've you known me now for, you know, since I started first sending you um, obvious um, insights uh, into yourself and uh, <laughs> four years ago, four or five mm. years ago. And so you, you, you know full well, you know, that I learned from my mistakes so that I can repeat them. Excellent. And, um, I, listen, you got to put this out, Sean, uh, for real. This is uh, this is just excellent. I'm, I'll do it. I'm convinced. What's his name? Springball. Yep. So, uh, it, yeah, Springball. It's influenced by uh, by obviously Steve Ditko, huge Ditko fan, and oh my to god, dude. And so yeah. now hold on. Now now I now you are dumb. Uh, Speedball am? was the uh, oh, Sean. Hmm. Speedball was a disaster. Yeah. It was I'm a disaster you, for you. Steve Ditko. Do you remember when that came out? That was yes, a... It was like, Steve Ditko's back. Marvel Comics presents the new creation. 
from Steve Ditko, creator of uh, Doctor Strange, creator of Spider-Man. And then Mike Barron remembers this because he was working at Marvel at the time. And then it's like, it's yeah. Speedball. Mike, do you remember how Speedball was received by the comic book masses? Uh oh, I think he's muted. He's muted. Mike, you're muted. <laughs> what the muted. hell? Ah, hell. We need we need your voice right now. Oh no. Uh, here's Biggins who says I have backed all cyber fraud campaigns. Oh, thank you, Mr. Biggins. Appreciate it. Hmm. Mike's on. All right, way. sorry. There you are. So was Chef, it a disaster? Did you write that material? Uh, yes, I did. Yeah. So I, I. Yeah, I did all the stuff from uh, start to finish, and then it's uh, no, it's all right. It, it, it's all the love here. You guys don't understand. I just sent you a friend request. Oh, you did? My God, my cup runneth over. <laughs> I mean, and listen, can we please? Because we do, uh, we need to talk, Mike. Because I have been traumatized ever uh -oh. since you killed off Conchita and Punisher, and I need, I need some, some kind of Mike Barron tough love therapy. It's, it's got. You need to spiral. You need to spiral it, Mike. I can help you. Excellent. Mm. Excellent. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, yes. All right. Hold on a second. By the way, Cyberfrog 3, Red Extermination, Mike. This is um, uh, this is why we're here to uh, today. I got to close this campaign out. Uh, and look, me. we're about to hit 425. So, Congratulations. Uh, I appreciate it. Um, this is the uh, the new cover. This is a 36-hour variant. This might be one of my favorite covers that I've done. I really like it. I'm sorry. I can't stop looking at it. And I think it's because of Kyle. Kyle's colors. The great Kyle Ritter. Uh, what an incredible guy he is. Not enough is said about Kyle Ritter. Mm -hmm. What do we got here, Mikey? More, uh, more, more Jay Lee's. Okay. Not enough is said about Kyle Ritter. And I, I think that... Um, it's because he uh, is a deaf mute and he couldn't hear you even if you did say something about him. Um, but he is so good, man. He, he really just uh, lights everything up with his work. He makes me very happy. When I see uh, the colors, uh, I'm overwhelmed. Babe, did you, oh, you bring me another one? No, this is hot chocolate. That's hot chocolate. Look at, look at what Kyle did. Look at what Kyle did. Let's see. Thank you. Well, I love. can't see it. We can't see the. Uh, oh, you can't. Oh, sorry. Share this tab instead. Look at this. So Isn't this great? Still can't see it. Look at her little belly. What? Yeah, you can see it, can't you? No, no, nope. nope. not yet. You're killing us. What is? Oh, okay. Hold on a second. I'm Everything just amazed is... she brought you hot cocoa or whatever. That's so sweet. I know. She's awesome. <laughs> I think the tea helped in the lozenges. Yeah, hold on. Yeah, it coffin. definitely did. Yeah. All right. This is what we're Keep looking it at. From the coffin. Oh. Look at this. Yeah. Uh, hey, baby. Well. Nice. Yeah, I got some, like, haters going, uh, her shoulder looks wrong. It isn't wrong. I referenced it. It is wonderfully 100% uh, anatomically correct. So uh, you haters can go after yourselves. <laughs> you forgot what human beings look like. Uh, beautiful uh, Heather Swain with her little terrified face. Look at her little terrified face. And by the way, uh, it looks like Biggins has, uh, you know... I think she she's Biggins type of girl too in a way too. We made sure that we got her rack right. And she um, works out. Yeah. And yeah, or she better. definitely does. Yeah, she's a tough girl. Yeah. Well, um, I know all I noticed was the shoulder. Mm -hmm. Um <laughs> yeah, for real. It reminded me of Cecil. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey baby, yeah. nice shoulder. Uh yeah. you come here often. Well, she's okay. hanging by it. But uh yeah, absolutely lovely. I love her eyes. She oh, Kyle did such a good job. Such a good job. Um, yeah, I'm watching my phone. I haven't received a phone call yet from the truck. I don't know what's going on. I feel like I should have gotten a phone call from them already. Um, wait, but, uh, no. We're waiting on Uline. Uline is, uh, I ordered some new supplies. Hmm. We're, we, we're running low on uh, shipping crates and mm -hmm. bubble wrap. So uh, they're supposed to. We are out of boxes. We're, you're officially out of boxes. So we're just packing up books, getting everything ready. Okay, hold on a second here. All right. Let me just double check and find out what's the uh, what's the story here with uh, the the U line shipment. Usually they're here first thing in the morning. 
uh, when we do an order. Uh, Uline track. Everything is a nightmare all the time. Shipped <laughs> track. Every day a living nightmare. Yes. Out for delivery. Uh, 8.30 a.m. Shipment out for delivery to Signe, uh, New Jersey. Co-Signe. Consigne. Uh, it should be here any time now. They've been on the road since 8.30 a.m., Mikey. Where are they coming from? I don't know. I really don't know. But it usually doesn't take this long. It's already 1.30, and the uh, the order definitely should have been here. So, uh, sorry about that. By the way, Sean, I got your book. Oh, sweet. You got the excellent, excellent. Yeah. I Can you open that? Here. Take a look at that, like show people. Would you uh, believe how good this man is? Uh, is is everything in okay. here safe for work, Sean? Uh, no. <laughs> the, no, yeah, it is not. Uh, no, it's not. No, it's it's not. a Sean and Jetty book. Uh, so That's right. But a cool. Oh, that is so cool. And uh, let's see what else we got here. I'm trying to pick up just the naughtiest of images. Oh, dear. Um, Jonah Frankenstein. Oh, that's right. Gosh, wow. I love seeing you having a copy of it. That's so I great, love holding man. it. It's nice and shant. It's nice and sturdy, if, if you know what I'm trying to say. Oh, I know what there's I'm some, there's some boobies it's, here. We can't do that. You're saying? Uh, yeah, yeah. Mm. It's, yeah. There's some... Uh, oh, yeah, man. Beautiful stuff. Wow, look at that. Is that like a Frankenstein gorilla? Like, what, what the yes. hell? Yes. He's got stitches? Yeah. Franken Kong. Yeah. Franken Kong? <laughs> it's a great yep. name. Franken Kong versus Viet Kong. And there's your there's your next book. Gorilla. Oh, oh my right God. Man. Here's Narwhal, some, by uh, the way. Hello. 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 Hey. Hey. Monsters. My nose fair, Narwhal. bro. Yep. Oh, oh man. man. Yeah, that's crazy stuff. Where's Nosfero at? Is it almost done? It's almost done. Eric's, uh, I'm going to probably be using uh, Eric's printer. So we're sorting that out right now. Trading cards, bookmarks, all ready to go. And then we're going to be printing and fulfilling the hell out of that thing. And it's going to be great. I'm Eric, so what do you mean? You have a printer? The printer I'm using, um, they're local here. And they want to do a whole lot more comic book stuff. So I'm reaching out to CG ears that are looking for printers. I'm. They're going to be working, hopefully... Uh, with no cover as well. And they're printing Battlebrick Road right now. I'm actually waiting on it to get bound, and oh. I'll be fulfilling that campaign before we launch book two. I might so, uh, ask you for your info. Cool. Yep. Yeah, I want to print in America like I did this. the first two books. Yeah, beautiful. There's Battlebrick Road with the Kelsey Shannon cover there. That's the one. Gorgeous. That's, that was our, this is our test print. I cut it down. I cut it off the thing to just make sure everything was exactly how I wanted it. And we're going, this is a nice uh, scratch-resistant matte coating. Um, I think with the war torn idea so of Battlebrick Road, it's it's like the opposite of Cyberfrogs. Everything's shiny, I like everything matte. So we'll have you know uh, spot gloss for all those first edition you know campaign books, but then anything that's a reprint or a second chance or whatever, we'll have that matte finish, and it looks so so good. So yeah. oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, so Wait, people are books. asking me about because um, I most of the stuff that I do is shiny. Uh, but uh, Heartsick Horror was done on like a 60 page or 60 pound uh, kind of a matte uh, paper and people really liked it. So uh, I'm, I'm hearing like people like, what was that? We liked it. And I, I did it again for uh, Salamandro. The interiors of Salamandro Death Sting are that same paper. And I got to say, like, it holds the color really well. It looks, mm -hmm. yeah, like uh, that, that book itself, it's not expensive. And it just looks good. Mr. Biggin says, I backed all the Cyberfrog stuff, some multiple times. Have several pieces of EVS or, or Ethan original CGR, including two covers. Don't be an ingrate, pie guy. Dang. Biggins, I'd like to issue an apology Brag to you. much? A formal apology. I should never have doubted you. I just, I don't even think I know what your real name is. So, uh, I wouldn't know. I guess I just took a guess. because Biggins. <laughs> Big. Yeah, much love, is, everybody. Uh, I gotta go pick up my daughter, uh, so I gotta go take a, a trip up the road. But thank you guys so much, and Ethan, thank you, Comic Skate. I'll see you Where guys can they soon. find you, Shanth? What do you What do you got right now? Uh, they can find me on uh, on YouTube at Shanth and Jetty Art. I'm also on Twitter, so give a follow, give a sub, and I'm gonna be back to streaming soon. I'm just kind of you know in the middle of of the, the printing and getting everything organized. And Nosfero is gonna be a banger, and you heard it here first. Uh, Spring Ball will happen. So yes. it's it's gonna happen. Awesome. Too many awesome. too many signs. So we're gonna do it. Yeah, right, everybody guys? really likes it. Good luck. Thank you, Sean. Thank, Thank you so you much, guys. Take care.
Um, before you get going on something else, I got to go as well. But thank you for having me on. It was nice catching up with everybody and all that stuff. Great seeing you, Sheila. Thank you. Um, Hi, Sheila. I, I do have a stream on Saturday, 12 p.m. Eastern on my channel, Sheila Alien. Anybody's welcome to come on. I'll put the Mike, link. Mike, you in. take those out and then come back later with, the, with more stuff. In the CG screen. Sorry, in Sorry, the CG. Sure. It's okay. In the green room, I'll put the link. If you guys want to pop on, Mike Barron, you were asking if you could come on my channel like a while back. You're, I don't know if you remember that, but you were welcome to come on. Um, yeah. Thank you, ma'am. The link will be given. So, yep. Thank you, everybody. And hi, Comicsgate and CG Slums. Bye. Bye-bye. See you later, Sheila. Uh, all right, let me see. Um, Yurashima Taru says, I never criticized you for liking Barbie. I criticized your opinion that the movie was purposefully made the way you interpreted the movie. It wasn't. Yes. It was. You know, Ethan, you were ahead of the curve on that. There's been a, there's been like a hurricane Shit. of of YouTube videos about Barbie. Now they're all saying what you said, kind of. Like, Look, you know, I've I've seen some people just like she's a girl. She didn't mean that. Like that, uh, you know, she just she's a big stupid girl with a vagina. She didn't. Mean, she's uh, apparently I don't know Greta Gerwig, but apparently she's really fucking smart. That was a really really clever script, and she meant every single thing that I. You don't accidentally make a statement like that. That's a very intentional statement. And what that statement was, was incredible. It was the world of feminism within Barbie is toxic and women cannot grow within it. Men cannot grow within it either. Uh, therefore, the real world with all of its flaws, that's a, that's a purposeful statement that that movie made. I don't, I don't want to have to yell at everybody, Narwhal. Mike, I don't want to have to yell at my fans in the chat. Zaid says it was funny. <laughs> it was a good movie, and everybody's so mad about it. It's like it, it definitely like it's a culture war movie because people are still upset about it. First of all, it's making buckets and buckets of money, but people are really upset about it. They they want you to hate it, and eventually the right is kind of coming around. They reacted to it a certain way because the immediate reaction to it um, is what's on the surface. And then you have to kind of say, yeah, but what is the movie saying? Mike, did you see Barbie yet? No. You need I to will. see it. I, 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 you know. I don't go I've to seen I haven't been to a theater since uh, Top Gun. Uh, but I catch all the movies. Last week I saw it, The Fablemans. I saw The Covenant. I'm catching up. As soon as they come out on DVD, I get them. Crystal, yeah. you saw it? You went to see Barbie? Yep. I took my sister and my mom to go see it uh, last week. What did you think? What were your thoughts? Well, like, you know, as an individual who has played with a Barbie, I was kind of bummed because the, the marketing team, they need, like, all of the bonuses because they're amazing. But I felt like about probably, like, 30-ish minutes when they kind of bait and switch, uh, it just felt, like, different because I was kind of expecting, like, a quirky romantic comedy with like Barbie and Ken and hijinks in the real world. And that wasn't quite what we got. So I like different parts and like all of Ken's stuff is amazing. And his songs <laughs> were hilarious. So I like bits and pieces of it, but it just felt like the script was kind of convoluted and they weren't quite sure where to go with stuff but it was it was amusing uh my little sister didn't care for it too much except for like ryan gosling on screen as ken everyone loved yeah. ryan gosling in the movie and i mean margot robbie's amazing and she She's did beautiful. phenomenal as barbie i just feel like the the script needed work, and then the ending was like very interesting. <laughs> what about the uh, ending was interesting? The the whole like gynecologist thing at the end, like it's kind of like the Pinocchio thing where like Barbie becomes like a real girl, but it was like it's definitely not a movie for kids in the sense that it probably won't hold their interest but anybody who's probably 13 and up might find something amusing in the film my teenage daughter and her friends didn't care for it at all they're yeah. 18 
Yeah. Mm. It, yeah. It's it's if if you're expecting a if you're expecting a movie like you know about Barbie herself and Barbie's world, you're that's not what it is about. It's it's about it's about women and because yeah, the other part of and, this like a lot of Barbie media. Like having a little sister, and you have to sit through a lot of this stuff, or like little cousins. <laughs> like there has been some like more mature, like not like in the sense that the comedy is more evolved, like that Barbie Dreamhouse series or whatever that's on Netflix, where there will be <clears throat> some like adult jokes, but like it goes over the kid's head, so- and like the characters are good and. Barbie is Barbie and Ken's being like kind of quirky. And I think that type of stuff works if they had done something like that and still brought them into the real world. I think that would have been good. It's just kind of the way they did it. I don't know. But like the production design was on point though. That was like amazing. And like Margot, the whole cast did really well except for like a couple of like sore thumbs but like other than that it you know it's just it's it's tough because it's one of those movies where it's not for everyone it's more art house in their approach but the marketing is definitely propelling it towards a billion dollars like no doubt because that was like one of the best marketing campaigns i've seen in a long time welcome cecil how are you hello hey nice hat on you you got a hat. I, I forego the uh, the uh, mask. You're very quiet. Could you turn your mic up? I need to hear you can loud. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Just stick it. You got to be right on it. Hello. Put it's it right in your up. mouth. Yeah. <laughs> um. Let me see. Um. I yeah. I passed on the. Hat. I wanted to show off my new hat. They came yesterday. I got a couple of your hats. Finally came in the mail. So. Uh, I like your oversized spectacles. Mm-hmm. I mean that is very uh, Italian. I dig that. That's uh, that's cool. I might have to do something like that too. I, I found out uh, a lot of my Sicilian is actually uh, North African. Well, oh, so I one, see. One, one of my family members had the. Uh, there's a lot of Tunisian in me, apparently. <laughs> really? There's a lot of Tunisian in one of my great grandmothers, I guess, too. You're discovering your identity. Yes. I'm a gay Tunisian, apparently. <laughs> uh, let me see. Jeff Stark says, Ethan, do the Cecil remedy. Rye whiskey with honey in it. Hmm. Yes. Uh, Cecil, I think, gave me a bottle of rye. And he, uh, when I was sick, uh, he said, yeah, that'll burn your uh, cough right out. And it worked. It was amazing. Mm-hmm. Always turn to whiskey. Yeah. Good. RBI the Studios Cowboys, says. The Cowboys that use it for bullet wounds, for colds, for toothache. For everything. That's it. Any plans for a reverse cyberfrog or dark cyberfrog? No, no plans for that. There's only one cyberfrog, I think. Uh, let me see. Uh, does that mean no digital for cyberfrog? Says Ronan's review. Eventually, uh, I'll pay two dollars to hate on cyberfrog. Boo, cyberfrog! Says Lombarsi. Thank you. Uh, Sci-fi is life. Says I'd like to bring up a point I heard. Is it hypocritical for Eric to be doing this when he reacted to Naughty Dog and to the Last of Us Two leak? Uh, does anybody know what that means? I vaguely think, like, I think the game story leaked before the game came out. Yeah, for Which sure. is not at all comparable. But I might, I might be misremembering that. But it was like before the, before, not, uh, before The Last of Us 2 officially hit stores. I believe there, there might big, have there been like some that were scenes online, too like that, scenes that leaked. Yeah. So. I think there's something about the fact that there's a group of people on the internet who are, Highly critical of Eric in an obsessive way, uh, who are uh, who are not just not just have they stolen the comic, but they're letting other people know where to get the stolen comic, while they're bashing him on a daily basis. And I think all of that like leads one to just kind of say, I'm going to do what I can uh, to uh, protect my my rights, my property uh, against this faction of retards. Uh, and I, I support that, I guess. You know, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I understand it. I don't see, I don't like personally, 
you know, the way I feel about it is, um, you know, CyberFrog is doing really, really well. Uh, $425,000 from, I guess, like 3,000 people or so. I haven't looked at the numbers yet. I don't care if there are 100 people that hate me every single day. They don't really matter. Like, in the long term, they don't really matter. Uh, if some people are stealing it, uh, they I don't think they have yet. I don't think anybody has, like, effectively uh, scanned the comic book and stuff to steal it. And I think the reason for that is because Eric July showed up and his comic is more popular. So they're going to steal his instead of mine. <laughs> yeah. I, I'll also look at it this way. Those were people that were never going to buy it anyway. So in, in a way, no, one, you know what I mean? The people that they, they were, they're looking at it just to be detractors. They have to shit mm -hmm. on it. It's disingenuous. So, right. It's not like he lost the sale, uh, but you know he can't he, he can't punch these people in the face so this is the way the warfare is done it's like fuck you all right fuck me fuck you let me fuck you you back so okay. you know like i said none of these like, like you know we were just down in in tampa no but everybody is as so nice to us as can be there you can't find these fucking voices that are all over twitter and they're, they're not they don't exist in real life they're you know what i mean they, they, there's none of them they don't show up they don't they, yeah. they don't our shit there's nobody there was people a vendor. Me, oh did they give you guys shit i'm like nobody no yeah even, there was a even... vendor at tampa that had a comics gate section and i was like nice comics mm -hmm. gate section and the guy's like hell yeah so there's that's cool yeah there was What's a good oh yeah there was a whisper network person there and they didn't do anything so just these people left won't their say anything in person right well the the biggest thing that i'm worried about is that there are convention promoters who won't allow us to show up preemptively without even having to deal with, uh, you know, people saying, um, causing trouble once we're there. Megacon. Uh, yeah, like, mm -hmm. uh, like there's Megacon. There are other, uh, you know, conventions that are just like, we're just not going to have Comic Skate <clears throat> there because we're against bigotry. Um, I'm like, yeah, come on, why don't you try it on for size? Maybe you'll <laughs> like it. Uh, New York Comic Con wouldn't give Anna a press pass, even though she's got a quarter of a million subs. Yeah, that's like see, bogus. that's see, that's where it's uh, that's where it's a problem. Uh, once we're there, obviously we're sunshine. Uh, aside from the the sex dungeons and the LSD, uh, which we could we could do less of that comic. That was my last. That was probably my last time at either one of those uh, things for my entire life. Yeah. That was <laughs> been there. By the way, John Malin has been ranting about the sex dungeon and the LSD thing for like all week. I went on one of his shows where he is just like this degeneracy. He's being John about it, you know, but holy shit, is it entertaining? Uh, is John the, uh, being uh, angry about that. He has that. FOMO. He's just coping. Is he the dad of... In, he has in, FOMO. Uh, he's coping. That <laughs> FOMO has FOMO. Uh, <laughs> if I can't have it, nobody can. He's the dad in Footloose, I think. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. I'm not sure. But I, yeah, I was just Dancing like... Dancing uh, is forbidden. Right, yeah. And remember that if anybody calls you a racist in print, be sure to save it. Yeah, for... Oh, well, yeah. yes. You know, well... Here's the thing about that. I, I did a little legal research on being called racist. You, the, there's a reason they call us racist. You're allowed to. It's, it's a matter of opinion. Uh, that's that's why they call people racist and Nazi. Uh, you're allowed to call people that, uh, which is because, uh, I mean, it's a matter. It, there's, it's on a spectrum. Uh, like Mark Wade said, uh, you know, white supremacy is on a spectrum. So uh, the more you look into like SJW strategy, the more you realize uh, they planned all this very carefully. They know what they're doing, and it's uh, disgusting. But they've also beaten it to death. Like, does I mean, like I said, ten years ago, someone's like, "Hey, that guy's a racist." You'd be like, "Oh shit, really?" And now it's like that guy's a racist. It's like, no, he's not. <laughs> like, no, yeah. it, it's it's completely been watered down to be to be. Not, I mean, I think even I think even Bill Maher. Right. Uh, made a joke a year or two ago where he said, "Oh, that guy's a Nazi. Is you're? Oh, he's a jerk." Yeah. Like, it yeah, doesn't. You it seen, doesn't have you seen Ron Coleman's letter? The hmm. one that about your book? 
that he sent to the Daily Coast. Yeah, it was great. And the reason why you're going to win is because uh, the the article represented things in your book that did not happen in order to. But I mean, you're allowed to sit there and say Cecil's a racist. I say it every day. Yeah, he can't well, I'm Tunisian of North African descent as of now, hmm. so. There, so I, I guess you're free. From I just added the BLM to my fucking profile. <laughs> I'm part Indian. <laughs> I understand how you got those uh, those uh, African slaves. Then the little tiny ones. <laughs> That's right. I have them over <laughs> yeah. there, by the way. Uh, right. Yellow Flash got very excited by that box. He's uh, Yellow Flash was like, "Can I buy that? The the gift that you gave me." Well, uh, if, if you could turn a profit on it, go for it. Yellow Flash said, I wish Vicky would move to Canada and get treatment for her mental illness. They have the cure. And She's that's... referring to euthanasia. I yeah, it's I understand. Terrible. Uh, I saw Biggins in the chat, by the way, said Megacon has now reached out to Patrick and asked him to come back. Yep. Oh, interesting. Mm. They saw uh, what we brought. j Bama fan says, I love talking about Knob Goblin. Uh, and then, uh, hey, yo, Mr. White says uh, Sci-Fi is Life. That's definitely the Eric Weathers, who uh, now looks like a career uh, criminal uh, meth manufacturer. Uh, which is... <laughs> oh, shit, I was wondering if that was Eric. I, I was am the one who knocks. But yeah. Um, hey, you know what? Good. You hit the gym. I thought, we were, I thought we were doing American. casting for American History X Part 2. <laughs> <laughs> we are every day, but that's you beside the, the point. <laughs> Oh, shit. As a person of African descent, I don't feel this. Because I'm switching with Narwhal, I don't like being this close to him. Uh, <laughs> uh, Yurash Matar says, I never criticized you for liking... Oh, I read this one. Evil One says, uh, Cyberfrog Car needs... Oh, I read this one, too. I read this one. Um, wrong. Donnie, Donnie, I thought it was our CG dwarf. Uh, the genius of Top G's art is before its time. Oh, no, don't. <laughs> This is a tough one because, like, I I really had like pangs of guilt over this, like busting on this uh, this artwork, because if it were Andrew Tate that was drawing this, uh, then I would uh, I would go ahead and, and be like fuck this, but it's not Andrew Tate that's drawing this. It's like some dude. It could always claim it's artificial intelligence. Ooh, I have well, a visitor. I, I gotta go. Uh, All right, I'll see you later, Cecil. Bye, guys. Bye, everybody. Yeah, yeah I gotta time. go too. It's nap time. Uh, good night, Mike. <laughs> see you guys. See you. What do you guys think of this artwork here? I'll probably have to hop out too. And okay, get back see you to later, work. Crystal. But it's great seeing you guys, and I'll chat later. See you. See you, Crystal. Bye. See you, Crystal. I think it's amateurish. I mean, it's it's still it's like it's like one step below before the guy who's drawing it starts getting his chops you know what i mean like yeah but you know what yeah, like, i mean there there are a thousand books like this on kickstarter and indiegogo yep. a thousand um it's a it looks to me like a, a, a he looked at deviant art and said that'll oh, work yeah. um no ill will towards the artist um no. i mean he got a he got a big gig so good for him but yep Obviously, uh, <clears throat> this uh, Andrew Tate fella could have uh, afforded a much better. Yep. Is, well is, Tate, is he playing 4D chess somehow? Like he makes fun of people who play video games and read comics. Then he releases the worst comic ever. And anyone who reads it <laughs> needs to join Top G to get saved that's or whatever. The that's the end. Yeah, that's the, the end of the comic. I think yeah. you're giving it too much credit, but like. Because if you look at this piece of artwork, first of all, the layout's good. Like, if you look at it and you just go, okay, uh, the figure here, this, the, the car, like the way these figures are laid out here, this is all fine. Like, it's just poorly yeah. drawn. Mm -hmm. Like, if like if somebody gave this to Narwhal and said, fix this, Narwhal, you could redraw all of this and keep the figures right where they are and make this a good cover. Just on yeah. that front figure alone, I would tuck that rib cage to the left a little bit under the peg yes. you know but <laughs> yeah <clears throat> he's pregnant is yeah. this a ripoff did so, is this a copy from something did this did he did somebody trace this from a video game cover or something because it really is good he can yeah, draw it, 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 it to look like Andrew like, Tate. he's got that yeah it looks like he one of the covers up. from grand theft auto got traced maybe 
that logo reminds me of the Viper Comics logo back in the day. The Dead at 17 book was one of their books. Yeah. This really just seems like it. it is something else. Like, it, somebody's saying maybe, like, Grand Theft Auto. Like, mm. if somebody, like, found this, <laughs> found where this came from, because it might have come from somewhere. I don't know. I don't know what all this is, but it looks too, it's it's way too sophisticated a layout for somebody who draws like this. <laughs> That's funny. <clears throat> you might be onto something. I'm looking at Grand Theft Auto <laughs> stuff right now. See if I see. <laughs> maybe, it, maybe it came from somewhere. I don't know. But anyway, Top G. Yeah, I didn't want to make fun of this guy. Uh, you know, I said it, uh, it's definitely the work of an enthusiastic amateur. Calling it trash would be cruel. Because what if this guy's 14, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. <clears throat> I sense that he, that he means well. Uh, Jake Blues says, only a hater would call theft hypocritical. Uh, that's Jake Blues there. Thank you. Um, but Tate could afford a really good artist. Like, there are plenty of talented out-of-work pros who could use this kind of a paycheck and would make a, a book that meets a professional standard so that it visually competes with other indie comics. I'm not sure why. Like, why this? Like... Are people who aren't into comics like really like blind? Like they don't see that this isn't good. Yeah. To to him, it probably looks awesome. I've I work with, I have worked with a lot of non creatives on creative projects. If they don't have a creative eye, they'll look at that and say, "That's amazing. That's that's badass." Like if right. there's interior pages, uh, with like the the campiest sound effects and word balloons, and and I just picture clients I've had to work with in the past saying, yeah, exactly that. There's people with no creative bone in their body. Um, just check marking everything saying it's, it's greenlit. It's greenlit because they can't, I don't, I honestly think they can't see it in their mind's <laughs> eye. So anything that comes on the paper with, uh, I didn't mean it to sound like that uh, is good. <laughs> yeah. So. With Andrew Tate too, he, he could be like a narcissist. So he's like, am I on the page? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. it's good. Am I on the page? That's me. I see me. That's me. That's good. Like that kind uh -huh. of thing. It's like a depiction of me. So therefore mm -hmm. it's, you know. Yeah. It's special. Yeah, I like it. Uh, All right. Well, what can I say? Uh, it sucks. But, uh, you know, like I feel like I'm, I am I need to know who did it before I actually say it's garbage, you know. There's there's a lot of argument going on right now that it's, it's good for indie comics and whatnot. And I don't think it's going to bring any attention to. It's not going to do anything. It's no. not good. John Malin keeps saying that, and I, I rarely disagree with John Malin. <clears throat> but he keeps saying, like, all of these amateurs who come in here with, like, big, huge projects and their big, huge social media audiences and produce, like, dreck like this. Mm -hmm. I just called it dreck. It is. Uh, and sell it, like, for a high... That's great. That's It's just going to bring more attention to us, and I completely disagree with that. I don't think... Yeah, I agree. Like, I... <clears throat> Like how it, I think it's like a Furby. It's a fad kind of thing. You know, only his uh, viewership is going to care and want to cash in on it. They're not going to go, oh, I'm what, there's this whole world of comics. I'm going to go buy other indie comics. Nah. No, it's not connected to anything. Like, no. first of all, if it were good and if it were connected to other indie comics, maybe then that would be a yeah. good thing. But when it's trash and it's isolated, and it's like a spectacle, like how bad it is and how overpriced it is, is a, a cartoonish spectacle. It's not a good thing. Like people will just go, oh, you mean like the Top G comic? You're like the, mm -hmm. oh, I see. Narwhal's got a new book. What are you, Andrew Tate? What are you like, Andrew Tate with Top G, Narwhal? You, you <laughs> just grifting? You're just trying to put out a crappy product and get some money for it? Yeah, he's, right. he's like moving it towards like merch for youtubers rather than co the art of comics kind of and why do that like I, I i wonder that i just go why why make comics like you could do anything if you're just selling to your audience and you're selling merch to your audience like you could do anything that you want why comics are hard why make why try to make a unless you don't think comics are hard you just think yeah. any fool can make a comic book and then go ahead and just make a comic book but he probably you know, saw eric july make making bank this is like CG squared where he's like, ooh, cash grab. Like, let me get some in on some of this. Hmm. Making 97 bucks for the price point's funny too. I think it that's like him really like look at hating his audience. He's like, my audience is all simps that that need me to improve their life and they'll pay 
they'll pay whatever yeah. I ask. And we know we know Cecil's going to charge ninety eight dollars for cash grab too now. <laughs> I hope yeah, he does. <laughs> yeah, that would be so funny. One version, just and nothing, nothing yeah. changes. Yeah, a variant. <laughs> yeah. Phil fun. Devereaux says, shout out to the eBayer that bought all my Cyberfrog extras, PVC, cards, etc., and sent me back pit number one, two, and three for free. LCG. Great folks. Uh, Joe Ball. Chad, your book looks excellent. Tell us more, brother. Tell us more. Oh, put me on the spot. What do you want to know? Uh, what do you have to show? Do you have, like, pages and stuff to, to show right now and talk I, about I, it? Because it, it does look great. It's a good-looking character. It's a my my book is complete. It's finished. I just need to finish all the editing on it and the extras that I'm. I'm gonna actually put a bunch of the fan art that people have been drawing for me and uh, fit it in there. So I'm really grateful. I'm really surprised how many people are uh, drawing my character right now. Um, so yeah, I've got two books that are 24 pages each plus bonus material and show it do you have anything to show and like, a standee uh, i got the standee that goes with it uh yeah let me dig up some stuff here dig up some stuff i wasn't i wasn't expecting to uh show off pages but might as well let's see let's uh yeah i'd love to see the character well, he looks does really that. cool yeah. ethan have you heard of a movie called blackbird it's like supposedly the new so bad it's good it's like the new the room and people no. are talking about it. It came out like earlier last year. It's the guy who did River Dance in the '90s, and he became a multimillionaire, maybe, you know, really rich. And he's like Michael really good Flatley? at dancing. And he did a he did a movie where he oh, starred in it, wrote it, directed it, funded it completely. And he's like James Bond, and he like seduces all these women, but he's like a terrible actor. And apparently, it's amazing. But I haven't seen it yet. But I want to see it. Do you have a trailer for it? Find the trailer. Yeah, let me see. <laughs> I like to see that. It sounds great. Antonio Cardenia says, Ethan is right. Klaus Barbie wasn't that bad. Uh, NC Pork Barbecue says, Hail CG. Sorry if I missed out, but any updates on the secret <laughs> hoodie? Uh, not yet. We should have them a uh, couple months. Uh, Valdez D. Frank says, EVS owns a personal variant cover uh, to Mr. Biggins. Um, please let this mother effing Barbie debate die for the love of God. Chuck, this is frustrating because... Uh, it's like people go, no, Barbie is Barbie isn't that. It's this, and then you go, no, and then you want to talk about it, and then they go, shut the fuck up about it. And it's like, what the fuck, guys? Like either we talk about it or we don't. Like this, your Ashmataru says, "Yes, you refuse to watch your interviews about Barbie." Here we go. She said several times it is a feminist movie. It is a. It's about feminism. The movie is about feminism. Your Ashmataru says, "Starship Troopers." He wanted to make a fascist movie. Uh, Pablo Diablo says, uh, enough of the Barbie talk. You see what I mean? Uh, mm -hmm. where's my honeycomb box and Heather Swain figure? Uh, honeycomb box is on the way. Heather Swain still isn't here. I don't know what the problem is. It's, it should be here any day now. Uh, counter gentleman says working on a comic strip to release weekly online. Oh, nice. All right. Here's the, uh, trailer. Let's take a look at this. Okay. Is today the day you wish to confess your sins? You know, today, my sins are my own. <laughs> you heard about the incident in London? Blake Molyneux is extremely dangerous. This is our chance. We must get Victor involved. No one can do what he does. I'm not the man I used to be. The Blackbird is dead. You're the only one who can stop this. We've got to come back and fight. <laughs> when are we gonna get past this? I'll never get past this! You can't just hide from the world. <laughs> Victor Blackbird. I believe you have something in mind. Who I am is none of your concern. And what I do is out of your control. Bless me, Father. 
Uh, we're roboting a little. It's all glitching out. So is Narwhal. Yeah, Narwhal's glitching out. Yeah. So is, that, is he sharing that? Uh, well, uh, first of all, interesting. What are your thoughts on that, Eric? Uh, <laughs> Having I, seen that, I feel like now with this new haircut, I should have been at least a villain, uh, some henchman or something. <laughs> yes, uh, you would have been good in that. Yeah, I, I want a fight scene that involves a lot of dancing. I know that. Um, Michael Flatley, not great delivery, according to that trailer. But Not uh, handsome. Not particularly no, handsome. No, sort of that baseball uh, catcher's mitt face kind of thing going on. Yeah. Uh, I think he's had a little bit of surgery. Perhaps a nip here and a tuck there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. It wasn't as funny as I hoped it would be. I have the trailer. Well, I think the movie here, is funny. What what it looks like? Uh, one second, Chad. We'll get get to yours. Uh, we'll get to your pages. Yeah, yeah. These look. I can what see them. What did you just watch? So Michael Flatley, who was known for the River Dance back in the nineties, Lord remember of the he dance. would stand there, doodle, 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 have a line dance of people oh, right. like doing kind of tap dance Irish kind Leprechauns. of thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he made a lot of money doing that. And so apparently he's been sitting on his ass for 30 years and he decided what he wanted to do with his money was make a vanity project, James Bond ripoff, starring him as James Bond, a James Bond type of character, hmm. make a film. The movie's supposed to be not very good, according to Narwhal. But we watched the trailer just now and the trailer to me is like somebody very competent made this movie. <laughs> The only problem is Michael Flatley's in it. <laughs> it's like, I mean, the, the main problem is it's like you cut to the dashing James Bond character and it's fucking Michael Flatley and he's too old. He's not handsome. You can tell this is a vanity project for him. He sees himself as James Bond. He looks ridiculous. It's embarrassing. Uh, An aging and, uh, river dancer. I've heard, I thought yeah. I heard somebody call this the room two. That was me. I called it that. And someone oh, okay. else called it. I think if you watch it, it gets even worse. The trailer kind of sugarcoats it. But there's one line that's famous in there when he goes, who I am is none of your concern. And what I do is out of your control. <laughs> <laughs> that's something like Patrick S. Tomlinson would tweet. You know, it's so <laughs> funny, these tough guy lines. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, look, uh, for what it is, for what he was trying to do, that's great. Like, I think the audience is like, his wife or his mom, you know, and that's a mm -hmm. that's about it. Who would watch that? Who would watch Michael Flatley as a secret <laughs> agent guy? I don't know. Narwhal would. Narwhal would. I might see it now too. Come to think of it. All right. So here's Chad Townsend's excellent comic book. Hey, look at this. <clears throat> Shit, Amazing. man. Lots of violence. <laughs> Blood and it's, gore. It's alive, man. It's so animated. Look at panel five, that kick there. Yep. I like oh. I like putting a lot of emotion in my characters. Um, here's another panel here or page. Mm. Beautiful stuff, man. <laughs> yep. Still working on the dialogue in that. I'm still working on it. It's a cartoon, that, man. It, it Yep. <clears throat> the that head there that's bobbling, I it used to look more like you, Ethan, but I kinda toned it down. <laughs> <laughs> I would have been honored. It still looks like me. Look at it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, it's cool. <laughs> it's got the nice pointy <laughs> nose. Uh yep. boy. Really good, Chad. Thank you. Man, is that fun. Like Oh, oh, look at that. Gee, was... Great perspective. All your stuff. I, I, I was like, do you use 3D models? He's like, um, no. I just draw everything out. And... Mm -hmm. yeah. and let's see. Here's, here's a page where I'm revealing a story thing, but he gets his own arm ripped off. And Whoa, then... Spoilers. Yep. He proceeds to beat the shit out of him with his own arm. <laughs> <clears throat> is he a robot? Like, what is he? No, he's a he's a dead guy who's kept alive 
by um, this cursed skeleton key. So he's got these worms that are within his body. <clears throat> So he can slap body his body parts back on, and they'll mend back together. Um, he also has this ability to touch a dead guy, and obtain his identity and be like a chameleon. So when he's not in costume, uh, yeah. Let's touch uh, a what dead else? Guy. Yeah, here he is slapping his arm back on. <clears throat> What, what's with the colors? Like you, you'll do like a monochromatic kind of effect. Like what is that? Is that the way it's going to print in the book, or what does it mean? Um, I'm trying to decide a color to print it. I want to do one single color to emphasize like blood and you know, um, yeah, like like here, like the flags and that. I just want to do like single color. That's something I have to figure out pretty quickly. Hey Shane Davis, welcome Shane, to the show. What's up? What's going on? Um, so I'm not showing all the pages, but yeah. When are you gonna yeah. launch this? What when, when are people gonna be able to buy it? They can buy it now. It's on Indiegogo. Yeah. I've got yeah. seven days left in my campaign. Are you serious? I'm, yeah, it's up right now. Mm -hmm. And I've got I promoted. I have promoted it. Okay. I've got you know, that long, I would like to reach 10K, and then, yeah, let's go from there. But it's on the Black, it's the Black Phantom on Indiegogo, on Indiegogo. Black Indiegogo. Phantom. Uh, beautiful. Uh, Eric Weathers, uh, this is uh, the new Battlebrook Road. Holy God almighty. Shane, are you looking at this? I am. It looks beautiful. Thank Eric, you. Eric's one of the artists in CG since I've been here. I feel that it's grown the most. Yeah. Thank you, Shane. Yeah, this uh, we're launching in 22 days, finally. Uh, getting all our ducks in a row. I'm building the, the website. We're going to be launching on our own platform. And uh, this is my second favorite page. I'm going to save my favorite page for the book itself. It's just it's probably the best storytelling page I've ever drawn. But uh, got the colors in this on this in from the colorist uh, a week or so ago. Who and, is the colorist? Uh, is that Gabe? Four. No. No, his name's somebody else? Townsend. So yeah. I was looking for somebody that had a specific sort of gritty, textury, watercolory, uh, stylized um, style. And uh, through many, many months of, of sorting through colorists, we found him. He was the same colorist on book one, and hopefully all the way through, uh, <laughs> if my uh, slow ass can draw a little bit faster and get more pages to him. So Beautiful. Yeah, doing a, bu a bunch of stuff at once. This is the only page you want to show? Uh, no, you want to show more. I want to show everything. I'm so I proud know, of this book. Yeah. Um, I don't want to show the end of this. So this is all chapter three. There's Me chapter too. three and four are in the are in the trail. I'll show you another colored page uh, here. Traveling yeah. down the yellow brick road, Dorothy, nice. uh, Scarecrow, and Toto. And then, Scarecrow's a scene stealer. Yeah, he was so popular. So I'm like, we're putting him in everything. It's like Sweet. now it's like okay how do we do a scarecrow one shot let's make that happen yeah i like how that kind of happens how the the story can like grow just on its own from what you create kind of yeah and then uh i guess my cover i can show that so there's that this is the main cover a this is drawn by me colored by brett smith and uh, i i'm over the moon with it it's the th my favorite thing ever I think I just said that already, but it's true. I love everything I'm doing right now. Uh, I'm having fun. That looks great. Yeah. I'm having Thank a ton of fun with the book. So. I'm, I'm glad Brett First Smith book. is back and doing stuff again uh, with the community. He's a really yeah, good colorist. Yeah, I've got to work on another, color, another cover right now, too. So wait mm. to First see book what that looks excellent. like. Yeah. But yeah, Battlebrick Road 2 launches August 25th. And you just go to battlebrickroad.com and sign up. And we're going to have... We're going to have a, a hell of a lot of fun with that campaign. You know, Evil One says, Tampa made me realize how much of a prude John is. Shane, uh, do you think John Malin is a prude? <laughs> no. No. Uh, but why, what, what's Tampa got to do with John Malin? What is going on with you, Shane? What do you mean? Is my mic not picking up? You sound you like a filter on it. 
Yeah. Oh, oh, hang on, my go XLR. What about now? Am I fine? Yeah, yeah you're yes, fine. You yeah. sounded like an old lady there for a minute. Yeah, what are you doing? Oh, I, no, my cats walked over my soundboard, so uh -huh. they gave me an old lady voice. There you go. <laughs> you they sounded did. sick. Yeah, no, I am. Good. I am sick. I'm not like on a like a shit ton of antibiotics right now. <laughs> oh. They're kicking my ass. <sighs> yeah. Um. Yep, yeah, uh, John Malin, uh, very upset over uh, Tampa still. And evidently, and I missed this, I didn't get to listen to it because John privated it. And when I find John, when he wakes up from whatever coma he's in right now. Yeah. From oh, last hold on night. a second. Hello. It's Donny Cates in the <laughs> hospital. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. His delivery showed up. Uh, oh, that's cool. going to be it. I was just going to say, Battle Brick Road 1 was excellent. And if anybody has not picked it up, they should. It's well Thank you very it. much, Chad. Yeah, we're going to have a, uh, a a chance to to get it again if you missed it with the beautiful Kelsey Shannon cover. Um, yeah. Which should Somebody's be good. hopefully late next week, early early right. the week after that. We'll be getting that in the mail or in, in, the, in the house here. I think I saw Kelsey drawing that. Uh, did he draw that on live stream? Yeah. Okay, so I have yeah. seen this cover. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. That was a good looking cover. Absolutely, it's very reminiscent of like old GI Joe action figure yeah. stuff. Yeah, which is perfect for the book. So he was he struggled with the face. Uh, that would be a good variant cover if you, but uh, you know how Marvel did those Secret Wars toys covers, like mm -hmm. action. Figure Shane, covers. can you turn your camera on, please? Uh, I'm <laughs> sick, but why? you're sick. Are you in bed? Are you uh? Are you uh, covered in? Holy filth fuck! Like uh, no, I, I'm just. I look like shit. I guess I could turn my camera on if that's important. Uh, you always look like a pimp. Come on. <laughs> like I look like shit. I guess I could turn my camera on. Sorry, the uh, the truck the, with the delivery supplies just arrived at the warehouse, so Mikey's going over there to get it right now. That is great news. Uh, all right, so uh, John Malin uh, Prude uh, over uh, Tampa, people are saying. I disagree. I think he's a, a man of uh, did, what you, a, a man of faith. Did he hide his stream from last night? Yeah, that's what I was about to say. So <laughs> last I was night, on it. you were on there, Chad. What happened? Did he call Kelsey Shannon names? He and Kelsey really got heated at one point. I, he John will tell you. Uh, Kelsey got heated more, but I think John was just kind of fueling it a little bit, you know. But, um, yeah, hey, John, whoa, 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 what did it get heated about? About there's there's an argument between them over whether uh, fans should just go there and or sorry, creators should go there to meet fans and <sighs> not make money, you know just for the sake of like generating more income later based off of, you know, greeting fans or, and John's argument was no, you should have a table and make a lot of money. Otherwise it's not worth it. I, I okay. First, I hate this argument before it, it takes, cause I know it's going to take, and I know this is going to, I know how this is going to work. This is going to be a thing for months. Mm. I, you can do both. I have done and Ethan right. you've done conventions. I've 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 I don't even want to know. I don't even know how many conventions I've been to. I've been going to comic conventions since I was 13, showing my portfolio. You can do both at a con. You do not need right. to go find a convention with the right nightlife. You know, you that ain't that ain't it. Like go mm -hmm. to a convention and then you're all gonna have fun just because you're meeting people. Every ho every convention center has a bars around them. They all have airports. You know, just go to the right convention center. You can do both. It's like walking and chewing gum at the same time. And, right. and have an argument. It's one or the other is so stupid. So it's like it's 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 like, no, you can do just do both. That's it. Just, you know, have fun, meet fans, but also go to a pick a convention where you can make some money. Right. That was that was John's uh, stance on that. And um, part of the argument, too. Uh, John was getting uh, Kelsey wound up by, you know, throwing some, I guess I would say passive aggressive comments by calling uh, Patrick, uh, Patrick Pusher, 
<laughs> PT pusher, yeah, yeah, PT pusher, and so yeah, that yeah, was yeah. that was kind of getting uh, Kelsey wound up a little bit. There, mm. why was Kelsey getting wound up? First of all, yeah, John, uh, John called Kelsey a freeloader. Oh, I wish I'd seen this. Oh my god, how did he call him a freeloader? I just I'm getting this information like secondhand oh. uh, so, from fans. I feel I can feel on that one. Yeah, supposedly, please. Supposedly, supposedly some the some of the people that came to the table. Uh, did not pay uh, Patrick for their time and space uh, at the table or offer. So, so um, Patrick had his own table uh, yes. that he paid for, and tables yeah. are not cheap, Shane. No, he uh, paid about. I ain't gonna say, but he paid quite a bit of money for it. Uh, Big Daddy's in the chat here. Uh, this retard, he said, uh, has Comic Skate spoken about Eric July DMCA striking his critics yet? Lord only knows if it was Liam Gray, it'd be about the only thing people would be talking about right now. Woo! That's how Big Daddy's uh, live streams go, by the way. He sings them like a hillbilly. Oh. Uh, yeah, Big uh, Big Daddy, rewind it if you want the uh, the scoop. We had Eric July in here giving his opinion about uh, DMCA striking people who are pirating his comic. And I think he was pretty eloquent and, and won over just about everybody in the chat with his yeah. point of view. So everybody agrees with him now and disagrees with you and your retarded friends. Go fuck yourselves and uh, find a deep hole and fall into it, get pushed into it, slip into it, and uh, fall forever. Never stop falling. So let me uh, make sure I'm on the same page with this because I'm kind of under the weather. It's all because of pirating, right? That was the issue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Just want to make sure. Uh, yeah. Like, uh, well, I mean, here's the thing. Like, there are some people who pirated. See, Eric July's book is not for sale via digital. Uh, it just isn't. Um, but somebody took his book, scanned it. Uh, and then made a complete copy of it, not just talking about a few pages, the entire book, mm -hmm. and then started telling people, and I, I think I've seen it, I don't know who did this, but I, I think I've seen people saying, you can get ISOM number one here for free, and directing right. people there, which right. basically takes, I don't know how much ISOM number one, how much does he charge for that book, like uh, 40, yeah. 40 bucks or something? 35. 35 yeah. bucks? 35, yeah. So yeah, you're, you're stealing. Uh, essentially yeah. you're stealing at that they point were... you're encouraging people to do it and then on top of that like you're you're posting artwork from the stolen copy of isom in order to denigrate eric and i don't know how much a dude is supposed to take like you know so well, uh, eric like, is they were pretending to be rip averse too though weren't they when they were posting that link i don't know Hang on, whether or not all that doesn't matter. The fact that it's it's ripped or stolen and then put up online, he's within his rights to try to take it down. Try to take it down or just, uh, you know, his whole thing is uh, to, at that point, like um, when one of the people who he knows is publishing pages from the pirated edition of the comic, when they post artwork like that on Twitter, he's going to DMCA strike those people. And I mean, look, it, you know, it's uh, listening to Eric talk about it. That's it's on him, man. I don't disagree with him. Um, it's not something I would do because I just don't give a fuck. But this guy's putting up with a lot of shit. I think if I put up with half of the shit that Eric is putting up with, I might do something like that. Fortunately, I'm not, though, Shane. Well, but if uh, somebody was pirating my book and putting it up, I, I may go out there, whether they're saying good things or bad things, and just strike it, like, or try to take it down. Like, I, yeah. I mean, if I didn't offer digital and somebody's reformatting my book to digital and putting it out there for free, that's what I'm well within my rights to act on that because I didn't offer the product as a digital book. But can't you just be cool, Shane? It's the internet. Shouldn't you let retards who obsess over you endlessly and try to destroy your business just have your shit for free and post it everywhere? And crit it's the internet, man. Can't we just be cool? Well, that's just like illegal copies of movies being passed around and stuff like that. I mean, sure, but it's still illegal. It's still within the rights of me, like, acting on it. Like, you can't criticize Eric. My point is whether it gets taken down or not is whatever, but, like, Eric wanting to take it down 
he wanted to take it down ever since he didn't want to offer digital and to criticize him on that is just stupid. If the guy wanted his book out there on the internet as a PDF, he would have offered digital. Digital mm -hmm. leads to piracy. To criticize him for that is just retarded. I want to uh, say what uh, Kevin and Wolf in the chat, you, um, uh, you should highlight his chat. Um, <coughs> it says, actual fandom knowingly created an official looking graphic that used our in-house promotional graphics and advertised the piracy site links. So it was way more than just posting screenshots of a PDF. I mean, that's straight up piracy. Well, there's Big Daddy here. More retarded takes from a fucking piece of shit who lives in a trailer somewhere. He should be thankful to have as many people read it as possible. What a chunk. Cowards. He's just scared of bad reviews. Well, buy it. Are you afraid of paying $35 for a comic book so that you can bash it? You're stealing. You know, big Lots Daddy of people also. paid for it, and there are people who gave it good reviews and buy reviews. I don't think Eric cares. Just pay for it, dude. That's all it is. You're in the wrong. You don't have you don't have a leg to stand on. You don't have leg to stand on. <laughs> Cause you're not buying the comic book. Somebody somebody was saying it was actual fandom. That, yeah. Oh. Big Daddy also in the chat said uh, extends the next book that's online for free, Shane. Well, we offered digital when it first came out. Plus, I'm redrawing a lot of it, rewriting a lot of it. So the version I'm going to be selling is new. Uh, excellent. Um, now, hold on a second. It just goes to show you people only care about money, not viewers. Yeah, seriously. Like viewers who want to steal my work can go fuck themselves. Uh, you know, I, I draw comics for money. Yeah, we're in a, we're uh, in a business here. And people who want to pay for my comic are cherished, wonderful individuals who I love and I care about them. And people who want to not pay for my comic, steal it and share it on the Internet are pieces of shit. And I don't care about them at all. And they can also join you uh, in that hole that I want you to fall into. Deep hole in the crevice I picture this hole as being like a crevice in the earth and it leads all the way to the a pit, like the center of the earth, which is like a fiery volcanic. But when you hit it, like along the way, like it gets hotter and hotter and hotter as you fall, as you descend endlessly into this pit, big daddy, you and all your friends and the, your flesh is flayed from your body. As you fall, you continue to descend. But death doesn't come for you. Death doesn't bring you sweet relief. You feel every single bit of it uh, as you continue to plummet uh, until finally you hit the core of the earth and just evaporate into nothingness. On that note, that's what I got to do. I got to peace out. But uh, thanks. For but I said me. all that with love, Eric. Just so that Thank you know, you. I, I, it's only ever how I take it. I like the <laughs> I like the flay part. <laughs> thanks, Eric. Uh, we'll see you later. I got buddy. a fly buzzing me, so I'm gonna get out of here and try. <laughs> yes, sir. Right. See later, guys. Yeah, so I don't know. Uh, Big Daddy is Smiller, says Chris Topher. Holy oh. shit, that would be a fucking... That'd be amazing if that were true. You never know. <clears throat> WR Winder says, uh, EVS constantly tortures his viewers. It's true. Oh, here's Heidi Mealy, who says, When I had my blog back in the day, I always paid for what I reviewed so I could not be bribed. It was a matter of principle and my own pride. Oh. It works both ways. Like people getting stuff for free to praise it, that's corrupt. People getting stuff for free to bash it, that's corrupt. Just pay for it and then be honest. That's all. It's not that big of a deal. I don't think Eric really cares. He just resents people uh, stealing from him. Yeah, like <clears throat> wanting I I want to make money so I can grow this and um further do more books you know. yeah uh, uh and again with eric like the more money he raises the more he can pay artists hire other right. artists more books a lot of this is reinvesting your profits um yep. so when pirating kicks in whether you agree with it or not doesn't really matter he's well within his rights to uh, go out there and take it down like when you uh, big daddy mentioned me like at the time like we did have digital um i that was probably the only book i've ever tried digital and that leads to piracy so mm -hmm. that is that is a thing eric did not do digital 
So he's within his, I, I mean, he's in his rights either way to go after it. But like it, considering he didn't do digital, I think he's, you know, <coughs> well within his rights. Every time Brian Polito releases Lady Death, it's immediately on the pirate sites because he has a digital tier. So, <clears throat> yeah, like I, I'm to me, digital is last stop. Digital yeah. to me is like TV. I see this as like when we release like a, a Cyber Frog and Chromium, this is like red carpet premiere, Cyber Frog, yeah. like fucking just hit the movie theaters. And then over time, you know, it's like you'll do another edition of it. It's going to be in comic stores next. Cyber Frog Blood Honey will eventually be in comic book stores. And eventually, I'll make it available digitally, but not for a while. You know, it's like, uh, it's my work. I worked hard on it. I want to be paid uh, for it. I want to be paid millions and millions of dollars for my work. Uh, here's Big Daddy trying to kiss up to Shane, sucking Shane's dick. Accent is the best book in CG. It's a thousand times better than Ice Um. You feel that, Shane? That's the tongue of a hillbilly on your balls. Uh, it is. It's a sandpaper tongue up against my anus. Uh, I want to thank you, Big Daddy, for that. Um, you know, come again. <laughs> <laughs> come again <laughs> all right so anyway look we got real problems in the world we can't just focus on uh hillbillies trying to steal from black men uh we do have real problems uh and uh this is one of them donnie cates has brain damage wait for real before or, or, or what before he get, called you that time or after after i know i had the same question but no <laughs> i was like this is wait, new. He, this is a... oh okay wait this is real i uh, think i look i'm not gonna laugh about this no no not at all me neither well, feel, you yeah. gave me a warning before you said that i wasn't Game even brainwash. looking at this screen i thought that was just a joke from you i didn't know yeah. you were reading the headline <laughs> <laughs> no it's real give me a warning give a warning next time say everybody don't say something <laughs> smart ass <laughs> Yeah, I know. Serious. Yeah. I'm very serious, though. So let's all be cool. Oh, by the way, look at this. This is uh, Frank Castle Ghost Rider in space. Yeah, that was actually cool. Uh, that's a long time ago, but I, and I think he had Thanos as a baby. Like he was, uh, he he was guarding baby Thanos or something. I don't know. There was something to do with Thanos in it. Hmm. Oh, right. he's. A, I think he's a herald of Galactus. What if Punisher and Ghost Rider were a herald of Galactus? I think, or something mm. like that. I like it. What a great idea. Yeah. Here's the thing about Donny Cates. Like, um, Donny Cates is like. Uh, I don't know, man. Like, as a person, like, as a person, like Donny Cates is like, uh, but. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing. As a comic book writer, he's pretty good. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, it's not like Donny Cates, even though Donny Cates is kind of an SJW, like in a lot of ways, Donny Cates is kind of like a modern man. And I don't mean that in a good way. I mean, Donny Cates is like if uh, Details Magazine was trying to. Uh, choose man of the year like it might be like donny cates you know what i mean i need a timeline of events did uh his wife and him divorce before or after the accident uh this is recent this happened six months ago so all right here's all i know about the uh, divorce and i feel bad about it but we we've told we've said this before like when when we saw when we oh, poor donny because if Shit. she, hang on, let me say why I'm asking so I don't yeah. seem like an asshole. Because yeah. if she divorced him because he's like brain damaged, that's fucked up. Yeah. No. That's why I'm asking, not for Donnie, but for like, no. so I can place an opinion well, on her. By the way, oh. people are saying eat on your own time because I'm eating into the microphone, but I'm trying to do it like Bugs Bunny. It, they're yeah. cough drops. I, I'm trying my best to, con you know, they're, I'm just chewing on these. And these cough drops are kind of chewy in a way. So I'm chewing on cough drops. I'm not eating anything. Uh, stop smacking food into the mic. What the hell? It's you better. know, the, the, a little truth about the guy that did the voice of Bugs Bunny. When he would yeah. chew up at carrots, he hated carrots. So he had to spit it out in a bucket. Oh, seriously? I didn't know. Yeah, that. Is that an actual carrot eating noise? 
No, he would chew and snap into a carrot, but he couldn't stand carrot, so he, he had to spit it out after the take. Mel Blank. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Mel Blank, yep. Uh, <laughs> moist mouth noises intensified. I heard it in my own headphones, and I thought it was funny. Me it's... going, here's the thing about Donny Cates. <laughs> I like it. The thing about Donny Cates is... <laughs> That I sounds was, like Bugs Bunny. Yeah, I thought it was yeah. a good effect, but all right, like you guys can like, appreciate it. I like it better than coughing. So <laughs> yeah, it's way better than the coughing yeah. effect. So uh, I didn't listen, know guys. Kate's got a divorce. Like, we were all making fun of him when Matteo, oh. like the Italian stallion, yeah. was stealing yeah. the attention or whatever. We were that projecting was a couple of years ago. <laughs> it's awful, man. Divorce is the worst thing in the whole world. It is the. Uh, no, it isn't. I think uh, crib death is the worst thing in the world. Mm. Uh, but divorce is pretty bad. Uh, divorce is like fucking. It's a nightmare to go through. So I don't like. I I don't. I don't. You know. I, I certainly sympathize with them. It's an awful thing. It feels like a, a really bad betrayal. But we've said it before. Like this is the thing. Like weak men. Like guys, don't get suckered into this. Uh, there, there's there's there is no woman who wants a man who is like a woman they're just as right they they say that they do but they really they really don't and when it comes down to living with one when you got to live with a weak sister limp wristed milk sop how's that for like 20 slang you like that chad was that cool yeah it was perfect yes weak sister lily livered milk sop milk sop not a lo- not enough yeah. cough drop chomping <laughs> I not gotta enough, put another cough drop in. Not enough Bugs Bunny in there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they don't like it. Women don't like that, and and they uh, seriously they find it repulsive. You know. Yep. You watch the way Shane smacks Yanzi around, like verbally, like in his home, <laughs> like, and it's really like you're like, why would she put up with that? That's what, what that's fuck? what she wants. What the fuck? The little woman. <laughs> what? what? That's the what. Fuck? Why? That's, why bring me into this? Because you're not on camera, that's why. Yeah. Oh my god. You know the way Shane treats Yancy is the way women want to be treated by men. Yeah. Right. I mean, and she, that is true. She's hot and ready whenever we get off camera. Ooh. Really? Yeah. Nice. I love that. I love to hear that. Wow. You get the so, engine. Up, you know what I'm saying? You got to warm the car up. Oof. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta say, like, Andrea, like, uh, Andrea's like a based woman, like, she's a real, real woman, and she changed my point of view about a lot of things, because, uh, you know, when we started dating, she's just like, uh, you don't need to have female friends, and I don't have any male friends, you understand? Like, I don't have, like, because there's a thing, like, women do, well, it's like, Dur- like during their wedding they're talking donnie and his wife were talking on this live stream about like their wedding and how like she went and danced with matteo scolera another fucking oh. comic book artist real handsome italian guy yeah. and it's like uh, oh but he's my friend it's like fuck that no you don't like you don't do that like there should be like bonds of intimacy like you know yeah you checking don't wanna... out the menu yeah. women shouldn't be dancing with men slow dancing to feel their boner pressed up against them that's that's yeah. See, that's the thing. Like, there's no, there's no good reason for that. And you could be like, well, listen, I'm an enlightened man from the fucking 2020s. It's this is listen. We're not. All right. Well, how do you like it now? You know, it's like really like men and women really need to have a little bit more respect for each other when they're in this kind of a, a relationship. And mm-hmm. I mean, I like that. You know, it's a, it's cool. I went, oh, you're right. Why do I have female friends? And you're not gonna have male friends, really. That's sweet. I like that. Badass. Did you see the leaked Jonah Hill tweets from like a month ago? They were kind of funny. And everybody was overreacting to those, Narwhal. But you know what? He was right. Yeah. Those were great tweets. Yeah. See, Donny Case could take a page out of Jonah Hill's book. Jonah Hill was just saying, look, uh, if I'm going to be in an intimate relationship with you where like it's just me and you, which is important, like that's a that's a healthy, it's a good thing to have. Biggins is in the chat. His like he describes the conditions under which his relationship with his wife flourishes all the time, and it's like it's great. You know, it's like he's got the same thing going on where there are rules. There are just rules to uh, here's what I will tolerate, and here's the line that I won't tolerate. Mm. Uh, and uh, 
you know, like he, he's just saying, look, uh, there, you shouldn't have guy friends and all this other stuff, you know. He's right. Like, that's why are people complaining on the internet about that? Like, he's 100% right to have those standards and rules. None of them were out of line. Uh, they were just all about, like, the conditions under which, like, he's going to feel like he can be in an intimate relationship. Dale A says, Did Ethan have any female friends ever? Hmm. I mean, of course. Only, pro only prospects. <laughs> yes, that's well. That's what all of them are, as it turns out. You know, it's like yeah, you have a couple female friends, but really, like when you have like a. Tell me if I'm wrong about this. Uh, one of you wants to get with the other one. One of you has feelings. Almost always, except in some cases where it's like. You know that both of you are repulsed by each other, but uh, I don't necessarily agree with that. Uh, yeah. Do you see? Do you see Macron and Trudeau are having a gay relationship? <laughs> this is a little what? bit of a tangent, but they. That is what? Yes. Yeah, that's that's like the rumors. Because then there's a little more to it too. Because it's Trudeau. He started calling people who criticize him homophobic. They're like, well, you jumped the gun on that a little bit, buddy. Like, you're not gay, right? And like, what? He, maybe he is gay. He's going to use it as a defense, like a shield. That guy is gay. That guy is definitely gay. Yeah. In every single way. Um, I can be friends with Anna. Like, I'm not, like, there's no. I, yeah. I got to think about it a little bit more. But, I mean, uh, I, I why? But I'm not hanging out with Anna all the time either. You know what I mean? Like, what if yeah. you were like hanging out with Anna all the time? Well, that, well, well that's like where it. I was going with it. Like, I'm friends with tons of women from kickboxing and their husbands and stuff. Like, you know, if you're in are they on your phone dropping messages on your phone? No, I don't have their phone number. I mean, it's I don't have a way to con I don't go around contacting them in any way. It's just I see right. them and we're friends and that's it. I mean, it's. You know, it, it's, you know, but we're also engaged in a physical activity together. So it just oh, is really? possible. Yeah. Yeah. I mm. communicate with my wife's friends once in a while. Shane is kickboxing women, by the way. Well, <laughs> no, like... the men, their husband, they do it as a group. Like their husbands yeah. are there and their wives also do the women's class. So I just know them through proxy. Uh. All right, so um, Shane, you're excused from all of that. I don't. I think you're a good guy. Hmm. Not really, I, but we'll, I trust we'll, you, and <laughs> you know, you and Yanzi. Like, I I think you've got good boundaries. You know, uh, you uh, you live streaming with Mandy Summers at her beach yeah. house uh, at three in the morning when she's mm -hmm. in a bikini. It's yeah. just you two alone together. Yeah, yeah. I don't think there's any problem there at all. None. I think that uh, that was perfectly okay. Um, mm. trustworthy guy. Well, did you mm. film the whole shark thing? No, that wasn't me. No, I, you know, I, I, I hate to pop people's that bubble. Wasn't... I hate to pop people's bubble, but her husband was there the whole time. Okay. Oh, shit. He was the one that handed her the towel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, I hate to, uh, you know, to destroy the illusion that is YouTube, but, uh, yeah. Well... I think Shane is a pervert. <laughs> Thank you, Trevor Wright. <laughs> uh, dialogue from Mandy. Here, Shane, hold my vagina. Yeah, I mean, that's... Oh, God. Here, here... <laughs> Here's the boundaries with me and Yanzi as I'm the dog off the team, as I'm just a dog running around the neighborhood. That's the boundaries. Oh, Shane. Yeah, that's perfectly okay. Yeah. Uh... I, I, right. I mean, it was either that or going to the set. Would it have been better if I went to the sex dungeon? No, I the know. sex dungeon, I, you know. At least went? I was super who chatting. Went and sell, at least I was getting super chats and selling comics. I mean, come well, on. Yeah. Narwhal went. Narwhal, talk about the sex dungeon. Yeah, Narwhal. Yeah, it was a big, misty, open room of, like, old wood, like a 200-year-old building. And that mm. was cool. Like the actual bar was cool. There's DJs playing regular music, regular lighting. But then in one corner was a guy like in dominatrix gear and a giant whip and he was whipping girls and you could volunteer to get whipped. 
he'd whip you softly at first and then harder and harder till you tap out and then they kick you out and they're the like a bunch of people were around staring at that. I couldn't see because it was so thick. I just kind of heard about it later, actually, from Cecil. So Cecil did that, right? He said, oh. I think he just watched it. I don't think he got whipped. Oh, okay. I think he's, he said uh, that girls, it was mostly girls getting whipped or maybe only, but he said girls were lining up around the entire bar to, for their cow. chance to get whipped by this guy. Were they pretty? And, yeah, there was a lot of hot girls there at the bar. You know, one of Malin's points he said is, he said it's 40 year old men preying on 20 year 21 year old girls. Yep. He was really upset about that. And I didn't quite understand. That's what Malin said. Malin said it was yep. Yeah. Yeah. Shane, what do you think of that? Oh, poor Shane, I, man. He really does look sick. I am. I told you. I, can I be off camera, please? All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. As long as you <laughs> stick around. Shane, uh 20 40 year old men preying on 21 year old women. In other yep. words, Cecil uh, that describes uh, Cecil pretty much. Uh, what do you think of that? Um, I mean, a predator is going to prey, you know. Oh, um, wait. Cecil's like 50. Uh, so, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Like 50. You know, my bad. Uh, yeah, don't get that wrong. Uh, I don't know. I don't really care particularly. I mean, I when they told me about the whole thing, I, they were like, oh, it's a goth club. And I'm like, oh, I like Flock of Seagulls or Depeche Mode. And then they're like, no, no, no. It's But there is a little bit of maybe a chance of bondage that's like the weatherman saying like yeah it's gonna be cloudy with a chance of rain that's I'm what like, the pharaoh I'm... said to the jews there's a chance yeah. of bondage but it's mostly egypt's most mostly a goth club yeah so i i just said it out i i was like i don't want to be you know around the bondage and people are gonna say well you're a stick in the mud i'm like yep me stick in mud hmm. Yeah, Narwhal, just, what was your experience with it, though? Did you think it was a gross place, or did you have a good time? But did Narwhal leave for a little while? Uh, Narwhal, you're muted. I don't know. I guess Narwhal, did you, your shoes stick to the floor? Oh, God. Oh. Yeah. Here, here's, the, here's the thing. Like, what if, what if I go to the bondage club and I get uh -huh. hit? I get the bondage bug bite. And then I come home and I'm like, I'm scratching and itching. I'm like, I got, I got, where's the bondage club? I, I, how am I going to get that high again? I need a bondage club that, you know, there's a lot of good reasons not to go. Right. You know, it's like, somebody's my like, thing, Hey, go ahead. My thing about like why I wouldn't go to a bondage club is because of the type of people that go to bondage clubs. Uh, exhibitionists, slimy nudists, enjoying their sexuality together. Uh, this is not something that I care to even think about or witness. Mm. Do you remember that show, yeah. Real Sex, on HBO back yeah. uh, in the yeah, late yeah, 90s? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, oh, good. It's going to be a show with a lot of people who are naked. And then you see the types of people that are on the show, Real Sex. And they're all enjoying their bodies. And... Um, I don't want to see them enjoying their bodies. They're they're fat people uh, with scented oils and candles uh, touching each other uh, and uh, sharing each other uh, with swingers. Uh, and uh, no thanks, no no. I don't I don't want to smell bo and fucking patchouli together. I don't want to see hairy naked people uh, enjoying each other. Uh, and delaying their orgasms. I don't want to see that. I don't want to be a part of it. I don't want to go to a place where that that might involve whipping and nipple clamps. Uh, mm -hmm. It's okay. You know, that's just, maybe it's just not for me. Uh, call me Mormon. To say uh, you're a prude. All of these things. Maybe I am. Uh, maybe I am. Uh, but I've never uh, had jumper cables attached to my scrotum or my nipples. Right, right. I've never been whipped uh and uh, i never will be okay? i've never i've never left the house going gosh i would like to go get tied up and the shit beat out of me and yeah oh I, honey turn around it's not that you would plug. do it it's that you're gonna be around people who do it they people who people people who have product tested various kinds of butt plugs and have an opinion about what the best ones are these are not people I want to spend my weekend with, and I don't want to associate it with comic books. And maybe you know, John Malin was right. Yeah, yeah, I don't necessarily disagree. It's got me. It's got me pretty curious, though. I've been searching online every day for different materials to purchase to try and d to start dabbling, maybe. 
But uh, there was a guy, there was a dude there just from the chat. And he's like, he's like, yeah, my name's Suck It in the chat. I'm like, sweet, nice. And he's like, um, I, I'm the guy who bought Witten's butt plug. <laughs> <laughs> That's how he introduced himself. Um, Ethan, I got to go, though. Uh, but I want to stream with you tonight if you're still streaming. So thank uh, you We'll so see. Yeah, definitely. Do you want to say anything to Donnie Cates on your way out? Uh, good luck, Donnie Cates. Go with God. Uh, something, something. No, not go with God. That would mean... Oh, go, yeah. You mean Our like, wall. good luck to you. Yeah, feel better. God feel better. bless you. Did you shake yeah. that guy's hand? Feel better. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, bye, everyone. Bye-bye, bye. Narwhal. All right, so speaking of butt plugs, uh, Donnie Cates uh, reveals he's recovering from a horrific car crash that resulted in brain damage. Oh, my God. Uh, Donnie Cates. This was an... Uh, I saw... Oh, look at this absolute carnage. Look how fucking cool this is. You can say what you want. I mean, SJW Marvel is a problem. But they're doing some stuff right. Donnie Cates, Ryan Stegman. For what it's worth, that's a long time ago. Like, that, that's two years ago. Like, what you're looking at with that Ghost Rider thing. That's not too long ago. I mean, that's... Uh... Well, to be fair, Donnie Cates has been out of action for six months. Did you know that? So... Mm -hmm. It's been six months since he's uh, had a comic or written a new comic. He's got to get better quick, man. It's ridiculous. Uh, absolute carnage. Yes, indeed. By the way, don't put absolute carnage uh, in an article about a car accident that gave Donny Cates brain damage. Who wrote this? John F. Trent. Yeah. Is that a joke? Car. Car. <laughs> absolute yeah. carnage. And it's you could have picked anything. Any other book that he was in, other than a car wreck. Uh, uh, oh. All right. Kate's first informed YouTube channel, uh, Comic Pop, uh, returns at San Diego Comic-Con about the crash. Host Tiff and Sal uh, shared their conversation with Kate's. Donnie Kate's apparently was involved in an automobile accident. He was severely injured. He actually has the scars to prove it. It's insane. How come he told zero people? <laughs> Except for uh, Sal from uh, Comic Pop. That's a good question. What's he trying to hide? Oh. You think this was what? like a Teddy Kennedy type of situation? What if, it, what if they had to start ripping? No, 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 not like that. What if, got, what if they patchworked his ass back together? Like they, they started taking parts from other corpses and so on. on. You know, like maybe, man. yeah, really like cool. and he's trying to keep it on the DL, you know. Uh, Sal continued, he broke a bone near his ocular area. Ooh. That's not good. That's the uh, that's ocular. your dick, right? No, no, no. I think that's <laughs> like the I think, no, no, no. I think that's like his uh, it's your eye, eye socket. It's yeah. your eye socket. That's I knew a guy that did that. He ended up like with multiple surgeries, like because, um, you know, like I, for, I'm not a doctor, but the, basically the cords that come off your eyeball kind of sew through those. Oh man, this poor guy. So it's yeah, it's touchy. That that's not an area you want a broken bone. Oh, no shit. It would, the guy I knew, like he basically went down to the ground in a fight, and the dudes were basically kicking him on the ground, busted his eye socket. He was seeing upside down for a while oh, because wow. you know how like your eye works where it like. Flips oh my god yeah you so could see upside like, down he was until they went in and did a surgery so like any type of that is the one area you never want fucked with like that i don't know that's awful. that is a bad place to have a broken bone just because of your eye and, and like i said the uh tissue that goes to your eye to your brain sewing through there's like a hole in the back of your eye socket that that shit goes through that's well, awful uh, Mr. Biggins says the Kate story sounds like a cover story for something worse that may come out in the future. Wow. See, Mr. Biggins isn't like me. He's thinking Chappaquiddick, you know. Hmm. I don't know. I, I personally, I don't know. You're so what people are saying, it's it, like a my mistake. It's ocular, not cocular. Because yeah. it says broke a bone near his uh, ocular area. It does sound like a penis. You Could know how be. people say, I'd like to break a break it off and 
stick it in and break it off. Yeah. I said that to a girl one time as a pickup line. She took it the wrong way. Mm. Yeah, How like, did she, uh, <laughs> did she why take did people it? say that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I like to break my dick off in that. Why do people say that? Like, what are you, a chameleon? Like, how does... <laughs> yeah, like, hey, girl, <laughs> what, what if I stick it in you and break it off? <laughs> Sounds good in a moment. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Dr. Coffinell says, Ethan's always making it about penises. Uh, I, listen, uh, Mr. Biggin says, orbital fractures can range from minor to sight ending. Hopefully this one's minor. Uh, all right. Broke a bone near his ocular area, went through a severe period of rehabilitation, mm. and is now trying to uh, essentially recover the pieces of his life. Uh, Tifton added, he's like missing six months. Ah, shit. I'm still hung up, and we never answered it because we got, de you know, um, derailed. derailed. But did his wife leave him before or after this? Before. Because uh, he was a... <laughs> because the funny thing about Donnie is... Oh, it's so awful. Like, Donnie Kate spent New Year's. There were already rumors, like people who oh, yeah, yeah. people yeah. hate Donny Cates for some reason. I mean, I have a reason to hate him, and I I just don't. Uh, but uh, people do hate him, uh, and um, there there were rumors spreading that he his wife left him, and people were kind of making fun of him. It's so painful, it's just awful. Oh no, he he said he spent New Year's alone on Twitter, right? Um, no, well, what he said was he says I spent my New Year's. Spending like drinking in uh, 2023 with everyone who made my success possible, and someone said, "What do you mean you were alone?" He said, "Exactly, exactly. It was me that made all my success possible." Mm. Uh, and I thought that was pretty weird. But so it was before that, and this was this was six months ago. So I assume like in February is when the car accident was. So, so was it could have been ago. like a holiday wreck then. He was a Valentine's Day wreck. Mm. Mm. I well, spent uh, I spent today with everyone who made my success possible. Me, just me, all by myself. <laughs> God, that's something to say. Divorce really fucks you up, though. Like I, I'm not hating at all. Like it really fucks you up. It depends on how long they were married. If you're not married all that long, or you haven't been with the person all that long, it can it can be breezy. Uh, if they're taking half your shit, not so much. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, Son of Jorrell says, "Why y'all talking about that man in marriage? What the fuck? You want people no. talking about y'all? What the fuck? No, 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 no. Hang on. I'm only bringing up." To try to see if she left him because of the state he's in. I, that, yeah. That's the only reason I'm bringing it up. I'm, I'm just trying to get a timeline of events. Right. Uh, and TJ, I'm going to time you out again if you ever question me again. Uh, yeah. The chat. yeah. Everybody knows in the chat that you never question me. Give me just one moment. I'll be right back. Okay. Uh, Beastmaster Fresh says, Ethan, stop. Jamie Max says, we talk about how Andrea left DVS all the time. Yeah. It is true. Uh, all right, here we go. Oh, God. He doesn't remember, like, the last at least six months, or at least that's what he said, says Sal. Uh, Sal then detailed Kate's stutter is now more pronounced after the accident. He has been very vocal about the fact that he used to have a stutter. Uh, you might have caught it any of his interviews. It's a little bit more pronounced uh, nowadays. Did you catch his stutter? I never noticed. Yeah. He then emphasized he was severely injured, and now he's recovering and trying to pick up the pieces of his life. Uh. Sal then also detailed that Kate's divorced his wife. Oh, he divorced her. Yeah, I mean, that's like a mutual thing, you, you know. Uh, Shaq says, uh, when are we seeing the Heroes and Villains covers, and are they exclusive to the Red Xbox? Uh, you'll see them soon. I haven't drawn them yet. Um, I'll probably post them like in the next couple of weeks uh, when things kind of slow down. And um, they're not exclusive to the Red Xbox. They're going to be available just like the other uh, the Heroes and Villains cover from Wreck Planet were. Uh, they will be available uh, for sale as well. 
Uh, is the Dark Harvest cover still Heather or is it Frog Pinching Wasp? It is Frog Pinching Wasp. That is the Dark Harvest cover, the Dale Keown cover. So good, man. I wanted to use it for that. Uh, here is a... Uh, Glad to see Donnie Cates. This was July 20th, so this was recently. There he is. He looks good. Uh, have a wholesome con conversation with him. Without Donnie, I wouldn't be writing comics. He's my hero, and he can't be stopped. And then he put a winky face here. You know Shame. what that means. You know what that means. He's, one of his eyes is broken. Why would you use a winky face emoji? <clears throat> to rub it in. You gotta, I mean, this is the thing. You gotta put him in his place. Like, you gotta, you know, constantly remind people of their handicaps. Um, you don't Terrible. want him to, you know, let him know, like, it's negging. It's ultimate negging, right? Like, hey, you, everything's good except uh, Gunther Girl, your walleye. That, that cat's in the back. Like, I'm taking that home. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <clears throat> I wouldn't do that, though. I wouldn't use the the winky face emoji here. I think that's inconsiderate. Cates would provide further information about his accident to Bleeding Cool, of all places, informing the outlet, quote, I was in the backseat of a car pulling off the highway. Well, that's we were... just, wait, hang on. There's this problem right there. He's in the backseat trying to drive. Like, what? what is he doing? Yeah, like, I, a few more details. <laughs> Who was driving the car? Who was driving the car? Wait, wouldn't you say that? I like would. I was I was in the back seat of Shane's car. Uh, does your car have a back seat? It's a cube, of course. And he was on his laptop, right? It, so he's in yeah, the back yeah, yeah. Seat. He's in the back seat driving and writing a script at the same time. Look at these horrible conditions of working at Marvel Comics. You have to write and drive at the same time. I was in the back seat of a car pulling off the highway. Right. So they were getting off like an exit ramp, like back onto uh, wherever. Uh, when we were hit by a truck from behind, sending my head into not just the middle console, mm. so he, uh, but also my open laptop. Were there two people sitting on either side of him because he's in the middle? Uh, the result of which shattered my orbital socket. What happened to everybody else in the car? Mm. Sounds like he didn't have a seatbelt on. <clears throat> That's what it sounds like. Yeah, because didn't he go to the front of the car, like the dashboard? Yeah, he, it sounds like he was not wearing a seatbelt. Yeah. Although you'd be surprised, you can slide right out of a seatbelt in an accident. What? And get tossed. Yeah, not. I mean, I, 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 I take that, but slide right out. Then wow, Mr. Biggins is yeah. absolutely vicious. He is not playing games at all. Mr. Biggins says Mateo was driving Megan the passenger seat. God. Dang, Mr. Biggins. Was there like some fellatio going on? Yeah. Oof. No, I don't think so. I, I but I would like to see like I I would like information. Like, first of all, who who else was in the car? And is everyone else okay? Because like, you know, a truck hitting the back of your car like more people are injured, right? Just you? You're the only one that was injured? Like, it just sounds oh, like... No, it depends. Yeah, people... Because I've... I've uh, One of my first car accidents, I was hit from behind by a tractor trailer truck, and uh, I hit the windshield. I had a seatbelt on, though, mm -hmm. and had a concussion, had to go to the ER and all that shit. But the whole back seat caved in. If anybody had been in the back seat, like, they would have been dead. Like, so... Yeah. I... That... that he said a truck hit him? Yeah. Wouldn't it be crazy if he was just like, uh, by the way, I, I, you know, slammed my head. I broke my orbital phone. <laughs> Six months I've been in. A... By the way, Ryan Stegman's dead. Uh, everybody yes. else that was in the car with me, my entire creative team, they're all dead. But uh, my orbital socket, ow. Uh, no more information about that. I hope everyone's okay, including Ryan Stegman. Uh, all right, so hit by a truck, sending my head not only in the middle console, but also my open laptop, the result of which shattered my orbital socket, 
sliced my head open like a grape. Pardon me? And caused a not insignificant amount of bleeding on my brain. Okay, so the bleeding on his brain, unless they got, so. and well, unless they got to it and relieved the pressure, is probably what caused the brain damage. Like the bleeding on the brain, it kind of crushes the brain, and there's not there's a little bit of space between the skull and the uh, brain tissue, and if that fills with blood, and they it doesn't release, it basically crushes the brain. What the? F uh. He continued, so yeah, for me, I was in a car heading, oh, here we go, heading to the airport, and then boom, so maybe he was in like a, what do you think, like this, it sounds like a car, like a, you know, taxi Uber. almost, an Uber? Yeah. An Uber. All right, that's good. And then boom, kind of teleported to a hospital ER with no real idea what the hell had happened. Or who I was, or yeah, not my favorite thing that's happened this year. How do you know? You don't remember the year. Uh, and it's been a weird year. Hmm. Six months, dude. You're sitting there in a car to the airport. And then the next thing you know, it's February. The next thing you know, like uh, you wake up and it's uh, July. And you're just <sighs> like, what the fuck? How, how has this been kept from everybody for six months? Like, how do they keep this under wrap? I don't know. You would think this would be news right away, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it'd be comic news. Like, holy shit, Donny Cates was just in a... Did we just miss it? No. I, I, the first I heard or, of it was the other day, and I, I check all these sites for com or, news and comics. Or nobody heard from them. Oh, Snake says Shane knows all about brain damage from beating the shit out of children in the ring. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. No, no, no. Uh, I had a I had a girlfriend that her grandpa died because he uh, fell down and uh, he had a, br a, a a blood vessel pop in his head and uh, the pressure basically crushed his brain because nobody was around to. I think that's how Liam Nielsen's wife died too. Like she fell and hit ice and it started bleeding the inside internally like mm. uh, it, it's a big thing they have to relieve the pressure right away happened to my dad mm. really yeah he died of a brain aneurysm yeah aneurysm thank you that's kind of the yeah that's what it's called i'm sorry to hear that <laughs> um all right so let's just just to review uh this comic book industry is such Donny Cates is a fairly popular guy within the comic book industry. I think I thought like uh, last year we were calling him the most important artist in Marvel Comics, perhaps the most popular writer. I mean, writer, not artist. The most popular writer in Marvel Comics, most popular creator maybe in comics, Donny Cates. And mm -hmm. Donny Cates gets into a, a near fatal car collision on his way to the airport, presumably to a comic book convention. Because that's where you go when you're going to the airport. And nobody knows about it. Nobody reports about it. It's not in the comic book news. Now, maybe people did know about it, but why isn't it news? Well, he did know where he was for a period of time. So maybe it took a while for people to find out. Hmm... I don't know. I don't like this. I'll be honest. Like, there's something fishy about this it, because it's kind of like one of those things. What if the mainstream comic industry didn't care enough to do a wellness check? Like, we ain't heard from Donny Cates in six months. What's he up to? That's what I'm saying. Like, okay, so nobody knew where he was. He like, ser like seriously, Donny. Oh, this pisses me off. It's like, kind this of like industry's Steve, retarded, dude. I'm not saying he's Steve Dicko, but remember like how Steve Dicko had fell and was rotting on his apartment floor and nobody knew he was dead? Yeah. Oof, that's brutal. But I, I'm just But that's an out. old person who's not yeah. connected anymore to the Yeah, it's just the old person that created one of the most popular superheroes that's still in Yeah, but he chose to sort of be, you know, wackadoo. You know, to be fair. He chose that life. Like, he wasn't connected to... 
his fandom or anything like that, you know. He, he wanted to be left alone in his average home. But uh, Donny Cates, seriously, like, um, is a modern-day kind of like Mark Wade uh, in the sense that, you know, it's like he's just – like, doesn't, don't people know what he's doing? Isn't he connected? Isn't he always on the phone to other, like, homosexual comic book creators? Like, why is, uh, how, how do you get in a car accident? And this is the thing, like, I'm, I'm like, did I just miss it like everybody knew? Well, hold on a second, because Bleeding Cool is reporting it also like it's news. It happened six months ago. Right. And it's not like Rich Johnson. I can believe it. It's not like Rich Johnson's going to sit on that story either if he knew. Like, mm -hmm. he's not the type. So, like, I, I, I'm i of the opinion he never knew. Uh, you know, that a lot of these people didn't know. It's just they, they would have wrote something on it. They would have written so Like, anybody who, who knew would have been like, by the way. No, it's a, like, it is an important story, though. Because, like, uh, Donny Cates getting in a, a car accident that is that severe where his head is split open like a grape his eye, his eye socket is broken and he's in like he's in recovery for like six that's a big news story in comics and normally they would be running would have written like, it. right normally they would have been running like GoFundMes and stuff trying to raise money like this would have been like a whole thing huh? like you know like it's what if he didn't have a whole lot of friends you know he said ah, there you know. we go mr dongs is here he's another one who uh, may have been in a car accident because we haven't seen him in a while uh but he seems okay he says uh donny cates didn't use twee weedonisms by the way i used the word twee today too mr dongs are you following me i don't see many people using the word twee and i used the word twee today on twitter twee weedonisms and sincerely attempted to tell a good story, which made him the best writer Marvel had from 2010 to 2020. I gotta agree with you. Like, as, like, Donny Cates should have been SJW1, like, uh, Milkshake 1. Good to see you again, Mr. Donks. But he actually, like, this Venom shit was wild. Like, Venom's, what, here's what we're doing with Venom, uh, you know, uh, we're, we're giving him bat wings. That's fucking awesome. What are you talking about? That's fucking awesome. Mm -hmm. Like, that's what comics should be. I think he uh, also had him, like, making chains at one point for some reason. Like, he, he was just, ex you know, like, technically Venom could make anything. Like, he was never really shooting webbing. The webbing was part of the symbiote. So, like, you could technically have Venom doing all this crazy shit. Like, he could make anything as long as it was attached to his body. Yeah, like, there's, I mean, really, like, to... To get a hold of Venom and to and to really start telling neat stories that would be would make it see when you got Venom, I, I think Venom's audience is like 12, 13, 14 year old boys. Yeah. You know what I mean? And to, you gotta make those kids go F awesome. Like that's your job. And I think he did a good job of that mostly. There was one really lame sequence where there was uh Venom being introspective and apologizing for being a terrible just a shitty person. Uh, which I made fun of. I made a video about it. I read his dialogue, and it was beneath contempt. It, it's weird. Even though Venom's like a one-note character type thing, you know, like Venom's like like a peanut butter sandwich. It's hard to fuck up, and I'm not taking that away from Donnie, but uh, like, I kudos he did some new shit with him, but like, seriously, it, Venom's like that one book. It's like, how do you fuck this up? He just says, I want to eat brains. Yeah, um, I, I'm, he's got a giant tongue hanging out his mouth, crazy teeth, you know, and he beats the shit out of Spider-Man. Like that's it. Like you know, yeah, run this shit all day fans. long. Are you still streaming? Yeah, the you more what you want. Yeah, yeah, bring him over here. Yeah. By the way, this drawing of Venom is incredible too. Who drew this? Stegman. Oh, I think. Is that Stegman? That might be. That's another Stegman. guy, man. Stegman was great on that series. Yeah, like, these guys are doing comics the way comics should be done. Right. I mean, they're just, like, you, you aim them right at the uh, the cool factor of, like, a 13-year-old boy. Like, that's mm -hmm. that's the whole thing. Like, what, like, 
getting getting like drawing something that makes a kid go cool man like that's everything in comics and not enough people are focused on that uh but um anyway yeah like uh i do not understand how this happens now somebody in the chat just said yeah but a lot of people like frank miller has kept his health issues secret for like years and nobody knows what what's up with frank miller but isn't that a little bit different than getting into a catastrophic car accident yeah. at a young age? Uh, and that, I mean, like Frank Miller's health issues are not news. That's none of anyone's business. Just like Pee Wee Herman. I didn't know he had cancer. Uh, he just dropped uh, dropped dead at the age of 70 this week. It was a shock mm -hmm. to me. I couldn't believe it. Uh, it's nobody's business. But if Pee Wee Herman were in a car accident, mm -hmm. that would be news. So something weird is going on here, and uh, I suspect foul play. Let me get more of those, Mikey. I suspect foul play on the part of Rich Johnson. Hmm. He's always to blame. Interesting. So you think Rich was driving the car? Um. Yeah, I do. <laughs> He's driving the truck. <laughs> uh, Jenko Morningstar, thanks for $10. He says, E, the Cyberfrog car is awesome. You should advertise a painted version with a big red text that says free below so that people instantly know what it's all about. Yeah, I will. Like, the Jenko, the, the minute we hit $500,000 on the campaign, um, I will uh, – uh, that's just a preview. Because right now it isn't – it doesn't exist. We have to hit 500000 and then yeah. everybody will get one of those for free and we'll immediately start to put that stuff into production. Um, but, uh, yeah, thank you for that. What do you think, Shane? Are you, are you thinking about making a car too? Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, why wouldn't I? I, li I like the Hot Wheel cars. Me too. Yeah. I'll be honest, everybody have these little racers going on and, um, uh, maybe eventually you can like crowdfund like a little racetrack with like SJW chomping like hungry, hungry hippos or something that no, are our cars like blue haired land whale traps. Mm. <laughs> blue haired land whale cars. Oh, I, 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 I got Terry a track for monster trucks and it has these gator mouths that will open up if the huh. car goes down. You could do a blue haired land whale trap. Like, <laughs> well, that's a they great open idea. up like hungry, hungry hippos to catch stuff. <clears throat> like, you get enough of these racers, you can put a little track together. Yep, we can make it happen, man. I like that. I like the idea. I like the idea of like once I figure out how to do this, hopefully it won't be too expensive, and I could just kind of invite other people to be a part of it. Let me all get it done at once. Like just put all these things, manufacture all these cars at once, and get them to be kind of a singular, unified sort of packaging effect. For people who, who talk about how they wish Comicsgate was like more like a company, one big company, like this will probably be pretty charming for them to see uh, yeah. uh, cars get, that all look the same. Can we get similar, similar packaging so they kind of look like a set to collect and stuff like that? That's what I mean, yeah. Like, yeah. again, I like the, I, I really do like the name CG Master Racers. I really like that. I think that's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> CG Master Racers. Yeah, the Master Race. It, Frank Miller would love it. You know. <laughs> can you get like a, a group deal? Like if a bunch of guys go in on one. The only way to car? do that effectively would be, oh, look at this little mini Hot Wheel. That's how big they should be. Andrew's like, yeah, they could be miniature Hot Wheels. Like, oh this. man, those are cool. expensive though. The little ones, yeah. Yeah. Super little, like a micro machine. Uh, my yeah, I mean, you have to sell like a pack of five, though. We wouldn't be able to do individual ones, I don't think. Yeah, like, um, here's the thing the only way to get like a, a deal, like a joint deal on them, is if they all use the same car body, but we just mm -hmm. repainted them differently, uh, That'd which would be pretty disappointing for people. It would be nice, we could probably get. Like, cause we could just, we could make 40,000 of them and divide them between like, uh, 10 different creators, you know? Uh, but I don't think that's what anybody wants. I think everybody would want to have, like, you'd want to be able to pick your own car, you know? Right? Yeah. I mean, Mandy Summers would do her gem shock mobile. It'd be like a, what would Mandy pick? Do you think? <laughs> convertible some or uh, other convertible, I guess. Yeah. What would yeah, you pick for like starlight cats? 
Uh, I, 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 I don't, I don't know. The gems would have to be prominent, you know, like on the car. Mm. Glorious Rex would be the weird one because it'd have to be something a little bit more bold. Some futuristic, but like yeah. apocalyptic at the same time. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I would love to see that. It's good. We can do this stuff. You know, it's great that we, we have the ability. We have the community behind us, backing us to make these things possible. We have a lot of, like, talented people who uh, are good at everything. Like, I mean, it's amazing. When I say something like, boy, I'd really like to make a video game, I hear from people who are just like, I know how to do it. Like, you know, uh, Eric July making animation. You know, it's like uh, if, if we said, like, I want to make animation, like, I'm sure a bunch of people would pop up and say, uh, hey, uh, how would you like to hire me? Uh, that's pretty neat. You know, we have a really good community here. Uh, let me see here. Let me read some super chats while I'm doing this. Uh, from all of you excellent people, thank you for uh, staying with me, Chad and Shane. You're making this possible. Uh, you your mind's your box. Campaign? This says uh, Cyberfrog 2 just arrived. Worth the wait. Wow, cool. Yeah, there's some people who uh, uh, who are getting Cyberfrog 2 here. Mikey is shipping out Cyberfrog 2 fairly efficiently. Yurash Mataru says it just said he lost six months of memory. Ooh. Shane, is there anything over the past six months that you'd like to forget? See, what if he was in the hospital that whole time and nobody knew? Like, like he was, hang on, hang on. Like, he had no ID. Like, he was, uh, couldn't remember anything. Like, he was a John yeah. Doe. Yeah. Like, they didn't know who he was. What if he, he just remembered he you, he's Donnie Cates? He's like, oh my God. <clears throat> I'm world famous, Donnie Cates. Yeah, like that that'd be crazy like if you were just like I've forgotten who I am. I've forgotten how to write. Wow, and then you just have to remember who you are over uh, the course of 6 months and remember how to write Venom and Thor and all these things that you do. Mhm. Mm Does he uh, he has family, I assume. I, I don't none of this is adding up and the again, the idea of uh being in a car wreck and the comic book industry, like not giving a shit and not saying anything about it, not reporting on it, not knowing, unless yeah. Donny Cates just didn't want people to know. Maybe yeah, so. but it would have snuck out. I, 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 I don't. That, that doesn't make sense. Like, I don't think everybody would have just kept their mouth shut. Like, it would have snuck out somewhere. There's no way you could say, "Hey, Donny Cates is uh, in a bad accident and nobody's supposed to know." It would have. It would have freaked out on the internet somewhere yeah I, I i this is a weird story like like okay if you were in a car accident would there be any situation in which you were like i don't want people to know please keep my privacy yeah i don't know why wouldn't why? you want people to know that like help yeah send me cards i'm lonely I, in the I, hospital I, I mean especially with hero things like heroes initiative and stuff like Thanks, they would have been involved and and done something. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, just not a lot of it makes sense here. The article doesn't mention when it happened, says Yurashima Ataru. Uh, that's true. You have to work your way back. He says six months, so I assume like February. Uh, I read this one. Uh, Donnie Accident Eisner Award book in the making, says uh, Wandering CG King Marduk Knight. Do a comic book about it. Uh, drive by uh, Hail All. Uh, Hail All, Chad, Shane, Shane, says the wandering comics gay king. I can't wait until this guy reveals who he is and gets yeah. to the work. There was a lot of, uh, there was some talk about who he was at Tampa here and there. We really? Would, yeah, we would just have these discussions on clues, you know, and it was a lot of fun. He's great, yeah. man. I know who he is, and he is really, <laughs> he's a lot of fun. He's just great. You know. Uh, Hail CG, happy to have supported four years. Already crazy how time flies, says Mr. One Ball Whale. Yeah, how does it feel uh, being here right now with Cyberfrog 3 running it, being part of this machine, you know? Oh, it, man. It run it? I mean, have you had any type of, like, I don't, I don't retrospect, like, looking back at, like, everything? Yeah, like, I'm, I'm, um, it's starting to feel like this is just, this is the way things are. And, uh, uh, you know, the idea of working on, working on Cyberfrog 3 is extraordinary. 
Um, it is, uh, it's pretty neat. Uh, I, I like it a lot. How do I feel retrospectively? I feel like things have changed, but settled down quite a bit. Um, how do you feel, Shane? I mean, you've been here for three years, four years, three years going on well, three years. Cause I, I was here for a while without a campaign. So, um, I think I was here for about six months before I ever launched Starlight Cats. Uh, and when I when I say here, like I was like on live streams and stuff, and then mm -hmm. eventually, you know, uh, before then I was watching for a long time, and uh, I, I mean I know you from sort of way back, so like I I kind of it wasn't like a bucket of water, like I kind of knew this stuff. Driving to the condo, uh, I was just thinking, like you know, like looking back, I was like this whole comic thing is just crazy the fact uh culture war uh, i mean i was thinking back to being a kid going to cons like heroes cons when i when i was 13 in charlotte north carolina to today and how people are divided and like it, it's just the whole thing is hard to wrap your head around if you just <laughs> try to sum it up you know what i mean uh yeah uh yeah, I, I try not to like it. I I keep thinking in a way that things are kind of uh, chilling out a little bit, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Comic Skate is uh, the longer Comic Skate sticks around, the more it kind of just becomes a matter of fact, uh, and the division is starting to get kind of gay. Like people are starting to just kind of go, um, "What are we? What are we mad about again?" But then again, like I today, I got mad because of uh, Mark Hamill's uh, gay tweet about Mark uh, about President Trump being indicted. Like the, people still are kind of just uh, insane uh, on the left yep. in ways that uh, I I can't understand. I can't relate to the idea but that like the left in this country feels like they deserve revenge for the fact that our president was elected. Uh, is infuriating. Um, this is this is the whole thing. Look at this, uh, Mark Hamill. You piece of sh uh, like this is Luke Skywalker. My attempt to make August first tweetless Tuesday was completely obliterated by Trump. Look, Rump, capital R, because it's Rump. <laughs> He's like an ass. Trump indictment day, which no less than Neil Katyal called the most significant legal event of our lifetimes. Hashtag accountability is coming these people made up lies about this president his entire term created fantasies about him working with the russians to undermine something called democracy uh, the these bed. people just i mean they they fucking they did everything to torture this guy as president they think they're owed accountability uh they're going to uh try to imprison the guy who we elected, the man who we elected to represent us because it really hurt their feelings that badly. Accountability. The idea that they're owed accountability because President Trump hurt them, their psyches, shattered their psyches. The more I think about that, the more angry I get. You know what I mean? Yeah, it, it's weird too because I mean this sounds fucked up, but I really don't give I, I really don't care about Mark Hamill except swinging a lightsaber. Like I, I really don't. Yep. Care for. But his, he's his one of like I don't care about him particularly either anymore. But he, that attitude is prevalent. Like he's speaking for a lot of people. Like a lot of people are just like, yeah, that's right. He should go to jail. You know, I get it, but it's I I don't know, like fandom should just like be fandom, understand like nobody cares to hear your politics in fandom. I, I don't it, but everything's political now. It's like, gone beyond politics though. It's not even a matter of like it used to be like, boy, it's really annoying to hear your bullshit about the environment and climate change. Okay. Yeah, it's really annoying. Yeah. yeah. It's no yeah. longer about that anymore. It's the, the guy that represents you, the man that you elected to represent what you wanted for this country, we're going to send him to jail because we couldn't cope. Like, this generation can't cope with the idea of there being a two-party system, right. one party that they can disagree with, 
And every now and then it changes hands. Like one guy, one party, the next party, they can no longer cope with that. And they're trying to make it so that the most, po like the most popular uh, candidate from the Republican Party can't run for president next year because they've impeached him twice. Uh, they've indicted him. They're trying to arrest him. Uh, they're trying to uh, make him face charges for things that, uh, you know, uh, really pretty much every president has done. Uh, it is, uh, it's ridiculous. Like, uh, seriously, if we're going to do this, this is a bad road to go down. I don't like to talk about politics too much, but I will say this, this is a really bad road to go down. And, and the Democrats continue to do this where they take things too far. And, and basically what happens is when you lose power, get scared because you're establishing these rules. Everything that you do to Trump is going to happen to your representatives. Right. We're, we're going to do it to you too. Uh, because it, like there, there has to be some basic level of respect for one another. It's like we disagree, but we you know listen. It's uh, this person won the election, so on and so forth, fair and square. That we have to do that in this country. If we can't do that anymore, we're trying to imprison uh, each other seriously uh, for bullshit. Uh, that's a it's a it's a bad sign like things just aren't going to go too well, well so most presidents and even so with obama like uh like they they usually want like a peaceful transfer of power they don't want the country divided in anarchy and stuff like that but it seems like the left is like that's what they want you know if they don't win let the country burn down you know yeah, like they've gone insane. It truly feels like they don't value uh, this country or what it stands for. All the people who fought and bled for it to uh, to make it what it is. So uh, I don't well, know, they're, man. They're definitely at this win at any cost type scenario. Like they they don't want people to want them there. They just want to be in power. It doesn't matter if the people want them in power. They just need to be in power. <laughs> it's really weird, really strange to see this uh, state of affairs. But, you know, whatever, you know, like, well, Shane, it gets even worse because not only are these screeching homosexuals, uh, you know, talking about imprisoning our representatives for hurting their feelings, uh, trumped up weird fake charges. But look at Marvel Comics. Hmm. Uh, you are cordially invited to the wedding of Mrs. and Mr. Emma Frost. Yeah, uh, I saw I saw that earlier. So this is Tony Stark taking the name of his uh, new wife, you know, so to, uh, I don't know, right I, to be owned rather than the woman being owned. I don't understand the point of this. Uh, in honor of this occasion, artist Megan, H you're kidding. A woman drew this. You don't say Shane. We got to we got to put a stop to this Chad, Is there anything that we can do? to make it so that women are no longer allowed to make comic books. Mm. And we could uh, put them in the kitchen and knock yeah. them off. Put Shane, them in the at, kitchen and knock them yeah, off. There you go. <laughs> look at the little Iron Man heart. Shane. And put them in refrigerators. <coughs> put them in refrigerators again. Let's stick them in refrigerators. This is so yeah. cringe. Marvel is like on a mission. There's somebody up there that's allowing this to happen. If you see what they did with Punisher, and now they're going to take get it, Ethan Iron Man, and uh, like make him like a property of a woman. I mean, this is Iron, the Invincible, Invincible Iron Man. Now, uh, what would you call this? The Iron Cuck? What, what would you call this? Look at how gay women draw. Like. I mean, look at <laughs> you're, you're hung up on that. Color. I'm I'm focused on the art. Like I really hate like the sensibilities of the way women draw. Like I do. Like look at the men. They look like Ken dolls. Like me. Uh, and the women are all like this is like fashion plate drawings that have been. Oh, well, yeah. So why is that? Why when women draw <coughs> do they have like a feminine? I mean, why 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 don't women draw like Jim Lee? I don't get it. I don't know. I just look <laughs> at this and I just kind of go. Megan yeah, is it? You ever heard of Claire Winling? She draws better than any dude I've ever seen. Like, yeah, uh, uh, Pacelli was also a really good artist. She's one of the few artists you look at, and it's like that doesn't look like it's drawn by a girl. Like you know, right. like you sometimes can see art like this and be like, I bet you a woman drew that. 
there, yeah, I don't know. I don't really know how to like explain it, except I just use like the word gay. Like I, you know, yeah. I can't think of a better word for it. Like Wolverine just looks like this is just like the work of a woman. And it's like, uh, the work of a woman, as it turns out, it's, is not to draw it's superheroes. Soft. It's to iron my pants. Uh, it, I, I can't, I, I can't even, th this is a comic book for nobody. There's nobody who wants to read this. The purpose of a comic book is just over the top, wild escapist right. fantasy. And this just is not, and it's mostly for boys. It's boys that kind of read these, uh, visual pamphlets, yeah, not are, really girls. Are you not hung up on the fact he's now going to be Tony Frost? I Tony Frost or she could be Emma Stark, I guess. Emma Stark sounds like a fucking But why Game but of Thrones hey, character. That's what I'm saying, but why have Tony Stark take her last name? I don't get it. I don't know, Shane. It's meant to annoy you. Uh, all of it this is. is meant to annoy you. It, but I mean, after what they did and it with does, Punisher, it works. and after they did that with Punisher, what they did, and now they're grabbing Tony Stark. It, it's yeah. like I, there, there's a weird hit list for these characters right now. Like they're, they're doing something. Do you think this renews like uh, Marvel's copyright on it? Like it's kind of making him into a new character. There's the Tony Stark, and then eventually there'll be the Tony Frost that this company will own forever. Like I, a, I don't know. That's a weird way of renewing it. Like I don't think so. I don't think that's what it is. I think that like Marvel is currently run by very strange effeminate people, yeah. like women and effeminate men who think that fashion shows and weddings and drag clubs and you know all of this stuff is what comics should be. They think fashion yeah. design and all this stuff Flipping this is what norm. people want. If, they're if saying Shane like cracked it. They're saying Shane cracked it. I might be onto something. I bet you in the end this will turn out that she's manipulating him with her psychic powers. Uh -oh. He doesn't even want to get married. You know? And that would make sense. Money. How love. how do they yeah, how do they even know? How does he even know he really loves her? Maybe she's just uh making mm -hmm. things. See, oh. You know? oh. Oh Shane, you know who would have drawn this better? <laughs> who? Anybody? Any man. Any man, yeah. John <laughs> Romita Sr., the guy that drew the original one, right? Yeah. The, yeah. Oh, oh, Shane, you know who would have done a better job at this? Anybody but a woman. A any man. Yeah. Any man. Any man. Any man. Yeah. Just any dude. Any random dude. So, uh, yeah, anyway. Is that um, Ray Williams in the front there and on the left, the bottom of left? Of course. Yeah, yeah. There that she is. A uh, character after a retard. Why is she in front like that? Like, I mean, I don't get it. Like, she's not that important. She's not more important than War Machine or Captain America. She's the one character. It's like you could have not put her on the cover and nobody would give a fuck. Yeah, they put Wolverine and Captain America on everything as if Wolverine would attend something like this. Like, Wolverine has... The, what do you mean? He's going to catch the bouquet. Hold on a second here. This is really disturbing, too. <laughs> Let me open this image in a new tab. Uh, he's got short legs. I saw that. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's even worse than that. He's got a vagina. Look at this. Oh, my God. Oh, there's no balls. That, that's what I'm talking about. They're oh. neutering all these characters. Look, Iron Man has a bulge, but not Wolverine. No. Wolverine literally has a vajayjay there. Yeah, Wolverine. Wolverine? He is Wolverine. He well, yeah, he's weaned. <laughs> Wolverine reminds me of like Jimmy Kimmel, uh, in the sense that at one point, like he was based and he was kicking ass and then like, suddenly he went like super Hollywood, like, and, and just sort of, uh, you know, went to all the parties saying all the right things, you know, being, uh, look at this vagina on Wolverine. And now like, according to Marvel, like he would look at his little hips. Look at this. He kicked his, yeah. Like there's something super, who, what man puts his hand on his hip. that's a female pose like what he's posed like with the hip kicked and the hand on the hip that i would draw that as a woman pose look riri williams is doing the same pose on the other yeah. side that's exactly what i'm saying who's another example of one of these guys who uh just went completely like 
over the top, like I'm fitting in with how, like Howard Stern or somebody, you know, just somebody who used to have some, by the way, put one hand on your hip and then pop your claws with the other hand at a wedding. This yeah. is only the, like a woman. God, women are stupid. Look at Captain America, dude. They're all soft. Hang on. Wait, wait, wait. Is that Pepper Potts? Is it, who's the girl in the green jacket <laughs> next to Ruby? Look at Captain America. Holy shit. Patton okay. Oswald, Stephen Colbert. Like, oh, y'all, yeah, look at this. Oh, I wore my best sparkles. <laughs> it's like Captain America. Uh, <laughs> remember Mike Zek when he would do like the secret, like the Secret Wars covers with Captain America? They're fucking awesome. Yeah. Remember yes. how cool comics used to be? His G.I. Joe covers were the best. Uh, <laughs> at, least, at least War Machine looked angry. I mean, I'll give it that. Yeah. Yeah, let me see War Machine here. Uh, <laughs> he's just like, look, this is broken. Like the fucking whatever that is on his back is like broken. Tony, Tony Stark's eyes are crooked in his mouth too. Do you notice? Like one's higher than the other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You notice that right here. <laughs> he's like, I guess I don't know. All right, hold on. Let me look at more people here. Uh, this is a nightmare, dude. This is the comic book industry. Yeah. Hi. Who is that? Who is the redhead? Is that Pepper Potts? Is she I don't know, but I think they want to swap her out with her, you know. This mm. is uh, Ginger Side before and after. Is that Pepper Potts or is it? Oh, there's another. Uh, oh no, this is the one where everybody's in costume. So whoever that is is who that is. Uh, Wolverine is the worst. This is egregious, dude. He's very he's he's very bear like. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he reminds me of somebody. I'm trying to figure out who I'm thinking of. That it's just like what the fuck, dude. That just went totally soft. Uh, with Hollywood. Well, this is horrible, and uh, I would call it cancer. It's been a while since I've called something comic book related cancer. Uh, you know, I think the last time I used those two words in conjunction, Tess Fowler was involved. But um, this is cancerous. I didn't even and want to buy the Spider Man wedding when it came out. You remember? Mm -mm. Yeah, the Mary Jane and Spider Man wedding cover. I didn't even want to buy that as a kid. No, it, it just this isn't for anyone. Like, it annoyed me when Peter Parker got married. There was like a marriage issue, and yeah. I was like, That's "Man, it. all right, I'm glad he's getting married, but like, could we get back to the fucking yeah Green Goblin, Tombstone, and Hobgoblin, and all the stuff that was going on back then." Um, people are saying this is an abomination. Yeah, I, I would say so. I agree with you. I like. I hesitant. I hesitantly agree with you. Here's I what's like, weird: is I, nobody talks about Iron Man really. Like, who's writing this? Does it say? Uh, yeah, I think it's. It, oh my gosh, I don't know. Let's find out. There's an article here. I guess. Um, here we go. Uh, amidst the tragedy of the fall of X. Uh, comes the superhero wedding of the decade, Shane. Oh. Uh, Emma. Yeah, Marvel did this a few years back uh, with um, Black Panther and Storm being married. Like, it's supposed to be a big deal. Mm -hmm. Like, but it's really not. It's really not interesting at all. Yeah. Triple Six Studio says, I feel sick. <laughs> I, what are you. What? Uh. Everyone, uh, go back. Cyber Frog Three, uh, yeah. Cyber Frog Three, Red Extermination uh, closes out tonight at three a.m. And thanks for backing the hell out of it. My goodness, this is fantastic. I appreciate okay. it. 
um, four hundred and twenty-eight thousand dollars as we cruise towards. Uh, I guess we're open for another twelve more hours. Uh, hey, but um, appreciate it. You, you ever think about having a, an epic wedding uh, issue with Cyber Frog and Heather? I mean, has that ever crossed your mind? Mm -hmm. Well, Cyber Frog and Heather would never get married because, um, you know, Cyber Frog is uh, an amphibian oh, uh, hybrid so uh, with this alien technology. <laughs> and he's not really programmed to have a, a sexual interest in a uh, human, you know, you're basically so, saying he don't like white women. Mm. Mm, yeah. I mean, you could say that I, I would, I, that would be very specific. I would be, I would say that like, he doesn't like human, like he's not what, sexually interested in humans. What if, what if she were blonde? Oh, um, come to think of it. I don't know. Uh, maybe he just doesn't like, uh, <laughs> maybe he likes brunette or, I've always thought of her as a brunette. She is a brunette, not redhead, right? She's a brunette. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just making sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah she's got a nice, she's got kind of uh, chocolate colored hair, I would say. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I never, like, Cyberfrog wouldn't marry Heather Swain. And uh, Heather Swain did get married. There is a, a marriage issue. Uh, it's called Heartsick Horror. It doesn't go well. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, just, there it is. Yeah. Uh, it's all about Heather Swain's. Uh, her attempt at romance mm -hmm. it doesn't particularly go well here's the trailer shane for uh, cyber frog 3 this was a uh, a great trailer made for mm -hmm. me Isn't it great? Through. It's beautiful. Um, yeah. Cyber yeah. Frog 3. Red Extermination. The link is pinned to the top of the chat. Don't miss out. Uh, there. This is the uh, final 36-hour variant cover. This will no longer be available tonight at 3 a.m. Uh, so reserve one of these or just get the subscription um, <laughs> tier here, the uh, red Xbox as we call it. People are receiving their... Uh, People are receiving their honeycomb boxes right now, Shane. Oh, yeah, my God. I can't wait to get mine. <clears throat> it's uh, It looks like, because I have the uh, blood honey box. Mm -hmm. box really, really uh, high-quality printing, um, high-quality boxes, uh, no expense uh, spared. You know, like, uh, you went all in on the boxes, dude. Yeah, well, we do that. I mean, we you know, we get them made in China, Shane. Oh. Huh. <laughs> everybody's like you have to, everything has to get made in china it sucks so bad it's yeah. just like the united states does not will not make things you can't manufacture here in the united states and you know what you never will because uh donald trump uh is gonna go to jail he's gonna they're gonna put him in prison so uh his attempts at bringing manufacturing back to the united states it ain't gonna happen sorry detroit sorry rust belt you know yeah uh, get used to uh, to making everything overseas, and uh, I mean, you know, listen. There's some good aspects to that. You're going to pay less for things, but but then you're not going to have money to buy things either. So, how expensive yeah. is shipping? Is that a big cost? Uh, shipping from like oh from China to the United States. Yeah, when, when you're manufacturing, yeah, everything is, but it's still less. Like it's crazy. Um, it, oh my god, dude. So uh, Eric July, like, uh, he reached out to me about the action figures. 
Right. And he's like, I want to make action figures, but I want to make them in the United States. And he's like, fuck China. And I'm like, no, dude, I hear you, but it's it's not like that. Trust me. He's like, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do what I can to make them in the United States. And I was like, I'm telling you right now, you cannot make these in the United States. You can't. Yeah, every toy is basically made in China. Like they, yeah, they have like villages built around um these toy factories. Mm-hmm. So it's like it, it's like a whole village that builds this shit. Like it's it's weird. Like they've really cornered that that market, and some of it's just nobody in America wants to do it. You know, like well, I mean, that's exactly right. Like the labor, the the kind of labor where you've got to have somebody hand paint eyelashes on an action figure Mm -hmm. is not something that American workers will tolerate. They won't do that work. And meanwhile, you've got a a labor market of over a billion people in China who will, and the American dollar goes much further over there. So getting paid $2 an hour, whatever they get paid over there, I have no idea, uh, is uh, great. It's, it's freedom, you know? So, uh, uh, everything gets made over there. Now, to make like an action figure here in the United States is going to be, well, let's ask this guy. Patrick Thomas Parnell, how are you? What's up, guys? How you doing? We're talking Perfect action timing. figures. I know. It, it, just by coincidence. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. I, it's totally impossible to uh, make an action figure over here. Like you were saying, like the, the you know, painting and the eyelashes and stuff like that. You know, when, when when you're when you're doing painting with like action figures, if you're in for a dime, you're you're in for a dollar. It's not like you you can cut corners. It's like if you're gonna get a little bit of paint, you might as well get a lot of paint. People are happy to see Patrick. They're calling him PT Pusher, uh, which is the name that the chat has uh, assigned to Patrick. Uh, ever since Patrick uh, dosed uh, Comic Skate with acid, uh, in <laughs> that was not me. That was now. Hold on a second. Let's that get this. When- that was with 100% not me. <laughs> well, what did you have? Did you have mushrooms? I, I had a little bit of mushrooms, but definitely not acid. Acid is not my thing at all. That's too much. Was there acid or was it all just mushrooms? Uh, No, I, I mean, I, I think there was. I, I know I don't want to. So it was wanna... just mushrooms and it was just you. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I just I, made I, up I, the acid part. No, I think there was acid, but I, I, I didn't know where it was. I just I heard about it. Well, Red Comics says, I was there. Patrick is innocent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, Well Red. Uh, me I, too. I loved meeting Well Red. Like, Well Red was a great guy. He is. I only I only got to meet him briefly, but yeah, he was pretty cool. Hmm. Yeah, when I, I, I got to meet him over the computer, like, because you, you listen to his voice and you're just, like, not sure. Well Red Comics is, like, he looks like a normal person. Like, he doesn't, like, he looks like a guy who has a family, middle yep. class kind of. Yep. Regular fellow yep. there. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well read, co- well read comics, fake covering. So uh, well, well read comics also probably agrees. PT Pusher is the new name for uh, Patrick <laughs> Thomas Parnell. Sure. Uh, I, I've, been, I've, I've been called <laughs> words, I guess. Uh, all right. Force goes fabulous. Says, I wanted comics, not drugs and grooming. Uh, well, maybe you can get both. <laughs> The Obama fan says it was all Cecil. Cecil is the artful Dodger. Did you, I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not gonna confirm or deny that, but uh, that sounds about right. You want to <laughs> narc out Cecil? Now hold on a second. Uh, all right, I haven't had a chance to talk to you since Tampa. <laughs> so, Cecil, uh, do you think? First of all, did uh-huh. did was Cecil the kind of guy? In, in life, there are people who take and there are people who give. You know what I mean? Givers and takers in life. And that's true, especially when it comes to drugs. Mm -hmm. Uh, Was Cecil somebody who was uh, a giver or a taker when it comes to drugs? Was he somebody who was receiving things or was he also offering things? Uh, uh, All I heard from him was, I'm on acid right now. You know, yeah, that's, that that's that that was pretty much the tone. I, like, I don't know if he had it in his pocket. I don't know who had it, but he was just like, "I'm gonna ask it." I'm like, "Are you serious?" I was like, "Here," I'm like, "That's he too was, much, man." Yeah, he was. He was like, "Oh, I'm so high. Like, I can't. I don't know if I can." Yeah, I mean, it. I I was super exhausted during the convention. I was just trying to do that painting and just you know meet some people and stuff like that. But uh, some people were having a really good time there. Yeah. yeah. 
Oh, by the way, TJ is in the chat screaming. TJ, uh, listen, brother. You won't let me in, though. The truth is anti-whatever to them. Uh, TJ's the guy sitting in the movie theater screaming at the people on the screen uh, when you're trying to watch the horror movie. And TJ's in there. Don't go in there. Ah, screaming at people. TJ, get used to being in the audience. You're not... Let me tell you something. You, my friend, are not on-screen <laughs> talent, okay? And we're very liberal about on-screen talent in here, but you don't measure up. You don't belong on the screen uh, talking to people. I've had you on here before. Mm -hmm. uh, Peppermint Oil yeah, Peppermint Oil Castle says, any update on PTP Seekers Comics, ETA for shipping? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 the comics Hang on. Uh, was I not supposed to send him the link, TJ? Oh, shit. <laughs> I actually, uh, so the comic is just about done, and we actually got the first batch. Uh, here's one that's already out of the box, but we actually got the first batch of uh, seekers. I, I took I took this one out already, uh, just kind of messing with them. But yeah, we got the first batch of them already in. The, uh, the comic is just about done. Kelsey and I are wrapping it up, um, but uh, it came out it came out fantastic. It's one of those things. Again, you know, like the first time I was on Ethan's show, I said I was going to make a robot. Uh, and that was many moons ago. And it's weird to kind of like actually see these things like show up at your door. Uh, but came out great. I mean, it's. Look at that. I mean. You know, I would say, thing. though, maybe I know it's too late, but maybe for the next one, maybe water labels. Uh, you know what I'm talking about? Stickers. Oh, oh. Oh yeah, yeah. So, so one of the stretch goals was you got uh, stickers. Mm -hmm. so, 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 so those stickers are being made right now. Um, oh. So, th there's certain stickers that go on his thighs and his forearms and his chest and stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, that that was that that was a stretch mark or, or a stretch mark. <laughs> a stretch mark. That That's a stretch, stretch goal. Mark. Did did we reach goal. the stretch goal or no? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So, so everyone who backed it will be getting a little sticker sheet. Um, I thought okay. the I thought the visor the eye visor came out pretty good. He had he has yeah. one of those like windows behind his head. So oh, light. so it lights up. Yeah, yeah, so that looks up. oh, it's lighting up. That looks yeah. good. But uh, yeah, so we got a we got a small shipment of these in, uh, basically uh, to give out to reviewers um, and to take with me. I'm, I'm doing some toy conventions coming up, um, and then the the big freight will be here in about 40 days. And then that's when everyone's going to be getting the comics and the toys and everyone's going to be happy. 40 days. Those 40, 40 days. days are going to go Shane, so slow. I, I, I got to apologize again for the lobster bisque incident. Yeah. Yeah. What was that? Oh, yeah. I, I, uh, I forgot that Shane was, I mean, I, I hang out with Shane a lot. I, I forgot that he was allergic to, to the shellfish. Oh, fuck. And I, and I, so, and I, I, uh, we, I got so much to yell at you about, Patrick. First got, of all, I, I got a bowl of, of lobster bisque, and I and I got real close to Shane and started talking to him. And Shane's like trying to like move his head. How's it going, buddy? <laughs> It'll kill Shane. So I Shane know. Is... I almost killed him. His eyes were starting to swell up. Yeah. All right. We got, we got a ton of things to yell at Patrick about. Okay. So, yeah. Patrick, uh, high on mushrooms, tried to kill no, no, Shane. No, 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 no. I only took a little bit. Yeah, took, I only took, a took bit. Von it Coleman to a sex dungeon. Uh, oh, right. <laughs> sex dungeon. Like, every time not. it gets worse and worse. <laughs> uh, and then in the family picture, oh my god, dude, we had to edit you out. In the family dinner picture, everybody's like, in their, we're having dinner. Hey, it's comedy. Uh -huh. Here's Patrick in the background. Oh no, no, there was there was one there was one that I did a middle finger because. That was like the eighth one. That was like the eighth photo that, that was, was the taken. best one. <laughs> we had people. We had we had somebody uh, who was able to airbrush Patrick out. So and they 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 put the the background in where you were. They added a chair next to Whitney, an empty chair. <laughs> Uh, and it was very good. They did a great no, job. No, that, that one, like, in my defense, that was like the eighth one, and I was just like, oh, I'm, 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 I don't know who took this. Who's, whose phone was that? Like, do you remember? That was the third phone. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. No. Anyway, the the, very, very good, Patrick. So now you've been yelled at. Stop doing, stop trying to kill Shane. 
Stop you know? taking Von Coleman to sex dungeons uh, and stop flipping off the camera. For these family pictures, these are very important. These are going to last mm. forever. You should love Comic Skate. And uh, mm. I mean, unless it was like uh, somebody taking the picture was. Uh, it, it was it was more of like a stone cold thing. It was like a salute, you know. Mm. Uh, Evil One mad. says Patrick is a degenerate and Shane is getting <laughs> mad. I do notice Shane getting mad like uh, a little bit what? there. What? No, I'm like my eye. I got like I told you, yeah. I'm on like antibiotics. My eyes are up because of the bisque. No, yeah. not because of you. Because I'm on antibiotics. Lingering. Let me say it again, Patrick. I'm on antibiotics. Oh, poor Shane. Yeah. Shane, are you oh, it's okay? me. It's annoying me that oh, don't shit cry, that Shane. Not. It's not it's okay. crying. It's like my it's eyes okay. are blurry. More blurry. Is it, is it? Are you sick or is it allergies? It's fucking antibiotics that are fucking with me. God damn, Patrick, three times. I'll give you a fourth. It's antibiotics. Anti. Uh, okay, I'm just curious of what you're, you're anti. Uh, antibiotic. What do you mean? Antibiotics. That sounds like a cool robot name. It does. Antibiotic. Uh, Counter Gentleman for $5 says, I experimented with a lot of drugs in my misspent youth, including acid and shrooms and worse stuff. And that is what my upcoming comic strip is about. There you uh, go. So he's got a book all about uh, experimenting with mushrooms and acid and all these things. CWA92 says Yanzi just gave him a plate of fried clams. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, not that all fish. it's lobster. It's only certain shellfish. Uh, it's like lobster and shrimp. Like in I, some crab, but not all crab. So it's like I literally have ding. to try different crabs to see if I can eat them or not. I feel bad for you because lobster is one of the greatest foods in the world. Hmm. I, so I've heard. I, I had lobster bits on a steak one time and it almost killed me. So it's like I, I can't even be in the room with boiling water from lobster or shrimp. Wow. Like, yeah. That's crazy, That's man. pretty serious. Yeah, at first it's my eyes and then my uh, lips Patrick. swell up, but then my esophagus will eventually close up. Patrick, and then that's, when we, that's when we have to hit you with that that needle. With the uh, epi, what was it? Epipen. Epipen. Yeah. Do yeah. Like, that, that, does does Yanzi keep that in her purse? What? The Yanzi epipen. Keep that in her purse. No. No. Because right. Shane could go well, into anaphylactic shock, you know. Yeah. Do we recreate no, Pulp Fiction though, and just stab you in the chest with it though? Like, you just have, I don't know. You just I don't know what you do. Yeah, do the Pulp Fiction thing. Draw a little target <laughs> on my chest plate. Do a stabbing motion. I uh, love all that. Yeah. Not even to save your life. I couldn't kill you to save your life, man. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> you know. Uh, let me see. EVS has no room to talk. He wanted Shane to get maced. That's mm. true. Well, Shark Bite, you're right about that. Now, Patrick, what you missed was. Oh no! Shane and Mandy were live streaming together. Instead of going to the sex dungeon, uh, <laughs> they went. They they live streamed together, uh, well, and uh, I think pool. it was what was it that? Oh, it was a certain amount of money or something. What was it? That, no, I I if somebody said, uh, you know, let's. Uh, Dale said, let's may Shane, and uh, and I said, if we get nine hundred viewers, sure. And that was like the equivalent of me saying when pigs fly. Mm -hmm. You know, and then the, the chat goes and they're like, hey, let me sew, you know, wings onto a pig and launch it into the air. You know, now get May Shane. It was like kind of like that. Like it was like one of those things like Ballers has never had 900 viewers. So when I said it, I was under the impression that was impossible. Uh oh. <laughs> then, we made it happen. Yeah. <laughs> then yeah. what? Then uh, nothing. Would, uh, I said you got to get maced, and he no. He would. <laughs> you know what? I think Shane would have done it. I think Mandy is the one who chickened out. Um, but what happened there was really strange. Like Shane, I don't know if you if you're aware of this, but because Mandy showed deference to you, like she seemed to care for you, um, <laughs> Dale Keown got jealous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because no, because then no, what, you're missing an important. And I know I'm talking here. out of school, but yeah, it is true. No, no it, it is true because he was even like, okay, if you're not gonna mace him, punch him in the face, and and it was like, <laughs> I was like, whoa. And then I actually contemplated that. I'm like, I think I could take a punch from Mandy. Yeah, 
A punch, I mean, Mace, it would take a while to get that out. A punch, you could probably walk that off. I could walk that off. I'm Did like, you see the video that girl? Texas Mofo clip having to do with Mandy and the... Pull it up. The, no. <laughs> I love Texas Mofo. Pull off his clips. <laughs> I'll pull that I, it's a 10-minute one, though. Oh, oh wow! Still pull it up. Yeah, I do want to see it now. Dale Keown uh, was Dale Keown was upset right. because you know Shane and Mandy were hanging out together. It was mm -hmm. nice. It really did look nice. It looked like you guys were uh, really close friends. Really I don't close know what friends. You say to that? <laughs> Nothing. I'm just. I'm saying. Oh, they're that, like you know, they're, they're like cousins. Like cousins. Yeah. Kind of like kissing cousins. Kissing cousins. There you go. Yeah. Well, the women of comic skate, you know. And their no, cousins. Mandy, Mandy was uh, basically the same Mandy that's online when I met her in real life. Uh, she uh, pretty much the same. You know, like she's Mandy. <laughs> Wait, let me see what people are saying here. Uh, Mandy respected Yancey, says Heidi Mealy. Yeah, like Yanti idea. said no in the chat, and then Mandy, uh, to my wife's wishes, said, I will not mm. mace Shane Davis. Oh, Yanzi said that you weren't allowed to get maced? Yeah, man, uh, Yanzi was in the chat under my name saying don't mace him. Mm. Well, because she knows that she would have to deal with it afterwards. Well, part of the problem, according to Mandy, was her mace was like would stain my face, so everybody knows I'm uh, a man that needs to be maced. <laughs> like kind of like I, when they they put the dye on the bank robber bills and it explodes. Yeah. Well, on that, them. that would have been perfect for Saturday because Saturday you were mange, you know. I was a mange, little, yeah. a little mace stain. Yeah. Hmm. Mace. Force mace goes Davis. Fabio says I was in love once, like Dale is with Mandy. It never ends well. Yeah. <laughs> uh -oh. yeah. You just see, like, uh, you know, other people is, like, competition when they're not. Like, Shane isn't competing with uh, Dale for Mandy. He's, Shane's very busy. Very happily married. He's got and his so own she, uh, woman. So is she. So, you know, like, Kevin, she's happily married also. Kevin Ryan says, no, no. Yancey ultimately agreed to have you maced. Those were the rules. Like I, the thing that bothered me about it is that like I don't want Shane oh my to get God. maced. You know what? Are you sure that's because I mean it seems like we're still on. Should Shane get maced? <laughs> because it doesn't go away when you when you float it and then you make a deal with the audience and then you don't follow through. Like nobody <laughs> would have I... ever imagined you getting maced, but you brought it up. Mm -hmm. that's like me saying when pigs fly and then like all of a sudden somebody says there's a I flying you, pig I, I think you missed out in a moment shane cg history uh, that, would have, that, that would have been a clip played over and over again yes it would have <laughs> nobody wants shane to get maced but like that's the thing like you guys did that like you can't you can't do that like oh there are a few God. things hanging out there like mandy and anna have not gone ass to ass like they promised Mm -mm. See, and I think they owe that. I'm pretty sure they owe that, right? Mm -hmm. Like, what was the what were the terms of that? Oh, six figures, I think. Yeah, I and was always there. kind of I was I was always curious how they were going to pull it off. Like, you know, we we the we same way Dale does the fist bump thing. Like, you put the fist here and then. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, all right. Well, I mean, it's just going to be a visual thing, you know. I was thinking like rec, rec room from a dream. No. Well, that would be that'd be great if All they right, want to do that, but they don't want to do that. <laughs> uh, Shane admits the tragedy of Fall of X comes the superhero wedding of the decade. Uh, Emma Frost and Tony Stark tie the knot this September. <clears throat> Celebrate uh, with Megan uh, Hetrick's uh, new homage covers. Who was it? Like Shane? Shane was saying that like uh, Tony's under Emma's control, mind control. <laughs> That's a good theory. I mean that has to be it. I mean, she's played all types of games. Like remember that time when she like was like, Oh yeah, Cyclops, like I can turn that part of your brain off that makes you not able to control your blasts. Well yeah. and um old man Logan, like she still looked really good to everybody, even though everybody aged up, but it turned out like she was just making people see what they what she wanted them to see. Yeah. Like right. so arguably you don't even know if she really looks like that or if every character she's using her abilities to make herself look really hot. Mm -hmm. Right. 
Like, she could be, like, you know, kind of like a burn victim <laughs> that you're kissing or something. You know, kind of like in that scene in The Shining, you know, where the hot naked girl comes out of the tub and then it's that kind of blistery old lady. Mm. Yeah. What did that mean? What was that? I don't know. What was that? I don't know. What- I, I, I don't think I don't think it was in the book that like maybe the the chat can correct me on that, but there was a couple of things in there that 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 weren't in the book. The room number two three two it was different. Two three two three eight. Oh, oh two three number. seven two three was it two three seven? You're right. Yeah, yeah. It, it was different than it was in the book. There there were <laughs> certain things I, I've watched documentaries on like um, this placement of of cans in in the freezer like. All, all meant something in that movie. Do you think that's real? I don't know. I mean, it, it's interesting. It's fun to watch. I mean, uh, but I mean, who knows? Kubrick, uh, Kubrick was a deep thinker, you know? Like I, I, like, I don't think things were done by accident, you know? Hmm. I don't think anything was. I think all that stuff's very deliberate and thought through. You know, he spent a lot of time on what was on the screen. A lot of uh, a lot of these creators do that. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Mike has bad news. Says I think the audience was okay with no mace once Mandy got in the pool. Yeah, <laughs> I, I put think that video cool. in the private. Chat. Sw- switching gears real quick. Yeah. That's a good way to get people's mind off it. Yeah, Yurashima Taru says uh, Shane deserved the grape dye in, on his face. <laughs> What's grape like- dye? It's a great that drink. Die in the maze, like my uh-huh. face, then like uh, like died. Job of the Ender of Stream says I'll make Shane no problem. There you All go. Right. We got some volunteers, you know, uh, to make this work out if we need to, uh, if we need to do it. But I, I think everybody's kind of content. All right, people are saying play the video, play it now. All right, let's find out what this is. <laughs> What do you think it is, Shane? Mm-hmm. Where's the private message? Oh, here they are. Here we go. Texas Mofo. All right. I'm excited. Texas Mofo makes some great videos. Yeah, he does. He does. I don't trust him. Why? <laughs> yeah, that, that's part of the, uh, sometimes you'll be watching a video and then it gets to the end and you're like, oh, no. Yeah, I, I mean, I wouldn't trust him, but I'm entertained by him. I trust that he's going to be entertaining. All right. Uh, Mandy is naked fun? and in the swimming pool. We got a video. <laughs> Hello. Uh, yeah. <laughs> all right. Hold on a second. I'll present it. People are uh, saying stop being gay and start looking at Mandy naked. Is she still in that room? Ready? The fuck? Yeah. Okay. Look at, Dale. Look at Dale. Oh, my God. How long is she staying there? Is she squatting? Is this a hotel uh, pool? No, it's no. Not. That's how, her how be, her house. Yeah. Oh. How do you get off it? This was so deliberate. I think you're <laughs> no, getting no, as man. much as you're supposed how do you to be get in off it, on it, is the question. Mm. Oh my god! Oh, dude, is she falling? Oh my god, that's on purpose. Cracks her head. Oh, <laughs> Tails that's on mine. Cracks her head on that fucking step, dude. She's dead. <laughs> well, she's got to build up some uh, speed for. But yeah, that's who's for me. Filming, that's who's cool. filming this? <laughs> that's <for> me. <laughs> I'll be Shredder. Okay, I don't know if somebody yeah. knows how to hold a camera, so it's not Shane. Yeah, he's it's not good. me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is this the same night? Well, this is uh, tonight. This is tonight, I think. <laughs> he thinks. Dale is Dude, wide awake, back, sober. Your head on, on the corner <laughs> paying attention. Of that pool. Yeah. yeah. Husband yeah, that's goes to right? Yeah. Like, yeah, okay. <laughs> I love Dale appreciating You know, yeah. there is gators no, no, in the backyard that watch, dispose of the body, John. Watch, watch, she's going to arch her back. Just, oh, it's Look looping. It. Okay. Yeah, right. you think that's real? You think that, like, that's an accident? Like, oh, whoops, I didn't know I was yeah, sexy. That's the only way I can stay on this. <laughs> I didn't know I was <laughs> presenting. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I'm so naive. I, I had no idea. No, to, and then she smacks her face this. into the side of the pool. That's the bad part. This happens a lot, Ethan. We did. Me and Yanti did the same video. I was trying to get in a raft. We did it at the pool like, earlier. You know. It is trick. Wait, what do you mean, Shane? I was trying to ride a raft just like this, and Yanti was recording it. It's perfectly natural for a married. It's a big. Look, it's a big shark mouth. Like there's a shark eating Mandy. 
<laughs> right? Yeah. yeah put it I on guess. a loop. I think the shark's choking on Mandy. I think she's too big for <laughs> yeah. this. I'm trying to spit her out. My bad. Didn't know I was sticking my booty out at you. No, that shark's going yum yum right now. <laughs> Yeah. I love Dale appreciating Mandy. I love it. Look at his face. He's like a child. She's hugging, hugging the sidewalk. That's for Dale. I knew it. The whole thing was for Dale. Thank you. Uh, Rev Boom, right in the side of the said, pool. Just imagine Shane in the exact same position. Oh, for God's <laughs> sake. Yeah, that's, that's what yeah. we want to do. It keeps cool. going. I mean, Is if Dante a... likes it, I mean, you know. <clears throat> John. John, can we watch Mandy's pool video again? Uh, I don't have Von it. Goldman. Somebody else shared that. Uh, Focus on her legs, Vaughn. Stop being gay. Mandy. I wasn't here for this. Mm -mm. Dale, this is awkward. <laughs> it's Mandy. Watch what she does. Oh my gosh, she arches her back. That's on purpose. That's for me. That that's called presenting. That no, that's for me. You, you oh. know what? I have gotten. <laughs> what is that? That you have. Chad, Chad, look at Chad. Look. Chad, where you know you know what I've gotten? Here? Well, you what? what day is this? What? Hug for Mandy. Oh fuck you! I got a hug for Mandy. Emotional damage. Dale, <laughs> I heard you. Fuck like you! Heard what did she smell like? Everybody. Chad, what did she smell like? She smelled like my grandma. Fatality. <laughs> What? <laughs> that, fuck you, Chad. She smells like cucumber and melon. Uh, right? Cucumber, cucumber and, melon. and melon. Say it. Chad, say it. No. You can't. Say, I can't it. say it. I ain't saying shit. I'm here Why in not? Texas. Do it for me. Do it. She what? smells like cucumber and melon. Dude, I'm not having How you jerk can somebody... off to me saying this. <laughs> fuck you, Chad. Look, I will give away a little kayfabe, guys. You want, that, uh, Chad, do when... you want to make me your enemy? No, not at all. <laughs> no, no well, fucking say it. Say what? Well, he doesn't believe it. He smells it, like dude. cucumber and melon. He, smells he doesn't like my believe aunt. it. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> How is that possible? It's God true. It, Chad. I, I had respect for you, Chad. It's like, she, she sounds like my aunt. <laughs> no, she doesn't. She's fucking <laughs> wonderful. She yeah, smells no, like yeah, my aunt. Yeah. Chad, I love Mandy. Remember that. I love Mandy. We know, Dale. Well, then what the <laughs> fuck are you doing? I'm playing with he, you. He's, okay. answering, he's answering your question. I don't take... No, I don't know. Don't do that. So, <laughs> anyways, uh, when, when we were all streaming... Uh, and Careful, Mandy Chad. and, and Mains were poolside. Uh, <laughs> after we went off air, somebody off camera yeah, threw Mandy a towel. Who? You know what I mean? What are you saying? That's kayfabe. I'm just saying. What? I'm drinking a little kayfabe. Right. There's somebody else was there. I don't know if they were there the whole time while we were streaming. You guys are right. you guys are fucking with me. No, it was probably her husband, Dale. <laughs> yeah, of course. She's but... married. <laughs> I know. Is she really? Oh. Yeah, yeah. Like so her husband was pro who is probably filming this right now. When right we all went off camera, like immediately after the show ended, here's a here's a towel. Yeah, oh. maybe not immediately, but within minutes. So yeah, I mean, it's just it's a little kayfabe here. Dale, you know I, I feel mean? dirty looking at why this. <laughs> why. Illuminati said her husband got doxxed all over Twitter during the con. I didn't see any. Doxing. Yeah, he was there in the booth the whole time. Oh, really? Okay, that makes sense. Time. What about no, her kids? Uh, weren't, weren't her kids there too? Yep. Sunday. Adorable. Cute little, cute little kids too. Did, did the kids go to the convention? Yep. On Sunday. Uh, yeah. In the booth? Were they hanging out in the booth? No. Yeah. And they were also running around, you know, checking out the convention and stuff. This is hurting Dale. Well, were they in the booth? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. For oh, my okay. God. All right. Huh. No, she loves her kids. Interesting. Yeah. No, they Love were her. They were all having a grand time. Of course. Why wouldn't they? <laughs> oh, my God. I know, Dale. Well, Dale. Why are you fucking with me? Dad. I'm not fucking with you on what that. What the like, fuck? <laughs> Look at her. She's fucking beautiful. Uh, my beautiful dark twist of oh says, why did she do this? For Dale? She did it for yeah. me. 
Yeah. yeah we're engaged. Dude, did, we're engaged. <laughs> I'm engaged? Wow. <laughs> you, you think, can you, you pause this for a second? I, yeah, you, no yes, no. absolutely. <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry. I'm going to have to jet. Uh, I have Are to you help, okay? Uh, yeah, I have to help uh, Yanti with that. <laughs> um, so... Well, I'm going to go. take a break anyway, so I think uh, four and a half hours from now, I'll be back tonight at around 9 o'clock to continue with this with John Malin and with Shane Davis and with PTP and with Chad Townsend. Yeah, I'll come and hang Thank out. Thank you. We'll be back to uh, to finish this video and stuff. No, you, don't, but, uh, you don't have to. Emotional <laughs> damage. <laughs> I you love Dale to... getting upset. I know. <laughs> it, it, it is great watching. Uh, you Chad, you have, have you talked to, to Dale since then? Nope. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you? Oh, no. I, I no. have. Uh, you You guys don't have to shut this down because I'm leaving. I, no, I no, just... no. It's just a good opportunity because I was going to close down anyway. The boys are almost done. They they quit at five, so I want to make sure. I want to see what packages are going out. Uh, right. And uh, thanks, everyone. I will be back, obviously, to finish closing out the uh, the campaign tonight. Thank you. Please back CyberFrog3, uh, Red Extermination. Guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me. Of I really course. appreciate you. Absolutely. Real Real quick, sign up. If you guys haven't, um, go sign up for Extend. We're going to announce the fourth artist on that, I think, next week. So definitely yes. go check that out. Go yes. sign up for that, for the newsletter. I'm $500 away from 10K. So thank you oh, wow. for there everybody you go. that That's backed awesome. it. I'll yeah. see you later tonight, Ethan. Take care. Thank you, Shane. Bye, guys. I'm sick of all these witches and warlocks. They're full of shit. Pumpkin possums. I'm sick of it. You keep interrupting me. And all of it's locked. Because you're lying! That's why! Oh, there's energy and oh, now we're done with trolls! You said he was the messiah! You said he was invincible! I will not suffer your cure people after this! I know what you are day one! I know what you are now! Witches and warlocks are full of shit! Pumpkin and possums, I'm sick of it! You keep interrupting me! And all of it's lost! Because you're lying! Witches and warlocks, you're full of shit. Pumpkin and popsums, I'm sick of it. You keep interrupting me. And all of it's lies. Because you're lying. That's why. Witches and warlocks, you're full of shit. Pumpkin and popsums, I'm sick of it. You keep